The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are a young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey! Why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pig! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Could change their life. We want that! We want that! Sports! 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 Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to our humble abode, the Thunderdome. On this Overreaction Monday, November 27th, brought to you by Verizon, this starts now! Football! Happened over the last four days in a massive way. I hope you all enjoyed the hell out of your Thanksgiving with your family and friends. I hope you had a fantastic football weekend. And I hope today, on this Overreaction Monday, we get a chance to break down all the happenings around the football world. Not just in the NFL, where a lot has happened, including a firing this morning, Mm -hmm. which we will talk about in about 10 minutes with one of our favorite local reporters down there in Carolina about the Frank Reich situation, but also some college ball talk today because rivalry Saturday was bananas, and then the NFL is living up to the expectation of all the storylines and drama building at just the right time. It's post-Thanksgiving football now. We know who's going to be making it, who's not going to be making it. We know the contenders, we know the pretenders, we'll chit-chat about it all. The toxic table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. Connor man shirt matches the shoes yeah it's a brand new you i saw you holding a baby uh, a couple days ago yeah hanging out with young charles campbell it was a good time saw you know met, met the first nephew of the bunch but yeah this is kind of this is a cat from alice in wonderland i, I i'm assuming you might have missed it but this is kind of like how i am watching patriots games now just grinning like a sicko hoping for the worst stuff to happen i saw you yesterday at the colts game you came down to the suite shout out to the colts by the way they decorated the suite we stay in a little bit looks great very nice to them. They very, very nice. 18 month project. Actually, I heard it was like a four day project for the people that built it, but it looks amazing. Okay, very thankful okay. for the Colts. And don't look now, the Colts are in the playoffs, which we will look at yeah. here in a couple of seconds. But the way you celebrated the Patriots losing oh. yesterday to the Giants was disgusting. Yeah. God, what? You should have seen this. He looked at me with a straight face. He said, That was like a wild card playoff win oh, no. <laughs> feeling. Yeah. I just had whenever the Patriots kicker missed, Ryland, a rookie out of Maryland, he's only 12 of 18, I think, on the year. Yikes. Not having that great of a year, obviously, not talking about it because the Patriots aren't really in a conversation. He needs to get back hot. He misses the one to tie it to send it to overtime. Connor, full, yes! Oh, yeah. Pumped because they're still trending towards the number two overall pick for the New England Patriots. Yeah, bingo. I mean, look, boys, if you're going to be in the floor, you're, you're going to be in the ocean, you got to bring up a pearl. Okay, look what look what C.J. Stroud just did yesterday. I, I need to lose. I, I don't want to. I need to. This year is done. Let's just go all the way down. Let's touch that ocean floor. Let's go to the Mariana Trench, whatever the hell it's called, and let's get – some future quarterback that can turn this thing around because holy hell, watching the Patriots play football is not what it used to be. I'll tell you that much. So this, you're not the only team, by the way. There's a lot yeah. of teams that are thinking like that, but that is post Thanksgiving. Now all eyes are on: can we win a Super Bowl, mm-hmm. or do we project towards the next year? Which is why the move was made in Carolina this morning. We assume there's some other places mm-hmm. where there's going to be some moves made as well. Uh, joining us, sitting in one half of the hammer. Cowboy tone seat in tone felt under the weather, yep. so he made the call not to come in to make us all sick. We appreciate him. Hey, we're pulling for you, Tony. I feel better, Tony. Tony. Peace, peace, Tony. Love now, you. Tony was running his mouth pretty heavily about the state of Ohio on the internet. It was, and uh-huh. that was he was doing that after we found out he probably wasn't going to be in here on Monday. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I appreciate that he's just boom, boom, yep. boom. Let them revolvers all. fly. Let the Ohio know that <laughs> yeah. you lose to Michigan, losers. Browns lose, losers. Right. Cincy, losers. Right. That's what he was doing from his bed saying, I'm not going to work tomorrow. I'm too sick. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, so he still got the juice, still got the fire. Tone, we certainly miss you. But sitting in his seat instead is a nine-year NFL vet, an absolute stallion big brain, Darius J. Butler. Hey, hey, but uh, Miami Dolphins do their thing, obviously. That's your team, and uh, let's let's. I don't know if you followed along, and I don't know if you knew this, but 
The top of the AFC, the crown. Now, the NFC, shout out to the Eagles. Wow. They are awesome. Yeah, so they good. Are. They are so much fun. Can they continue to win ugly? Well, when they're beating the Chiefs, uh, the Cowboys, uh, the Bills, the Dolphins, Dolphins. Dolphins. when they're beating the best teams in the league and they're winning ugly, yeah, you can continue to win ugly in the fashion. But the Eagles get another big one yesterday. Sirianni does another interview where I slept on a couch this week. So. Yep. Price. Yeah, I'm pretty happy. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm pretty happy to get this win. I, yeah, you could say um, I'm pretty thrilled about it. And obviously the way Jalen Hurts handles himself, he's the calmest and coolest dude on the park, on the field, all the time. I don't know how he did it. He's a 90-year-old man in the body of a power <laughs> builder, or a power lifter, bodybuilder, stud quarterback. Good for them. They're going to continue to do their thing. I'm not out on Bills. No. I'm not out on the Bills because of who they lost to. I actually thought they looked pretty good yeah. against Philadelphia Eagles when they could have looked much worse. Now, the heartbreak Bills Ooh. are a real thing this season. Mm-hmm. They're 6-6 six and six right now, okay? 500, not great. Got to go. Four of those games, though. Four of those games. We actually have a graphic that was made for it. Four of these games, certainly Bills fans thought they won. How about week one? They were up 13-6 with 4.59 left in the game. Remember Aaron Rodgers got hurt four games in? Oh, yeah. They end up losing that thing 22-16 in overtime. Ooh. Week seven against the New England Patriots, who we just heard are celebrating being terrible. 25-22 <laughs> with 18 seconds left in that game. They think they're winning that one, right? Bills oh, yeah. fans, we won that one. Oh, yeah. They end up losing, obviously, 29-25. How about uh, against the Broncos? 22-21, four seconds left, and obviously game winner. Now we got 24-22. And then week 12. 34 31, 241 left. Then Jake Elliott Woo. hits a 59 yard field goal in a downpour whirlwind. One of the nicest, best kicks I have seen to send that thing into overtime. Buffalo Bills, Bass makes a kick. How you doing? Keep it moving. The Eagles walk right down the field. Jalen Hurts scores a touchdown. Yeah. They win again. Josh Allen now 0 6 in overtime games. That's tough. Ooh. That's not good. No. But the Bills could. Seemingly, if you look at that, the ball bounces a couple different directions. Oh, yeah. It'll be 10 and 2. Oh, yeah. And it'll be a whole different conversation. Instead, 6 and 6, what are they? We don't know. Can they still dance at the end? Maybe. Love the Eagles. Let's go to this AFC side, though. You know, over the last three days, the AFC crown has just bounced around from four different teams. Is that right? Let's go to Friday at 3 o'clock before the Black Friday game kicked off. 3 o'clock kickoff. Weird. Yeah, yeah very was. odd. Weird. What? Very, very. Very weird. In intriguing time, uh, just yeah. pick three o'clock. In between. Yeah, I don't know. The only game that's three o'clock all year is Sunday, AFC Championship Day, where or NFC Championship, where it's three o'clock and six o'clock. Yeah, I, and I don't know why I, three. I read that. that because it's still um, on Fridays, like the NFL has that deal with college and high school that they can't play before six p.m. because that's supposed to be like their day. And they were trying to figure out how are we going to have a Black Friday game. Well, boom, we slotted at 3 o'clock to kind of avoid the the post-6 o'clock start time. And Black Friday, big-time college football day. For sure. So I I think the college football community was certainly like, why is... Yeah. Why are you guys coming in to mm. – you did it to the NBA on Christmas. We get it. Right. Because that kind of happened. Got to do that. College football, you're kind of coming into our thing here on Black Friday. I was excited for another NFL game, and I assume when they projected this game, okay, we got Tyreek and Tua taking on Aaron. Oh, yeah. In New York. Yeah. It'll be – this will be perfect, and obviously injuries happen, season happen. But anyways, at 3 o'clock, certainly a weird time. Oh. Certainly a weird time. Oh, yeah. Ravens, number one in the AFC. Kansas City, number two. Jags, number three. Dolphins, number four. Okay, let's go to immediately after the Black Friday. Congrats Whoa, to the Dolphins. Oh, okay. up, pal. Hey, number one team in the AFC. Way to go, Gump Friday. After Woo. that game, you had to feel hell pretty yeah, good. Hell so, yeah. Wearing that crown right mm-hmm. now. Boys are playing ball. All right, let's go uh, Let's go after a 1 o'clock games on Sunday. Oh, oh, Jacksonville. Let's go, Jags. Hey, just beat the Texans down there in Houston in front of a non-sold-out stadium. Whoa. Yeah, which apparently is, you know, kind of the norm these days. What the hell is going on? I don't know. You got a guy. Fans. You're in it. Yeah. Maybe that's why JJ hasn't just been like, yeah, I'm going to play for him. He's like, have you seen the crowd? Oh, they're, wow. not even, they're not even selling out for this team. They're all the way back. So congrats to uh, the Jags in a big yeah, win. Seed. Trevor Lawrence actually had this to say in a press conference immediately after beating the Texans whenever he was asked about C.J. Stroud, who – He's the next. He's Neo, dude. He's yeah. the next one. Yep. He is the next. Here's Trevor Lawrence asked about the Houston Texans and how they're doing. Teams in our division to be as bad as possible. <laughs> so, no, I'm not, that's how I see it. And the way they're playing, um, it's exciting. Yes, there's going to be some, I'm sure, some great matchups down the road. And CJ's playing 
he's playing lights out. He's doing a great job. I mean, to be a rookie and to play how he is, um, I got a lot of respect for him. I know that. I know how hard it is. You know, I've been in that position. So um, he's doing a great job, and it's going to be fun for, for years to come, hopefully. So, uh, but no, I mean, I wouldn't prefer that. I prefer <laughs> I'd prefer if you know, guy, the guys in our division didn't have good quarterbacks and be be better for us. But um, he's doing a heck of a job, and he's going to keep getting better. He's still obviously young and a rookie, and to, to be playing how he is now. Um, it's impressive. It's impressive to watch, and you know, it's going to be fun. And shout out to whoever's breathing and licking into the <laughs> camera not. there while Trevor Lawrence is talking. Uh, watching that Jags team, though, and watching Doug Peterson talk to him, I enjoy thoroughly what they're building and what they're doing. And after the 1 o'clock games, they're number one in the AFC, d Yeah, they got the right guys. And uh, obviously brought Calvin Ridley over. He's been hitting his stride this, um, you know, these last few games. I feel like with Trevor Lawrence, uh, Josh Allen on the defensive side of the ball yep. having a career year kind of under the radar coming off the edge 4-1. Um, but they're doing the damn thing over there with Doug Peterson and uh, Trevor Lawrence. But yeah, watching those two quarterbacks go at it, it was definitely like, okay, these are going to be two. It's going to be going at it for the next decade. It's going to be a great thing to watch. Yeah, well, Gardner Minshew's also there. So oh, you look at Anthony Richardson on his way back. So Jacksonville was then in the lead oh. of the AFC. Hey, let's go after the afternoon games. What happened? Oh, oh Chiefs beat the Ra- uh, wow. number one. There we go. Another bye. Wow, huh. Chiefs are number one in the AFC after getting a big time win over the Raiders, who looked like they had that one. 14 zip. Josh yeah. Jacobs with a 70 yard touchdown. Scooting. Oh, he yeah. looked like Josh Jacobs of last year. Mm-hmm. It's like, here we go. Brand new Raiders. Also, oh, didn't somebody from the Raiders organization? They should get trouble on the way to the game. Yeah, uh, rumor on the street is the star- starting safety had quite the time Saturday night. Might have been a little boozed up while he was driving to the game on Sunday. That was being reported, right? Yes, that was being reported. That's not fodder. I'm, how, that's how not a maybe that? voice. On the way to the game. <laughs> how does that happen? Got pulled over on the way to the game. Night before you playing the Chiefs? Day before you playing the Chiefs? Maybe, maybe oh, it wasn't wow. night before. Maybe he was just trying to have a morning. Yeah, true. Maybe trying to have a good morning. Oh, I, I thought like morning they meant like, you know, wee hours of the morning. It was like... Sun up. I yeah. think I think the way I read it yes. was as if it was going to the game. Yeah. Trip to the game. Wow. It happened. Yeah. You know? Does exactly. it? Exactly. It happens. You sometimes. can look it up, find out whatever you want. Mm-hmm. We're just telling you what happened. But yeah, the Raiders might be back. As yeah. well. It might, yeah. be, it might uh-huh. be the Raiders. But, anyways, Chiefs might be back as well. Remember, for like four games or three games, they couldn't score in the second half. Mm-hmm. They put that to bed. Yep. Just mm-hmm. want to let you know that. And right before half, old Watson, that dude out of Penn that we talked oh, about, yeah. he got bodied by the dump truck, Bob Spillane. Then he gets back up, scores a touchdown, goes right into Bob Spillane's kind of a, kind of a tone setter yeah. for that well, entire big. game. Kind of changed everything Love for it. the Chiefs. And, I'll tell you, obviously, Kelsey on a double reverse flea flicker end around to play. Andy Reid's doing his thing, trying to get him open. He He's going to do it. Rasheed Rice had over 100 yards. Yep. The Chiefs all the way back. Patrick Mahomes doing his thing. Rivalry game. Not a bad game for them to find their mojo again. Mm-hmm. We know this team. We don't like this team. We move on. And on the other side, Antonio Pierce benches Marcus Peters. Allegedly, there's some stuff going on over yeah. there. Whoa. Yeah, Antonio Pierce will figure it out. We got faith in him. But the Chiefs, congratulations. At number one Woo. in the AFC. Yeah, bye week. And then, you know, last night, primetime, mm-hmm. the Baltimore Ravens play the Los Angeles Chargers, who? Jeez, Frank Reich uh, got a call this morning, and I think a lot of Chargers fans were like, is there more phone calls to be made? Yeah. Is there more phone calls happening, maybe to our guy? And after the Ravens get the big win, congratulations. Wow. The Ravens, number one seed Woo. in the AFC. But that's what's happened. Three losses, okay? Now, on the other side, the Eagles obviously only have one loss, so it's going to be tough to catch up to them. But on the AFC side, it's kind of getting tossed around right now. And if you look at the current NFL playoff picture, obviously you got the Indianapolis Colts just ready to do their thing against Kansas City Chiefs. And the Chiefs, I know they're hot right now. Don't want to see this Colts team. No, no, no. Okay, don't want to see after a big win against the Bucks. But if you look at the Ravens getting the bye week and then the Eagles getting the bye week on the other side, not a bad playoff matchup, not a bad playoff picture. And we're just is me a mere two months away from this still yep. in the NFL season. There's so much on the table for so many teams, and we are lucky to be following along with all of it. And this morning, a massive move was made down in Carolina. Joining us to give us a little bit more detail is a lady who reported yesterday that Tepper wasn't happy coming out of the locker room. Friend of the program. Also, you can find her on 1340 AM Fox Sports. She's a Pro Football Writers Association member. And she ran track at FSU. Ladies and gentlemen, Sheena Quick. Yeah, Sheena! Sheena, you put the report out yesterday, a tweet out yesterday of David Tepper leaving the locker room. And I believe what you said was <laughs> angrily, he said, F dash dash 
Dash. Uh, mm-hmm. Then this morning, and, did. <laughs> and then this morning, Frank Reich has been relieved of his duties as the head coach. Uh, I believe Jim Caldwell will be a senior consultant on the offensive side of the ball. Coach Tabers of the special teams, Chris Tabers, will be the interim head coach. They have a season left, and now Frank Reich has become the first coach in the history of the NFL to be fired in back-to-back seasons. When was the writing on the wall, and uh, what is Carolina's reaction to this, Sheena? Uh, For me, the writing was on the wall when he took the play calling duties back. Uh, Frank Wright knew that he was on borrowed time. And I guess he figured, you know, if I'm going to go down, I'm going to go down with my own playbook, calling my own plays. So for me, that was the writing on the wall. It was just kind of a matter of time at that point. When you saw Tepper come out of that locker room, was he saying that so you guys saw that he was mad? Like, was it like, uh, hey, I want to let you know I'm not happy with what happened in there as well? No. No. No, actually, um, it, was, it was only myself and one other media member that were outside of the interview room because the interview room was right next to the locker room. So as I walked up, I did see Nicole Tepper, and she was pretty pissed. She still spoke and smiled, and seconds later is when um, David Tepper walked out, and they left with their handlers, and he was just really, really exasperated. He didn't say it to anyone in particular, but you know how things are just so messed up that you have to just let out an F-bomb. That's what that was. A billionaire having handlers is certainly... Uh something as we move forward. Well, I don't know. I think they were handlers. I mean, they weren't security guards. They were just... I don't, I, I don't know. Tepper <laughs> Tepper has a meeting with every coach he's ever had. I don't know if he has anybody handling him, but <laughs> if he does have handlers, I love it. How does Carolina respond to this now? How do the fans feel? What do you think is next for the Panthers? Oh, the fans are excited. They are moving on and hoping that they get Ben Johnson next year. Uh, I wish... Well, I'm sure you guys have seen some of the tweets. We've been on, like, Frank Wright pack watch since the Colts game, really. Oh, so I think that everybody's excited. Now everybody's just kind of waiting for the other shoe to drop because the thoughts are here that Scott Fitter is next out the door. Now, the timing of that, I'm not sure. But for some reason, the Panthers like to fire GM, fire head coach, fire GM, fire head coach. And that may be why there's a disconnect and why they can't have any continuity at that um, head coaching position. But I think both of them are going to be out for a fresh slate. Okay, so is there a fear at all that Tepper's never going to have enough patience to get to a point where you guys will have a winner down there? Is that a is that a thought? That is that is a fear. That is a fear. And, you know, there was literally one guy that was willing to die on the hill that Frank Wright shouldn't have been fired today because it's week 12. Everybody else was like, nah, he got to go. Um, and, and that's one of those things that we were told in the offseason that David Tepper was letting the football people do the football things. And, you know, of course, when the season started spiraling out of control, now we hear that, you know, he was meddling in the quarterback decision. So I'm, I'm not sure it's going to take him hiring a football operations person. Because clearly he doesn't have the patience and he doesn't have luck, good luck either. Yeah, he needs a football handler. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't he? He needs, he, football he needs a handler. football handler. That's exactly what he needs. He does. Instead of all the other handlers he's got around, yeah. let's get a football and handler. He's- He's a proud owner, too. Like, the man has been getting embarrassed week after week. You know, you guys, his owner, was down there dancing to the meat meal in the well, visitor's locker room. Jerry Jones stuff that's not holding too. press conferences. Right. Well, and then Jerry Jones is holding press conferences, and then you're doing a silent count at home. Like, the morale is down, and that has to be getting to David Tepper. He's kind of – Carolina has become the get-right game that everybody looks forward to where if your team is struggling all you got to do is when you see Carolina on the schedule you know that's a dub and that's just not a good feeling especially for somebody like David Tepper there was some stat about Bryce Young being ranked like 431st out of 431 quarterbacks being ranked for something I, I forget maybe points per play or something like that I forget what it is or yards per play Bryce Young's still the guy. I mean, we still, we all, everybody I, in Carolina believes he's still the guy that just has not been an opportunity for him to be good yeah. at all this year with the O line and the way everything else is. Everybody absolutely thinks that he's still the guy. I mean, of course, you're going to have a portion of the fan base that is seeing CJ Stroud absolutely falling out. So that doesn't help Bryce's case at all. But you, you see what he's working with. I mean, the offensive line is out there grasping air. Um, He's on his back or face down on the ground so many times when he does get a second to throw the ball. There's not a ton of separation with the wide receiver. So the gist is that he's the guy, but they have to get some other guys around him. D-Buck, go ahead, pal. Yeah, Sheena, why uh, Chris Tabor? And a lot of people would expect probably Jim Caldwell, somebody with head coaching experience to jump in there. But we know Tepper probably is having some buyer's remorse with letting uh, Wilkes walk out of the door. So why Tabor instead of one of those guys that have some head coaching experience? And who is Tabor? Because you don't. 
Long Chris Tabor's the special he's the special teams coordinator. And to be honest with you, his unit is the only unit that is consistently performing. But he also doesn't have head coach aspirations. So there's no pressure that, you know, I am not sure how, how much you can turn it around. You're not gonna get a Steve Wilkes turnaround at the end of this season because there's no Steve Wilkes in the building right now as far as culture and, and things of that nature. But um no Jim Caldwell. Jim Caldwell's been chilling. Like he's really just out here vibing. Like I, I don't know how involved he's been in any of the offensive decisions thus far. But if you're if you're David Tepper, do you want to have a situation where Jim Caldwell comes in here and is a rock star and then you feel obligated to retain him and then you don't? Yeah. So then you'll have back-to-back situations like yep. you did with Steve Will. Well, Will Brinson put together a graphic about pre-Tepper, post-Tepper here. I think Tepper is looking for anybody to have success. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Somebody. Now, somebody. Now, anybody. He's not scared to make a move, though, because he owns the soccer team, too. Yep. And he's fired three of their coaches in the last 16 months <laughs> yeah, as well. Did. Uh, yeah. Tepper wants to win now. And if you can't do that, you'll be out the door. But what happens if with yeah. salary caps and negotiations and contracts and schemes Teams and strategies that it can't just turn around in 12 months. I'm not saying Frank Reich was the guy that was going to be able to do it, but at some point yeah. he's going to have to let that thing breathe and get a reset. We shall yeah. see. We appreciate the hell out of you, Sheena. Thanks, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, Sheena Quick. Yeah, Sheena. Okay, so let's talk about it. And I just kind of alluded to it a little bit there. None of us said Frank Reich was the right guy to get hired in Carolina. No way. Okay. We we're all very baffled by it. Yep. We we're all very confused by it. We're here in Indianapolis. So we actually see and saw what happened with the Colts with Frank Reich. There for a little bit, the game, we're going on a run. Oh my God, this is a guy. He was an assistant coach with the Colts whenever Peyton Manning was the quarterback here. I actually knew him very well from that exact time. He coached me. Frank Reich coached me on how to be a third string quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts. He is nothing but a great guy. Everybody absolutely loves him. His history on the field, obviously the greatest backup quarterback in the history of pro ball mm -hmm. and college ball. Mm -hmm. When he was backup quarterback in Maryland, he came in and led one of the biggest comebacks in the history of college football. And then the NFL, he did the same. He Exact thing. This is not about Frank Reich, the human being, but Frank Reich, the coach, has seemingly gone terrible in his last two stints. I said it to Sheena there. He's the first NFL quarterback in the history of the league. It's been around a long time. Long time. A lot of people have coached. Mm -hmm. First one ever to get fired in back to back seasons. Crazy. And when he got fired from Indianapolis here, it was after an embarrassing performance against the New England Patriots, but it wasn't just embarrassing on the field. Behind the scenes, what was going on in the building, his team's culture was also completely dead. Comple people late to meeting, team meetings, people late to, treatments, people missing and being late to. Had guys, numerous guys, gambling on and against the Indianapolis Colts who were playing for the Indianapolis Colts. Whenever you say culture, when people talk about it, it was dead and died here in Indianapolis whenever Frank Reich was the head coach. Am I blaming Frank Reich for that? No. I blame the locker room for that as well. That can't happen. The leaders that were in there, one of them now gone, mm -hmm. Darius Shaquille Leonard, they let that happen under their watch as well, which I publicly projected and said, like, hey, you guys are ruining what the Colts are. But that happened under Frank's leadership. So whenever it all kind of falls apart in Indianapolis, and then he immediately gets the opportunity again with the number one overall pick in Carolina, I think to myself, is this what Frank really needs or wants in his life? Shouldn't he have taken like a moment to breathe? Maybe just kind of separate himself from why and what happened in Indianapolis so that if he does get a chance to coach again, it doesn't happen again. It doesn't take place. And maybe his message wasn't finding the right ears at the right time. So we didn't really understand the hiring from the beginning. Carolina didn't understand it with the way Wilkes had success. Yep. And here we are sitting down, going into week 13 now, and the Carolina Panthers have another interim head coach in another year in which they're probably all eyes are on the draft in next offseason. Mm -hmm. It's a damn shame for the Panthers fans, but Frank Reich never made sense for any of us, I don't think. Do yeah, right? not for a lot of people. Obviously, you know, he's an offensive coach. He's had some success, you know, on the offensive side of the ball. Didn't go great in, in Indy, but he didn't leave with, like, a losing record either. So he wasn't, like, a terrible – but obviously we know behind the scenes some of the stuff that was going on. But then you have a guy like Wilkes. You let him out of the building. And then a lot of people were raving about this coaching staff that they put together in Carolina, you know, bringing over Thomas Brown and Josh McCown and Eva Rowe on the defensive side of the ball. And it just didn't pan out. No progress. You, you said, you know, at some point Tepper's going to have to let it breathe. But one in what, one in 10, one in 11 now? Yeah, and every stat is bad. Yeah, yeah. We're going into week 13, you're just not showing any progress. The team, uh, like Sheena said, they like a get right game for teams coming in there. And you, you got to compete. And when you're taking a, a guy number one, two, when you are in that position, you know, heavy, heavy is ahead. Like you, you have to kind of 
raise all tides as well. You know, Andrew Luck was brought into a situation. Obviously, it wasn't as bad as what's going on in Carolina. It was a good team around Andrew Luck. He come in and go to the playoffs. Cam Newton in Carolina, 6-10, and 10, I think, is a rookie year, rookie head coach. Like, you're, you you saw that team. Like, okay, every week Cam Newton is going to be an issue to come in here from day one. So um, you haven't seen that with Bryce yet. And you obviously can point to some of the things around him as well. Yeah, there's a, she mentioned C.J. Yeah. Stroud. The, yeah. the C.J. Stroud situation. Man. Rookie yeah. head coach, rookie quarterback, mm-hmm. dumpster fire. Yeah. Houston, not too long ago, was a dumpster fire. Yep. Oh, yeah. Why they're not selling out? is because I think a lot of their fans were maybe embarrassed by everything mm-hmm. that was taking place with the Houston Texans. That used to be a great place to play. That's all you talk about. It used to be a great place to play. Now they're just sharing pictures of that place being empty. That's a conversation for another time. Mm-hmm. But whenever you're Panthers fans and you see that, when you're Tepper, though, and you see that as well, yeah. Tepper's like, you see CJ, you talk about Cam, you talk about Andrew Luck. In his eyes, he's like, yeah, you bring in a quarterback, all of a sudden you're good. So why aren't we good? And every Monday, whenever he was having those meetings with Frank Reich and he was just dressing them down on oh, yeah. decisions, Tepper needs to get out there and maybe call the place. Yes, yeah. here, here we go. go. Doesn't he? Here Doesn't go. He? Yeah. Well, I mean, at this point, it's like, I understand, like, you got to get the coaching right, but. You were mentioning it. Like, uh, he's not a patient guy. Like, guess what? You have to be patient. Like, you can't just, like, spend a whole bunch of money and then all of a sudden expect, like, well, yeah, next year we'll win 14 games. Like, that's the way it works. I'll, I'll, I'll deal out as much money as I need to and we'll win. Like, when you look at it and we don't know who else is going to get let go, but, and I understand, like, for a first time head coach, it's one of those things where you're not really in a position to pass up on a job because you don't know what the future holds. But, like, how attractive of a head coaching job is that? You know, I mean, like for Ben Johnson, like, is he going to leave Detroit where he's kind of got something going that's pretty special right now? And who knows what opportunities he might have in the future? You don't have the first overall pick. Like, that's a massive thing. Do you love Bryce Young? Because he's the guy, no matter what. And then on top of it, is it going to be one of those things where, you know, if they get beat by three touchdowns the first week, are you going to be in David Tepper's office, you know, answering all these questions? Like, I mean, I, I understand certain Ben's owners gonna are like that, options. Exactly. Ben going to have options. Ben Johnson is going to have options. Or like Slowick with Houston. Like, those guys have options. Like, why? I mean, why would you want to sign up for something like this unless you get an insane amount of money? Well, unless you're Bill Belichick. Exactly. Yeah. Bingo. He stole the words right out of my mouth. I mean, <laughs> hey, where did Bryce Young play college football? Alabama. Oh, okay. Who's the head coach of that team? Nick Saban. Who's his best friend? Bill Belichick. Well, then maybe Bill does go down there and say, you know what, Bryce, let's do this. Because the best part about the Panthers is, all of their best players aren't even on. I saw contract. you couldn't wait to get Bill Belichick's name in there. No, I, I, hey, hey, look, I, w- I want to keep Bill. I mean, if anything, that's what these last two weeks have proved. Defense is still buzzing around for no reason. Uh, I don't know. The passive Paisano. Yeah. yeah. The passive Paisano gets a big time dub. And by the whole family. Yeah. yeah. All in. I do appreciate that this is becoming. Tommy DeVito's <laughs> yeah. signature celebration. Call sign. I very much appreciate it. I also like that people in the crowd, Italians and non-Italians, are just throwing that thing at him. Tommy, Tommy, Tommy. His dad smoking that fat stoke oh, right, in, right in the camera in warm-ups out there. His whole family and friend group coming out like, as if it was a Sunday gravy party at the house. I mean, I – yeah, look at this. Look at this. <laughs> so good. Yes. Handshake. Yeah. There's his dad. <laughs> yeah. No word for it. Just. That you know. Yeah. No words need to be said. <laughs> you get it. You know that little country that has a boot? It looks like a boot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got beautiful culture. We got beautiful food. And we got quarterback playing for the Giants. Just miles from where he grew up. Yep. So many Italians. Oh. Yeah. Just spinning it for this Giants team that has a lot more drama off the field. You know, then seemingly on the field at this exact moment. But they've rattled off a few different wins now. What do the Giants look like the rest of the way with Tommy DeVito pulling the trigger? We shall watch. I appreciate, though. I do appreciate that Dave Tepper is willing to pull the trigger. Yeah. You know, because like Mike Tomlin, I don't know how long he had been waiting to fire Matt Canada. I have no idea what it was. But when he walked into that locker room, he said, play that music. You know what I mean? (laughs) Mm -hmm. And it was walk in your trap, take your trap, steal your trap, the whole thing. Tomlin had to be feeling himself for the first time in 59 games. The Pittsburgh Steelers go for 400 yards. That was the stat. That was Matt Canada's entire tenure as the Pittsburgh Steelers offensive coordinator. Every other team had done it at least three to four times in the entire NFL, but not the Pittsburgh Steelers, not the jet sweep Matt Canada offense, Mm -hmm. not that we only throw the ball to the perimeter. We refuse to throw the ball over the middle Matt Canada offense. And in his first game, not there. 
they go for 400. Yeah. Oh. To add a little layer of this guy sucked. It couldn't have been better. Now, they score 16 points, one touchdown, three field goals. Sure. And a lot of people are going to chit chat about, yeah, you go for 400 yards. What does that mean if you can't score? Well, what it means is Kenny Pickett probably went to bed feeling a lot better about himself. Yeah. George Pickens probably felt great. Deontay Johnson needs to hop on fumbles, Ooh. even if he doesn't see them. But that whole offense just looked like they were having a much better time, had a lot more energy. Naj looked like Jerome Bettis. Yep. And on the flip side, it sucks that the Cincinnati Bengals lost Joe. Burr in the time that they did because I they lose Jesse Bates and he flipped Ooh. the game for the Falcons. Yep. Yeah, balled out. Balled Saints out. were three nothing going down to score again to make that thing maybe ten nothing or maybe at least six nothing. Instead, pick six, complete opposite direction, and the Falcons were able to play Falcons football mm -hmm. just from having elite. I mean, that's red zone pick six. This dude was impossible uh, to beat whenever he was with the Bengals, proving to be an incredible leader for the Atlanta Falcons as well. But you start thinking about this Bengals team, it's like, how many years do they have this window for? And they lose Joe Burrow, look like a completely different team. The Pittsburgh Steelers get a win. We don't have tone, but I assume he's jumping for joy about Matt Canada's offense being exposed for what it was one more time with the first game post-release of that guy. Yeah, it's like the Panthers scoring 40 points next week. Like you get rid of one guy in Matt Canada, and I and we all kind of looked at it, and they're just trying to figure out, you know, is it Kenny? Is it Canada? For that to happen, it's hard to imagine anybody is going to reach out to Matt Canada like, hey, we need you to play. Uh, we need you to call plays next year. And those clips that they just ran, it was Mooth down the middle yeah. for a lot of those yards. Mooth like they were like 100, 120. Yeah, yeah finally. Career in day the in yardage and uh, receptions for Muth. Isn't it in in the modern NFL the tight end is like your 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 Safety valve. Yeah. Yes. Like, hey, it's the closest ball. It's uh, normally going to be big target. The way the NFL has its rules can't get killed nope. as much either. So it's almost like the NFL is telling you, hey, this is a position that you should add to your offense and use. There's no way they do that because throwing that ball right there, impossible yeah. in the Matt Kendall-led offense. Instead, he goes for 120. Uh, Kenny Pickett threw for 278 yards. Yeah. 278, almost 300. Spinning it. That ain't that ain't Kenny Pickett football. No. That ain't what it has been with Matt Canada. I couldn't even imagine the sigh of <sighs> validation from all of those players after the game. I mean, they were dancing, doing their thing. Deontay allegedly got into it with Minka, oh. and then Cam Hayward and TJ Watt say, what are we, boys? Won. Matt Cannon's gone. We win. We love. Wow. We play football. This is a good thing, not a bad thing. Obviously, energy intention is going to build throughout situations. That happen. There's Muth grittying around, doing his thing. I, I, D Bud. Yeah. You're Matt Canada sitting at home wishing for their failure. Absolutely. And then you see that 400 yard thing happen. <laughs> you think he looked in the mirror and said, Yeah, maybe I do suck. <laughs> you think there was ever that moment for Matt Canada? And how do you think the boys feel in the locker? I mean, he had to have that moment. And it, it was one of the moments I'm watching, like, damn, maybe because I was thinking, you know, it's Kenny, it's not this. Maybe Canada wants to call things, but he's practicing. He's seen a lot more of Kenny than we are. But uh, Pickett, you know, six six passes over like 15 plus in the air. We talked about moves in his career day. He had a big, you know, 40-something yarder to pick it. That was late in the game in yep. the slot fade. He just looked more confident, letting the rip, literally from play one. You know, from play one, play action seemed right down the middle. The run game was still doing their thing. Uh, they got to be, they, they got to feel like, Kenny at least got to feel like he won the damn Super Bowl uh, waking up this morning. But uh, Absolutely. Know, now, it's about, yeah. now it's about can they stack it? Can they continue to do it and win games? Because obviously they've been winning the game. Another thing, he continued to take care of the ball. You know, this is, I don't know how many games now consecutively where he's not throwing an interception. I think so it was he, 241 pass attempts or yeah. something like mm -hmm. that. And that's leading the league, right? Yep. Like, yeah. So, Kenny keeps taking care of the ball. They keep running it that way. And the defense continues to play better. I mean, they can, you know, still is, they win. They keep winning. TJ Watt, two more sacks, obviously. Yep. He is attacking yeah. the uh, the all-time sack record uh, for in a season. He is oh. a big, you got to block him. Yeah, that would help. Should think about blocking him. I mean, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know if that's Browning's fault or Zach Taylor's <laughs> fault or somebody should have seen him and tried to block him. But he's obviously climbing the Turner's tee bottle. Uh, you think about defensive-wise, they're great. Special teams, Boz goes three for three, 41, 34, and 33 yarder. He scores nine points. They score one touchdown with Naj, who looked like he was damn Jerome Bettis. It's yeah, like, absolutely. why not the Pittsburgh Steelers?
One of the reasons might be because the Ravens is in that division as well. Yep. Yeah. And the Ravens are playing a similar style of football, just a little bit more pretty mm-hmm. to it all. Lamar's playing great. They got weapons everywhere. The AFC North is the kitchen. It's hot in there. Joining us now is a man who lives in the kitchen, not just because he's cooking, but because he's trying to hear what everybody else is cooking. Ah. Senior insider for uh, the ESPN of the NFL, ladies and gentlemen, Adam Schefter. Yay, Yay. Schefter! Yay. Russ is cooking, Pat. Russ is cooking. Related yeah. happy Thanksgiving to everybody else right now. Hey, Russ is always cooking, especially with those Denver Broncos doing their thing. Sean Payton absolutely loves it. We're going to get into cadences, and Russell Wilson's cadences are certainly going to be chatted about at some point. But let's move on to some decisions that are being made around the NFL. We just talked about Tomlin firing Matt Canada, reaping the benefit of it one week later. Carolina Panthers this morning decide to fire Frank Reich. Uh, a little bit early, obviously, in the season for this to happen for a first-year head head coach and I think what like Pete something in 1978 got fired after like nine games Urban Meyer got fired after 13 games Frank Reich fired after 11 games those are the three quickest tenured uh, coaches in like the last 45 years or something like that Frank Reich decision was obvious uh, to everybody is that kind of how we view this thing Shefty I think it was the most uh Least kept secret around the league. Everybody knew that eventually this was going to come. You didn't know when, but obviously David Tepper was furious enough after the game yesterday. He's been scouting out coaching candidates. He's been asking around. Frank hasn't wanted to be there. The energy hasn't been there when you speak to the people in the building. This was an ill-fated relationship that was doomed to end. It had been percolating for weeks now. It just happened to come this morning. That was the end of it. And really... This is all about, to me, them doing everything that they can to try to keep Bryce Young upright and to try to save and salvage Bryce Young because of all they invested. And they believe that making a change now will help them. We'll see how that works. Frank Reich has had a pretty good distinguished coaching record on the offensive side of the football, but they believe they had to do this. And I think Bryce Young, not personally didn't tell them to do this, but Bryce Young is behind all this because of all that they have riding on him, which is an incredible amount of in, uh, draft picks that they gave up last year in Chicago to move up to number one overall. Yeah, Tepper and the Panthers fan base and everybody didn't see any progress really coming from the number one overall pick in Bryce Young. That's obviously alarming, especially whenever you're an offensive head coach who's an offensive coordinator. So they decide to move on. Everybody's just assuming they want Ben Johnson, but everybody's going to want Ben Johnson, right? Is there any other spot? Well, Go ahead. But here's the issue is last year they wanted Ben Johnson. Ben Johnson didn't want them. So why would, if Ben Johnson didn't want Carolina last year, what's going to make Ben Johnson want them this year when they don't have their number one overall pick, when they built it around Bryce Young? Now, again, maybe they're going to pay him so much money and give him so much power and control that they could convince him to leave the confines of Detroit to come to Carolina, which he was unwilling to do last year. Ben Johnson's going to get a job somewhere as a head coaching candidate, right? The question is where? So is Carolina the job that he's waited for? And I think this is something that they're going to have to answer now. Again, two straight seasons of firing a coach in season. No number one pick next year. Bryce Young is your quarterback. You've got issues with how you address the Brian Burns situation when you turned down two first-round draft picks last year, and now he's scheduled to be a free agent, and you can't get a contract extension done with him. There, there's a whole host of issues there that they have to sort through. Now, we've seen in the NFL, as Houston has proven this year, it can be turned around like that really quick. C.J. Stroud, one pick, the pick that the Carolina Panthers didn't make, and everything in Houston right now is great. The organization is on the uptick, everybody's excited about them, there's hope and optimism, and a year ago, the Texans were the most hapless, hopeless organization out there. So it can turn around quick, but tell me where they're going to find the way to get that hope going in Carolina. That's the biggest challenge that they now face. Second richest owner in uh, sport, so he also has zero patience, and you have to meet with him after every single game. So, I mean, there's a lot to digest there, but any coach that gets a head time, our first time head coaching gig right now, team's going to be terrible. So let's just, let's just go around a couple of the uh, possibilities here. Carolina now is going to be looking for a head coach. Las Vegas Raiders, there's a chance that they're going to be looking for a head coach, depending upon how Antonio Pierce does and everything like that. We're all assuming the commanders, right? Lame duck situation with Ron Rivera, right? But yeah, let me, let me just cut you off right here before we go into every single team. 
Last year, I think there were five head coaching changes. And if we go back to the turn of the century, uh, it averages 6.8 per year. And in two years, you almost always get about 14, 13 or 14. Well, we had five last year. You're going to have this year anywhere, I believe, between seven and ten head coaching changes. Jeez. Now, wow. Yeah, that's what I believe. Seven to ten. During, down. Is that going to happen during the season, or is it like this Frank Well, right? here's the thing. The, t- the timeline on these things has been accelerated. Now, last week on the show, I said to you, I said to you, hunting season begins right after Thanksgiving. You did. And sure enough, we're after Thanksgiving, and on Monday, Frank Reich is out. He is the, what, the second head coach fired this year. Josh McDaniels, winner on Holly. I think the timelines on these coaching moves – have begun to be blurred more so than ever before, where owners don't care whether they're doing it in September or October or November or December. It used to be we got past Thanksgiving. Now we enter into coach hunting season. The teams that are underachieving, underperforming, not winning games, their coaches are in jeopardy. Last year, again, five changes. This year, Seven to ten, and I'll take the over. I'll take the over. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is so – 32 teams. Yeah. That's 32 teams, one-third of the league. That's how it works. He's about That's to how it works. You know what? There's always somebody winning and always somebody losing. And the people that are losing are getting criticized and coming under scrutiny, and people are getting unhappy, and you get an owner walking out of a locker room, dropping F-bombs, and oh. then saying the next morning to his head coach, you're out. You're out. Which what is you- it's something that he's been thinking about doing for weeks now anyway. What did Tepper say coming out of the locker room? What did, what did he say? Your previous guest depicted it very well, Pat. I'm well, not going to go there right now on a Disney-owned channel. Whoa. <laughs> we have a lot. We have, that, yeah. we have ruined Dumb it. Time. Yeah, Oops. I didn't know if we could maybe get you to do it. That makes us feel better. Seven to ten is a lot. We just assume that's all the bad teams right now because owners now with social media and everything else, I feel like they are more apt to see what their fans are saying. Like back in the day, kind of keep you isolated. Let's just stay in our big mansions. Let's go to the stadium, stay in our suite. If we don't see anybody, we don't really hear anything. So we just kind of keep it moving. Now it's like everywhere you're hearing how bad your team is. I think Mara, the Giants a couple years back, actually said publicly, I'm sick of having to explain why my team sucks to people. Yeah. Like that is what yeah. So that's why he made the changes that he made. There's more noise, more scrutiny, and the owners have more money because of the added TV media gambling deals and the TV rights deals. So if David Tepper, who already has a lot of money to begin with, wants to fire Matt Rule last year and fire Frank Reich this year, that's the way it goes. Whatever. Yeah, you got to pay him $76.8 million. Don't care. I don't care. Get him out. Uh, don't nah, care. This guy sucks. Uh, how, many, how many millions was it in fired coaches? $800, 800. million dollars or something yeah. like that? When Roger Goodell gave a little memo to all the owners. Hey, just a heads up yeah. as we try to become the most profitable league of all time. You idiots are spending $800 million on fired coaches right now. Just want to let you know that. Well, you got to win. That's what you got to do. Last night, primetime game, LA, there's a lot of people asking that. Seven to ten teams is what Schefter's wow. reporting. Going to have head coaching vacancies this offseason. That is bananas. Let's talk about the other side of that. Go ahead, d yeah, Wow. Uh, ben Johnson not going to be able to take them all. So who are some other hot head coaching candidates out there potentially this offseason? Well, I have a full list on my computer. And I know I'm going to leave out somebody, so that's always discouraging, right? But I think the first names that are going to come off a lot of people's uh, lists will be Ben Johnson and Brian Johnson. Gi- Johnson and Johnson. The Lions offense. Oh, come on. All right, Big Pharma. Yeah, we get it. Pushing your narrative. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> we get it, Shefty. Thanks. Thanks for throwing us in the middle of that. Good Lord. Jeez. Yeah. Your tears. <laughs> My apologies. I, I'm trying not to cause any issues. I didn't mean to bring up the Johnson and Johnson issue here. Yeah. You know, we. Mr. Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson. I'm just trying to have everything be balanced and fair. Yeah, you know, you're a journalist. Know. We get it. You got to do what you got to do. Way to go. Stir the number. Or stir the pot. Stir the pot. Anyway. Yeah, well, I think we. You're, I think those are going to be the two guys who get a ton of interviews. Um, I can see Aaron Glenn in Detroit, the Lions defensive coordinator, getting some Dan Quinn in Dallas, the Cowboys defensive coordinator. Um, the enemy? Uh, uh, well, he... He's 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 like the Susan Lucci every year, right? Like he, he gets interviews and, and then he, he doesn't get the head coaching job every single year. He's gotten a ton of ton of head coaching interviews. Uh, would love to see him get one finally, but 
they're not coming off the best season in Washington. So I don't know how much that helps them. I can't wait to find the the job that pisses everybody off. Mm -hmm. Somebody's going to get hired. Oh, yeah. That's it. You gotta yep. be kidding me. Can't yep. believe that person got a head coaching job. And then we have no idea until three years from now. Or in Frank Reich's case, eleven games right. on yeah. whether or not Jeez. it works out. Let's move away from the coaches. Go ahead, Tom man. Yeah, Shefty, there are a couple of players who are available now that could definitely help teams right away. Shaq Leonard and Derek Barnett. They both got released. Are they gonna be joining teams here, you know, this week, next week, pretty soon? And who is interested in these guys? I assume just those Top tier teams who are making a push for the Super Bowl. Shaq Leonard is setting up a visit with the Dallas Cowboys, and I think he plans to go to Philadelphia from there. We'll see whether Dallas lets him go from there. Again, there's been interest from other teams, so that'll be one of the places that he has to go Dallas, Philadelphia, other places. Uh, Derek Barnett's on waivers today. Very interesting there because he gets waived on Friday, and the same day, the Miami Dolphins lose Jalen Phillips to a season-ending torn Achilles. Hmm. So, again, there were teams that I think had some trade discussions for Derek Barnett. I think Chicago might have asked around about him. I I think that Derek Barnett will get claimed on waivers today. Uh, I could see Chicago doing it. I certainly could see Miami doing it, having lost Jalen Phillips. We'll get an answer on him at 4 o'clock today. Uh, that's the, the word should come in about 4.10, I would think. But he'll, I think, get claimed and Darius, Shaq, Darius Leonard, he'll be able to pick his new home here with Dallas first up. You just mentioned Chicago maybe claiming uh, Derek Barnett there. So with how they've done, you would assume maybe there is a chance in the future they're going to change their playing tonight, obviously. But Eberflus allowed to sign old buddy to a hundred and some million dollars. Yeah. They're keeping that thing together, right? We're running that. It feels like that is a group with the decisions they're making it would seem as if that is a group that is building for the future together. I don't think whether or not they put in a waiver claim on Derek Barnett has a bearing on Matt Eberflus's future. I, I think they're two totally separate issues. Obviously, there have been questions about Eberflus that have come up this season. There will be questions that come up about his future again. And just like Justin Fields has something to prove here in the final six weeks, probably Matt Eberflus does as well. They're, I think they're both here trying to prove something down the stretch. How much do they pay Sweat? Like, like over $100 million, right? That yeah, was a four-year deal. Yeah, so that would be Poles just saying he could fit into any team that comes in here? I, I don't think I don't think they'll claim him. I don't think they'll. I, if I had to pick a team today, just to guess on Derek Barnett, my guess would be the Miami Dolphins, but we'll see. He may get claimed before Miami's turn. I'm just saying for the Bears, that forget Barnett. Forget Barnett. Yep. Let's just talk about the Bears. Them paying that money to sweat would make me think that they're eyeing the future together. Right? I see. You know what I'm saying? Well, I, I, I think what I, I think their that their pass rush has been so bad, and the idea here is to add good quality players who are going to be around for a while, no matter what. They paid them an awful lot of money, but it was somebody that they identified that could help with a real need for that team. What's been a real weakness in recent years. And so whether or not Matt Eberflus is there, you're still going to go out and trade for a good player like Montez Sweat if you have that opportunity. Got it. Well, not if you're a bad team trying to gear up for a potential mm. play or draft run, whatever. They've, they've well, they, they, this... also, they also are going to have a ton of draft capital. They're currently sitting on the number one overall pick, courtesy of the Carolina Panthers, not to mention another first-round pick, their own. So they got two ones coming up here. That first overall pick, just look at what Bryce Young won for last year when Chicago traded out of that slot. Yeah. That number one pick this year is going to be even more valuable yeah, should which, they decide to keep it or use it. Which leads to like another interesting – why would you pay a vet 100 some? I don't know. Yeah, it, I mean, it, they got to gotta love him because that is a, a, a premium position, you know, and that's uh, you got to be lucky to strike gold in the draft at that position and those top – Top tier free agent, uh, you know, pass rushes rarely hit the open market. So it had to be, I would assume, higher than even like the head coach. Like, hey, this is a guy we identified. Let's pay him. And it's not like they, you know, reset the market with him either. Yeah, so that's Poles players. But, mm -hmm. but a rumor came out this weekend, too, that said, like, the Kevin Warren was going to potentially want to get his own guys in there being, you know, a defense. Like, they, they basically said that 
Eberflus and Poles might both get let go after this year. I'm so confused by the Bears, but I love them. Hey, let's go, Bears. <laughs> done. Let's go, Bears. Big one tonight. Big one tonight against the Vikings on ABC for Monday Night Football. Ty, is a question for you, Shefty. Yeah, Shefty, with DTR getting roughed up yesterday against the Broncos, I know P.J. Walker came in and finished the game, but is this kind of all roads lead to Joe Flacco now with the um, Browns still kind of being alive in the playoff hunt? Uh, does he still need a little bit of time to you know, get used to Stefanski's offense? or what's their plan moving forward? Well, Ty, we, we got to see if DTR can get through concussion protocol, but I think if he can't, and most players haven't, then I think there's the real possibility they could go to Joe Flacco this week. You know, he's been impressive when he went in there and worked out. That would be unbelievable to see him coming off the street at this time of the year and go and start a game. Again, they had the chance to start P.J. Walker. They went with DTR. P.J. Walker did a good job while he was there, but... Uh, I think that they might be comfortable with Flacco. I wouldn't rule that out, that we could see him starting on Sunday. They're out in Los Angeles this week. They played in Denver yesterday. They continued west. They figured it would be easier to just stay out west all week long. So they're at UCLA training. It should have been like a little bit of a homecoming for DTR. Now he's in protocol. Um, That quarterback situation is up in the air. Miles Garrett obviously heard the pop in his shoulder yesterday. He was in a sling after the game. That's not good. They're already without Deshaun Watson, already without Nick Chubb, already without Jack Conner. Like, there's only so much a team can withstand, and they withstood a lot, and they've had a really strong season, but these injuries are mounting up. Yeah, that's tough. The Miles Garrett uh, sling report really broke, I don't want to say Browns fans' hearts, but, like, if you're just a fan of football. Yeah. Need to see that guy playing football every single week. He is the epitome of just. I mean, they should put a statue of him up yes. at the Hall of Fame and say, "Hey, this is this is it. This is a football yeah. player. This is what we're looking yeah. for. That's the goal. This is what we are looking for. This entire thing. Uh, as we look at tonight's game, anything that we haven't brought up that we need to uh, keep in mind as we make our pick: Bears, Vikings. Uh, Vikings favored by three on ESPN Bet right now. Yeah, we're not expecting to see Justin Jefferson tonight. Obviously, they had the bye. Hey, week what's that next mean? Week. What's that mean? Twenty-one day window, and then he's not bad. What does that mean? And no, it means that again, that he they can activate him, but he can still play later. Just because he's not playing in this window doesn't mean that he won't play later on. Okay, he can still play, um, and they're going to want to have him come back later this season. I think he'll be back after the bye. We'll see how that shakes out with the hamstring, but don't think you'll see Justin Jefferson tonight. And I think it's just fascinating. Both quarterback situations. We talked about the Bears and all the draft capital they have with Justin Fields, who came back last week. He looked good. He looked impressive. So how does that play out, whether they're keeping Justin Fields, trading Justin Fields, keeping one of the picks, trading one of the picks? And the Vikings quarterback situation I find also fascinating because Kirk Cousins is on an expiring contract. Josh Dobbs is on an expiring contract. Both are going to be free agents. Both, by the way, happen to have the same agent, which is interesting. So we'll see how that all plays out in Minnesota and what they decide to do in the future. But Josh Dobbs has been unbelievable to watch and very impressive. And I can't believe that he's gone through nine different teams and that he hasn't been able to stick to any one of them. And tonight we'll all get the chance to watch the pasture not again. Yeah, I love the pasture not. Love Kevin O'Connell's offense too. Like the Minnesota Vikings head coach is fun to the Offense is fun to watch. Watching him is also like the Vikings will be worth the watch tonight, which yeah. is good for Monday Night Football. Speaking of worth the watch, huge win on Saturday for you in the suits. You know what I mean? You know that 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 that, that also was worth the watch on Saturday, like you said, Pat. I will say this: you know, my college buddies, we usually watch that game together, but a couple of them were in Florida. One of them went to the game. One of them was sick. So I had my in-laws at my house. I had my parents at my house. And I don't ever get like this during a game. Like, I'm watching the game, jumping around. And my in-laws, I think they approached my wife after and and probably said something like, are you sure that you married somebody of sane mind? Like, like they they never saw that side of me, ever. Like, jumping around, screaming, yelling. It's fun. You know what? I never get to be like that for a few hours on a Saturday afternoon once a year, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, lo- live your life, yeah. Shafty. You're a Michigan guy. I agree. Hey. How about, like, yep. my whole take on that game was Ryan Day, K-1, 
Can't lose this game. Can't. No matter what. Boys can't lose. And I think Harbaugh being on the sideline actually did matter. I think if you watch some situations of the previous two games where he wasn't on the sideline or even from the first three weeks, there's like moments where it's like, Harbaugh, this would have went differently. Harbaugh, this would have went differently. So I just thought there was no chance Michigan was winning that game. Not that I didn't think they were a great team. Love their team. Love the way they play. Love everything about it. I just thought there's no way Ohio State can lose. They did. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Right there in Ann Arbor. Oh, yeah. I mean, they just lost. That, and it was – that. I don't know how loud it was for Ryan Day this year as opposed to last year. It feels like it wasn't as loud for him, which shout to him being able to live his life maybe in Ohio going forward. The guy's 40-0 and 0 against all other Big Ten opponents other than Michigan. Don't matter. But they do not matter. Nope. A, but it's like that Michigan team, man, that is incredible mental toughness to handle that whole thing. Yin should be proud. Yin should be very proud. Hey, you know what? First of all, you know, I've, I've had the uh, honor of getting to meet a lot of those guys and spend a little bit of time with some of them. It's an impressive group. They're great young men. Um, and you lose Zach Zinter. He goes oh, down. Man. And on the very next play, Blake Corum finds that hole and runs for the touchdown that kind of helps make it. And then they just – they were so clutch. And then you take the ball back and you, you, you milk seven minutes off the clock with a drive when you just keep running the ball and they can't stop you. It was just very impressive. And um, it's a testament to all those guys. I'm very, I'm very happy for all them and the school. Obviously, when Ohio State was on that streak and – Basically won every year against Michigan. It was great for Columbus and great for Ohio State. Great. They loved it. They enjoyed it. I love seeing the big house filled with all those fans pouring onto the field and those kids who were at school having a lifetime memory. I can still remember my freshman year, John Colazar. I'm in the freshman section of the end zone. He catches an 80-yard pass from a guy named Jim Harbaugh. He's running right at the student freshman section. We're all going nuts, jumping around. We go out that night. Those are the things you never forget. And so I'm real happy for all those students who are at that school Hell who yeah. get to have their Michigan moment like that. Here, here. Well, hey, let's here, go. Here. Hail the victors. <laughs> it was awesome. I got how'd, you like, how'd you like Ann Arbor, Pat? How'd you like Ann Arbor? So I was, I was in and out so quick. I didn't really get to see uh, the whole town, but when we were driving around, it was beautiful. That's my first time in that stadium, though. So 112, 110,000. Underground. Yeah, it doesn't, it's not like. It's low? Optically, it feels like like a 45,000 seater because of how low it is. Because that thing goes out like this. Yeah. But it got loud. They smash them in there too. Those seats are so small in that stadium. But it was loud. I I didn't expect it to be that. Because normally bowl, that thing normally shoots out. But then they build up at the end. It got very loud. There was a lot of humans in there. So yep. much. There was a lot of humans Nuts. in there. That's awesome. It was. Uh, That's awesome. It was a cool scene, man. I was very lucky to be there, and I just I thought there was no chance Ohio State loses that game. I didn't even like as I was watching it. I was like, man, I was got to I got to hang out with Jake Moody, kicker for the Niners. Yep. Yeah, cool, cool dude, cool dude. Because they played on Thanksgiving, so he had the opportunity yeah, right. to travel back there. He was obviously incredibly pumped. Yeah. He's from Ann Arbor. I didn't. Even, oh. He's he's from the area, so it was good. Everybody was incredibly nice too. So shout out to the whole town up there. I appreciate you, buddy. Enjoy yourself tonight, guys. Have a great day. Thanks for having me. We'll talk next Monday. Enjoy the week. Are you guys on location here or no? No, we're we're in Bristol tonight, um, and so this is always my hotel room in Bristol. Like I'm getting a couple of texts. From a couple of friends, you know, like the lighting's poor. <laughs> this is the hotel. What do you want me to do? Like, I, I, I can't do a lot about it. Well, when you're watching. So we'll, we'll be in studio tonight. We'll be in studio tonight for the pregame show. Monday night countdown before the Bears and the Vikings. And uh, hopefully we get a fun, entertaining game tonight. All right. Wash some balls, Shefty. We appreciate you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Adam Shefty. Yeah, go to wash the balls, Shefty. Yeah, go to wash the balls, Shefty. And he'd be on location. I have to. Yeah. In Minnesota, it's a beautiful stadium. You want to be in there. Indoors. Kirk Herbstreit will be joining us in the next hour. We can't wait for him. Shout out to Verizon for sponsoring the first hour of Overreaction Monday every week. They're the greatest. Love yeah. you, Verizon. There's so many. I forget the number. Oh, uh, 200. 200 million people. Yeah, Ooh, that lot. should be you. All right, take three. We'll see you then. Bye. He's saying don't go off the top. It's too shallow. All you're going to hear this stadium do is they put the big paw up, they start shaking it, they go, whoa.
Yeah, yeah, he loves the defensive side of the ball. He said yesterday to me that this is a blue-collar team. They win it on special teams. They have five block kicks this season. The defensive side of the ball, Lynch leads the Big 12 in sacks. But also on the offensive side, Denzel Mims is an absolute animal. He is a weapon. Charlie Brewer, the quarterback from Lake Travis, his dad was a quarterback in Texas. Yeah. His grandpa was a quarterback in Texas. And the people here in Waco just so happened to get a chance to see Charlie Brewer on a daily basis. Okay. Hey, 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 Bologna. hey, hey, hey. Waco! Yeah, Boomer Coming here up. is going to mean a little bit different than what it means on the internet currently. And hopefully here in Baylor, they hope they're not hearing a lot of Boomer sooner. Everybody wants to be a punter, including quarterbacks. If I was a quarterback, I'd want to be a punter as well. Zero yards on that punt. Zero. That's an embarrassing situation. Zero. The Dak dance that gets on national television has led to a lot uh. of losses, but you got uh. to respect the hips being able uh. to. Uh. Get the guy. Sign, am I going to make the college game day? Well, I want to make something creative. I want to make something fun. No, to hell with it. I don't like OU. Yeah. <laughs> it's so thick. Look how thick that thing is. That's years and years of patience. Right now? Okay, let's do it. And we are out here on the Brazos River, which you can take a boat to the game. One of the only stadiums in the country that you can do that. It's beautiful out here. A lot of people would say, this is the last time I'm going to be on game day. Last time I allegedly did what I'm about to do, I ended up in a jail cell. Let's go! <laughs> That's full commitment, by the way. The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are a young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey, why? Let's go. This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for. It. Ah! The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pig! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Overreaction Monday, November 27th, 2023. Hour two of this program starts now. Football! Happened all in our faces the last four days, and it was beautiful. It'll continue this evening as the Bears and Vikings will battle in front of 75,000 Vikings fans in beautiful Minneapolis, Minnesota! I'm sure it's cold as hell out there, oh. but the action will be hot on the field between two teams heading in two different directions, seemingly. Now, what will the Pastronaut do with Kevin O'Connell in their third game together? Mm. And what will Justin Fields do now that he's back more healthy than ever? The Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. One half of the hammer, Dad! <laughs> Cowboys, Tony Diggs is not here. Oh, Tony. Tony. Hope you feel better, Tony. Love you, Tone. Get better soon, Tone. See you in a few days, hopefully, Tone. Good Hang you, in Tone. there, Tone. Talking a lot of shit, Tone, for a guy. You know, he's sick. That's how we know it's real. That baby Tone. Love you, Tone. Hope he's you probably, make it, Tone. There's no way Tone's watching this right now. He's probably no. in the middle of doing a bunch of other things. He's always doing stuff that's awesome. Uh, so sitting in his seat today is a man who is a nine-year NFL vet, one of the smartest guys of all time, Darius J. Butler. Hey, keep on, boys. And joining us out live from Manatee, Ohio, is a man who's a college football national champion, a Super Bowl champion, a Ryder Cup winner, the father of of 10. Wow. Whew. COVID survivor and also president 
Oh, no. Of a school that just lost to Michigan. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. Ladies and gentlemen, Ohio State legend, A.J. Hawk. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. I'm not the president of anything to do with Ohio, but I, I'm still behind the boys. Hard now, fought game. Don't top, be top backing out now yeah. just because Ryan Day gave you the award. I'm not backing out. I'm not backing down on them at all. I, I feel feel really good about where they are. We just couldn't. Couldn't stop them in the second half when we needed to, but, you know, I, I'm still believing the boys. Yeah, the Michigan team really felt like, uh, you know, when we were doing the Texas-Oklahoma game and we're on the field, mm-hmm. and we can't see anything. I mean, the scoreboard's yeah, right. like the screens are broken. Tough. I mean, we, we yeah. literally can't see anything, but we can only see whatever is 10 feet in front of our faces. Yeah. And we're trying to broadcast the game. It's tough, but it's fun. We're very lucky very to do fun. it. it we enjoy fun. the hell out of it. I don't know how you watch it, but we enjoy the hell out of it. You said, AJ, like very quickly from that, you're like, hey, Oklahoma's the alphas in this game. They're the ones after the play getting up like just a little bit extra mm-hmm. on top of the Texas players. The shots seemed to be a little. It felt like Michigan came out and they were the aggressors from the beginning. Now, obviously, the big turnover in the first half, the big pick down there in the red zone is a game changer, a game swinger. But it felt like that Michigan team, with everything that's been happening around their program, has somehow maintained this focus and buy-in. And obviously, Sharon Moore deserves a lot of credit, but that's a mature team up there in Michigan. I think that's what I learned from watching that entire thing. Yeah, I mean, they're, they are a very good football team. You're right. I mean, we, we talked about it weeks ago that – you can go one way or the other. And the thing is, like, when they're coming after your coach and they're coming after your whole program, yeah, what do you do? You sit there and you, you, all, you all kind of come together and it brings you even more. Like, more chips on your shoulders continues to grow and grow and grow and it feels that much better to go get big wins like they did at home. So, yeah, I give them a, a lot of credit, man. They're a good team. Uh, Ryan Day okay over there or what? Mm. I mean, I'm sure he is mightily frustrated, but, yeah, I don't – I think it's crazy to talk about Ryan Day not being there. Absolutely. Not as much this year, though, as last year, it feels like. And now, granted, that one was in Columbus, in Ohio people's faces. Yeah. You know, like, hey, yeah. Harbaugh walked into your town and just <laughs> all over. <it. laughs> and then weaves, you know, to go back to back. So it got real loud there. A lot of Ohio State people were all. Uh, on the same field, A.J. Hawk used to run around on. In Ohio. They let Michigan come in here and do this. Thing. Like It felt like last year was much more loud for Ryan Day. Now, Ryan Day's team would then end up in the college football playoff yeah. just a couple weeks later and then almost in the national championship. So I think a lot of Ohio State fans were like, ah, ah you better win the national championship then if you're not going to do that. This one didn't feel as loud. Maybe the reaction. I saw Maurice Claret, uh, who's been much more active on the internet, which we were all very happy about. Love Maurice Claret. Oh, yeah. Love everything about it. Best. Uh, uh, but, like, there's been a couple, I think, ex-players that came out and were chatting about moving on, but doesn't seem as loud. Is that an accurate uh, reading? Yeah. I mean, I think everyone is kind of, in Ohio, shell-shocked and upset. They thought thought we had that one. And then, especially how it, how it ended up, too. Like, okay, here we go. Now we do have a chance. Let's go do this. We get a touchdown kick. That's your point. We win. Boom. Everything is good. And then, boom. Interception. You know, dreams shattered right oh. there for everybody. Yeah, I guess there was a check down, too. No. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. There was a check down. Henderson right to the right. No. I wasn't in there for that. Yeah, because only one tunnel in, one tunnel out. So the logistics of it all. Sure. Certainly yeah. fascinating. Right. Very lucky to be in there. Very lucky to be in there and experience. Hey, that was nowhere near as big feeling as I thought it was going to be. No, no shot. Yeah, it's, it's, I think I told you that before. It's, it, it's dug down into the ground so yeah and it goes out instead of up you're used to stadiums going up like penn state goes up ohio state's kind of goes yeah. vertical yeah michigan's goes out a little bit more so it's kind of yeah it's weird it doesn't feel as big from the outside too when you look at the stadium yeah and there's 110,000 people you can hear them there is moment it gets loud oh, yeah. mm-hmm. and it felt like they were all bought in and i'm very yeah this is not a knock on their crap their crowd was incredibly nice to us too really it felt like yeah and i don't know if it was Genuine. I don't care. Actually. Yeah, I've said matter. this before. <laughs> People are like, hey, you know, they're just being fake nice to you. It's like, I'd rather they're fake nice to me than being real mean to me. Mm-hmm. You know, so like, if, if, if it's just fake, I'll, cool. Sure. I'll, cool. Hey, good Get to see you. Great to see set. you too. Sweet. Next I'm, time. I'm never going to see that human again. Yeah, go okay, home. so we just had a good interaction. <laughs> it's a fake positive one. We're both pumped about it. Okay, let's do that. But it, whenever we moved from the outside set to the stadium, we had to drive a good bit. You know, we were pretty far away from the stadium. Shout out. Michigan uh, Athletic Department. Is that, normal? Is that normal where you were? Because it looked like you guys were yeah. a couple drivers away. Yeah, we were we were a bit of a haul away. We, we went over some bridges. <laughs> I need we, a chopper. To we were a bit there. away. Shout out Michigan. Thank you, University of Michigan. Shout out. Sorry, Pete Thamel was just doing his job. Yeah, right. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Pete Thamel was just doing his job. 
up, you know, and things happen like that. But as we drive over, then we get to a spot, obviously, where where we were supposed to drive, there's potentially cars from another network that were blocking. Oh, uh, Because there's moving oh, stuff. So yeah, we, had nice. to, we had to get out and walk, you know, from this one part right in front of the stadium while people are loading into the stadium. Had to walk pretty good. Now, I don't want to, you know, act like I'm somebody, but as of late, it is pretty cool to see people uh, know who I am. You know what I mean? People, sure. Especially if you're walking with a couple cops and stuff. Right. People are immediately going to go, what, what, what's that, that over there? <laughs> so as we were walking, encountered probably 100, 150 uh, Michigan fans, maybe 200, 300 people, a lot of people, mm -hmm. all of them. So incredibly kind. We're happy you guys are here. Thank you for coming. Great to see you. We love you in Ann Arbor. I'm wow. like, damn, I don't know if this is fake nice or real. I don't care. I want to let you know this feels good. I did not expect this. I thought we were going to get walking in there. I thought it was going to be a little bit of uh get out of our yeah. town. Go to hell. You scumbags. Yeah, I thought it was going to be like, it was not. Everybody was incredibly kind. Very lucky to be there. And Aiden Hutchinson is huge. He is a monster of hell a man. Yeah. He walked over there and he was standing on like right behind Stanford Steve. So I don't know how much to give away. We couldn't see or hear anything whenever we were in that stadium. Not really? So That's fun. <laughs> me, Des, Reese, and Kirk couldn't see or hear anything. I guess it was also happening in the truck as well. So I, I've been told the show went out there good. Shout, shout out to everybody watching. Good shout work. Out to everybody watching. We couldn't really see or hear anything. So I got bored a couple times. You probably saw it where I was just like looking around. You know, I just started looking. Yeah, like little squirrels were start just kind of happening. Boy, awesome. I couldn't see or hear anything. I mean, what do you want me to do? I'm Come trying on. my best here. I'm just looking around. And then I see this thing walk over. It looked so cool. Had those jeans on. Right. Like mm -hmm. old school Michigan jacket on. I'm like, what is that thing? Because there's a lot of Michigan alumni or whatever. And I, it gets closer and it was like, oh, that's Hutchinson. I did not know. He is huge. I mean, he is a mountain of a man, Foxy. Yeah, and he's been getting triple teamed every time. He needs a little help on that Lions defense oh, right now. Oh, let's talk about the Lions. He's our only dog, it seems as if. Yeah, let's talk about the Lions, shall we? Yeah. Because I asked Hutch. What's uh, that toad? Wait, what's that toad? I asked Hutch. What happened? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What happened on Thanksgiving? Fair what question. That? What'd he say? Uh, no, I'm asking you. What oh, I, I, oh. I said to him, I said, Hutch, are we okay? You know, are yeah. we are we okay or what are we? And he goes, can't ride the ebbs and flows of this whole thing. Right. Wow. So stay sure. right here. Gave me Mature. a very. Well said. Mature. It was Savvy a, it was very, Yeah, we got the right guy. Gave me the full, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. The every single cutter. answer. And as I was looking at him, I'm like, I believe in this guy. Yeah. I, with how big he is, I believe in him. But that Packers ass beating of the Lions on Thanksgiving Ooh. came out of nowhere. AJ, all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. As you were having a little... Uh, well, raw uh, grilled chicken with white rice on Thanksgiving with no flavor yep. and nothing else. What did you see from the Packers? And how excited are you about the future now? Still third in the NFC North, under 500, but definitely showcased that what the future can look like. Jordan Love spinning it. Defense, oh, gr hungry. Hungry defense. Sean Garrett, man, he is a monster. Yeah, the defense looked great. Jordan Love, I think I even mentioned in our picks – uh, before this, I'm sure I lost on all the rest of my picks, but no, I, I believe great. I picked the Packers, and I said that uh, Jordan Love I thought was going to have a good day, and you see like what he can do, what he's capable of. Like, how do you just consistently kind of continue to play like this? Is I mean that ball right there was unbelievable yeah. too. I remember watching that thing live. I couldn't believe it. Stuck right on him, bam, in between everybody. Like he can do these kind of things. So yeah, it gives you a lot of hope. I think as a Packers fan. Yeah, I think so too. And as you watch it, and I, some fifty-year-old weirdo who's a fan for the Packers uh, recycled a clip from me talking about like as I misspoke whenever I said is Guti a smart man? Sure. Like, uh, I don't care if he's a smart man. <laughs> uh, is he a smart GM, though? Right. Is he? I, I asked that question to Rappaport, like, back in the summer, I think way back March. before the season, in yeah. March, in, in, in spring. I said, is he proven to be a smart GM? Like, has, has he proven that? Because if you think back to when where the teams were, NFC Championship game, they have a good quarterback, a guy that would go on to win two MVPs. They have a great running back. They trade into the first round whenever they're in the NFC Championship. Just need to get over the hump pretty much. Just gave up uh, 180 yards rushing before contact on the defensive side of the ball against the Niners. You're right there. Still have a lot of team returning. Trade up, get a quarterback. Okay. Obviously, that does some things. Then in the second round, they get a running back. You yeah, have a running back who just scored five touchdowns, I think, against the Dallas Cowboys. Or four touchdowns. Five. Uh, five touchdowns against the Dallas Cowboys. He was a, a big part of it. So it's like this guy was obviously preparing for the future. Hey, you got to do what you got to do. The future is now. I just asked the question, though, like, do we know if this guy is forces Aaron out, forces guys out? Now it's his team. 
This is his roster. This yep. is who he brought in. This is the quarterback he drafted, the coach he hired. This is his team. And I think there's moments in all these games where you think to yourself, okay, the future is going to be just like the past was. We go from Brett to Aaron. Now we're going Aaron to Jordan. That team's there. I think I saw numerous moments, not only against the Lions, but over the last few weeks where it's like, Guti might be doing a little song and dance about what his brain said to him and what it told him to do and where the Packers are. Ty, I know there's been quite a emotional run a bit. this yeah. season with where you've been with this team. After just kicking the dog shit out of the Lions. They, they did in their house. The they same did. old Lions showed up on Thanksgiving. Mm, yep, they did. Brand new Lions were expected. Jack, Jack Harley's wow. just walking around on play. So yeah. We had no chance after that. I mean, come on. That's walking around on play. He came out of a. He came out of a. What was that? Snow globe. That's his buddy brother. with him too. Oh, his brother. Oh. I think it's his brother. I don't know. He had a sweet oh, blue hat on him. Yeah, he did. Well, look at the the, the set. That was, set is sweet. Is that yeah. junior high? Is that junior? Did you see what Dolly Parton was walking around yeah. on? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Did you see what Dolly Parton had down there in Dallas? I think there's a chance Jack Harlow lost. And the Lions lost yep. when the decision was made to put that shit on the field at halftime. Yep. Thanksgiving, everybody's watching, eating their food. Everybody. And the Lions say, yeah, hey, we do this every year. We're going to mail it in for Jack Harlow. Now, I do think Jack Harlow needs a little bit more moxie in his performances. I'll say Yeah, we need a little bit more pizzazz, <laughs> okay. if you will. A little bit more. <laughs> but he was set up for failure with the, the set design. And I think that kind of oozed and radiated in how the team played. But on the flip side... Look at the Packers. Yeah. This is good news. Jordan Love showcasing he could be the guy for your team going forward. Yeah, absolutely. And I said it on Wednesday, and I wasn't being facetious. Like, no one was giving the Packers any shot to win. They had so many guys on the injury report, and it was mm -hmm. kind of just like a piecemeal, a who, we'll be lucky if we don't, you know, get beat by 28 points. First play of the game, kind of set the tone early. You know, Love completes like a 58-yard ball to Christian Watson. I think that's kind of been the biggest missing piece outside of the defense kind of just being super you know um just never knowing what you're going to get out of them week to week but well Jaden Reed has kind of been the guy they've had to rely on and they've been so young and I think we're kind of at the point where some of these young guys are kind of understanding what they need to do to be successful and Christian Watson had a huge game Rashawn Gary AJ men mentioned it three sacks two forced fumbles and Goff kind of the last couple weeks here, he's kind of been finding oh, his level yeah. a little bit. I mean, oh. it, has, it has been. He'd been playing like gangbusters, lights out. But you look at Jordan Love in the uh, in the Chargers game and now this game, and then next Sunday night they play the Chiefs at home on Sunday night football. Like, Ooh. they're they're a game out of the playoffs right now, but he's kind of got – I mean, I personally think when he plays his A game, he is very, very good. Like, when LaFleur lets him go out there and kind of just rip it, he's – He's a guy, and he can be. So we'll see moving forward. Well, you would think letting him do it, Thanksgiving is like a pseudo playoff game. Yeah. Right? Then it, it does, have, does it have that feel? I think it did. Whenever we yeah, played it, it does. Had, yeah, yeah, for sure. It, and like though, if it, it has that buzz of that, but even if even if Detroit is not that great a team, it still kind of has that same buzz. So the fact that Detroit is as good as they are this year, yeah, I think that definitely – I mean, they had to build a bunch of confidence in that game. Debo, what you learn from Jordan Love there on things? Uh, built on, built on that last week against the Chargers, and like uh, to Ty's point, twenty-two for thirty-two, sixty, a little about sixty-nine percent in the air, three touchdowns, no picks. It ran for damn near forty as well, and that's what it banged up backfield. No Jones missing uh, your best linebacker. Campbell yeah. was out. Mm -hmm. Alexander's out. Forrest out. So, and you go in uh, into Detroit. And uh, win that game on Thanksgiving, like that's a big time moment. I'm sure you know every time you go to Detroit and play on Thanksgiving, that's a big moment. But for him, he keep building on that, and it's it's by committee too. It's not just like you know when Aaron Rodgers was just throwing to Devontae or Greg Jennings. Like it's who's going to step up this week, this play, this drive. But Watson, Reed, Wicks, the tight end, like whoever it is, they're taking turns. I'm loving what I'm seeing in Green Bay. All right, Goody. Yeah. yeah. We'll see. All right, Goody. We'll see. And they screwed. Still him. under 500, third in the NFC North. I mean, there's yeah, a lot yeah. of things mm -hmm. being said first right year. now. First year. First year for for Jordan Love. Year four, but I, I understand. Game what out of the playoffs. They they still need to. That's that's why I'm trying to like put like yeah, it's a big win, but like they're 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 in a position now where like they they could go to the playoffs and they probably should. So 
hopefully he can kind of just keep building on this week after week. Hey, Jordan Love, we're happy for you, buddy. Mm-hmm. You were dropped into a oh, yeah. no-win situation. Yeah, Worst sandwich. Ever. At all. And he's just maintained a maturity, I think, that uh, not a lot of people are going to have in a similar situation, especially in the modern world that we're in right now. So we'd love to see him have great success like he's had. Joining us now is a man who's had great success for 28 years. Oh, hell That's right. yeah. Now, I'm sure before that he was a very successful human being. Oh, yeah. Quarterback at Ohio State. Oh, oh you don't say. Oh, at Centerville High School in Ohio? Most home runs in school history. My God. Whoa. Boom. How you doing? He was also a quarterback there. Now, he's the president of Ohio. Co-president, I guess. Right. Alongside A.J. Hawk. Ladies and gentlemen, the face of college football for three decades. <whistles> and somehow, he's looking younger than ever. Yeah. Amen. Kirk Herbstreit. Yeah, hey. Kirk. How we doing? Better than Ohio State is. Oh! 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 You guys lose to Michigan. Uh oh. (laughs) Gotta tip your cap. What did you see in that game? We we asked AJ about it, and we talked about this uh, about 10 minutes ago, so. To all the people that have been watching for at least 10 minutes, which I assume is many, <laughs> apologize. We have to dive back into it. Doesn't feel as loud this year as it felt last year for Ryan Day and uh, him getting kicked out of town. I think the Ohio State team ran into a very mature, talented Michigan squad up there who was able to handle everything they have going on better than I think 99% of teams would be able to handle it, even professional teams handling the circumstances they have going on around their program. How'd you see the game and what are your thoughts on where Ohio State is right now and where Michigan is right now? Well, when I was at Ohio State, it was the way it's been the last three years. You know, we, we had a hard time getting over the hump. It became what I would call a helmet game, where it became as much mental as, as it did physically, the as- physical aspect of the game. And then A.J. would be on the other side of that. You know, A.J., I, I, don't, I don't think, maybe the 3 they may have lost, uh, but A.J. had a lot of success when he was there. Jim Trestle, Urban Meyer had, you know, dominating uh, eras. And now, you know, it's it's the script is flipped. It's very cyclical. The rivalry kind of goes and ebb and flows. And right now, Michigan has the upper hand. You got to give them a lot of credit. Um, I, there's no excuses. Michigan was more physical. They what? made the plays at the end of the game. What? Uh, the interception where they got to McCord caused him to get the ball, or it was kind of hit as his arm got hit as he as he was throwing. And uh, Michigan made the plays. Ironically, an Ohio guy makes the interception more. Kid out of Dayton, Northmont makes the interception. And uh, it's the way it happens, man. It's Michigan's a good team. The most impressive thing, I think, is they do it without Jim Harbaugh. A lot of people would say, we don't even need Jim Harbaugh. But for me, yeah, you lose Harbaugh coaching, but I think it rallied the team. I think it was almost like, a, as they say, Michigan against everybody. I think it really galvanized them the last three weeks. And now they got a... Uh, a, a quick game uh, in Indy, and then they're headed to uh, well, head on the playoff. Well, not so fast. I mean, it's not a quick. I mean, quick game, game sixty Indy. minutes. It's going to be a hard, yeah, physical minutes. Physical here in oh, Indianapolis. Baby. Who's playing uh, against Michigan in Indianapolis for the Big Ten championship? Well, I think it's going to be the Iowa Hawkeyes, who uh, that we've actually just been waiting because we clinched a couple weeks ago. So we've been, you know, had had some time to kind of prep for both Ohio State and Michigan. So. Let's and just, Ferentz ain't going to waste any time. No, of course not. And what Brian Ferentz in the, the game in which you guys clinched the Big Ten West, he wasn't wearing any Iowa ha- stuff. Hasn't yet. since they basically said, hey, Brian, you're getting shit canned at the end of the year. <laughs> oh, so it's everybody else. It's not his fault that the offense is rugby. It's everybody else's fault. He's the victim in this whole situation. I don't know. I mean, maybe just one one final act of defiance before he rides off into the sunset, which I can appreciate. Yeah, absolutely. You know, as long as he's not coming back next year, I could really give two shits what Brian Ferentz does on the sidelines. Yeah, but the boys love him. They do. Team loves him. They do, him. and I'm sure we'll love the next guy as well. Hey, Herbie, what do you mean a quick one? This sounds like the way you were talking about West Virginia. You know what I mean? This, that's what it yeah. sounds like. You're saying the Big Ten Championship for like the last 10 years has kind of been an interesting thing history shows that once the big 10 went east and west I, I brought it up on our call this morning i don't think the west is one i don't think the west you know there have been a couple i think iowa michigan state was a close low scoring game but more often than not if you survive the east you you kind of have the upper hand history would show you so i i uh, i i don't think it'll be a blowout because phil parker uh, and Taylor, the punter, will probably keep making a field position game, but tend to think that Michigan's going to be all right in that game. Penn State uh, beat Iowa 31-zip this year. Kate McNamara got hurt in that game. 
Still not playing, Cade McNamara. It's oh, actually no. uh, Deacon. Deacon Hill, and I'll tell you what, he has looked. I mean, granted, in almost every game, he does two to three things where it's almost like he's intentionally trying to lose the football game, but he's gotten better every single week he's played. Come on, Ty. What? I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just being real, Kirk. <laughs> I'm just being real. That's like the nicest thing he has said about this guy. By, by a lot. Herbie, by by this a is lot. The, that's the nicest thing he has said <laughs> yeah. about this Deacon Hill character. Ty has had him and his – Deacon Hill had no idea. Cade McNamara transferred in. Deacon was just supposed to be chilling this Well, year. and it's not his fault because he, he is not supposed to be playing. Bingo. So, you know, but he is playing. And so, we're playing so for a Big Ten championship. So what, so what you're saying then is you, you, can, you can flip the field with the punt. Yep. And Phil Parker and that defense are tenacious. Exactly. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, we're probably going to need to force oh, eight to nine turnovers if we want to win this football In the thing. red zone. In, yeah, in, in field yeah, goal. Yeah, yeah, in plus territory. Um, but, hey, crazier things have happened. The Hawks are coming to Indy, and they're bringing hell with them. You're damn right. Yeah. You're damn right. And Ty gets to get eyes on the Hawks one time all year. That's exactly. why he looks forward to this whole thing. So he's excited. He's going to be on the field pretty much. Can't wait to see you enjoy that game and can't wait for championship weekend as a whole. Go ahead, AJ. Kirk, what do you think it looks like next year when we open up to 12 teams? Like, what are some like the unintended consequences maybe that we don't see coming that we think like, like basically who's going to be pissed off next year? Well, not just the 12 teams. Think about in the Big Ten, uh, you're not going to have divisions. So Ohio State and Michigan would go round two this week. I, I don't know how I feel about that. I don't, I don't know how players feel about that. I don't know how fans feel about that. It's almost like you're better off losing the first one and then winning the second one. I just think the psychology of that is going to be different. Um, I, I like the fact that Ohio State, Michigan take the field, winner take all. You lose, you go back home, you regroup and get ready for the next year. Now with 12 teams and no, not having divisions, you know, you're going to more than likely see Ohio State and Michigan play quite a bit in a Big Ten championship game the week after playing the regular season. I, I, I don't think that's a, a good thing. Um, and again, one thing I love about college football, more so in college basketball, you watch you know, the games until you get to the tournament, it doesn't really matter. And in college football, we've always felt like, man, you really can't afford to lose a game. Then you get into a debate like Texas – and Alabama, Alabama loses that game. We're still, here we are, that was week two. We're still talking about, boy, if Alabama wins and Texas wins, there's no way Alabama can go over Texas because they lost it. I think people still use that logic, right? Well, if there's 12 teams, that game's irrelevant. So I think you're going to lose a lot of the importance of some of the regular season games that I really love the magnitude of and 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 the consequences of losing those games by going to 12. Yeah, it's um there's a chance too Ohio State Michigan could play again in the playoff too. So it's yeah. like cool. three. Yeah, just never, you know, just three of them. Hey, the game. The game two this year. <laughs> yeah. The game yeah. three this year. And you ask the Michigan fans, would you like to play? I think Reese did, would you like to play Ohio State two times in one season? And he's, yeah, hell yeah. Three times hell yeah. And then I think people started thinking about it. They're like, well, then it kind of it kind of ruins this one. Yeah. It was the game. <laughs> yeah. I mean, after, you, after you beat them, you beat them, you know? But next week um, matters more. Then the Big Ten Championship matters yeah. more than the game does it either. Hopefully they'll be yeah. able to figure out, although it doesn't seem as if uh, smart humans are making decisions in every single situation. Shout out to Jacksonville State and JMU. Yeah. Go, go bowling. That's right. Let's go. Go bowling. That's good news. That's good news for all parties. That's good news for college football. Let's talk a little bit about this weekend being down there in the SEC. Now, are you calling a game on – What's your schedule look like for this week? What are you doing this week, Kirby? Cow Cowboys, Seahawks in Dallas on Thursday night. Big one. And then I'll yeah. fly to Las Vegas after the game. And uh, Friday, the Pac-12 championship with Oregon and Washington is Friday night. Ooh, big one. Uh, winner take all. And then I'll fly after, uh, ga after that game in Las Vegas Friday night. I'll fly to uh, Atlanta to join you guys for college game day Saturday morning. Big one for the SEC championship. Massive. Those are three yeah. pretty big games back to back to back. I'd say. And Herbie's just going to be a part of it all. Hey, you've deserved all this. You've earned all this. Boy, Kirk. We're almost Man, there. Fun. Hey, we're almost yeah. there. You look good. You you feel good this year? You feel healthy? You feel energetic? I feel great. I feel great. I'm having a blast. The NFL year two has been a lot of fun. 
uh, Al and I just more and more comfortable, just like you and I, the more, more you're around each other, the more you hang out, um, you just get more comfortable. And I think you can relate to that with, with game day in year two. And I certainly feel that with the NFL and, and, um, you know, just an example of that is college football. You know, I'll go out to take Ben out in the pregame, walking around. I, I know my area. I know exactly what I'm doing. Last year, when I come out to an NFL game, first few weeks, Kenley and I are looking at each other, and I'm like, "Are we allowed to go out?" You know, the kickers are out there warming up. Are we allowed to go out there? I just, just a small thing like that tells you now you know exactly where you can go. You walk around, so there's a much more um, different level of just being comfortable. Um, and I'm having a blast with the NFL. I mean, the, the games. I think not just Thursday, but I think that really you watch the games on Sunday. We're, we're, we, you and I keep talking about this. We're at, we're at a, I don't know, a bit of a crossroads, I think, with the NFL. I saw Tom Brady come out recently and talk about he wonders if the development is as good as it used to be, if, if the game is as good as it used to be. And I saw Alex uh, came back at him a little bit and said, you know, I think the game's even better. I just know from calling a lot of games, not just Thursday and watching a lot of games on Sunday, you have about 10 to 12 teams that have a good quarterback have a good offense and an identity. I think you've got about 18 to 20 right now that are searching and grinding. What I'm finding every single week is it's not just quarterback play. It's the lack of offensive linemen. You, you get an injury to a right guard and the left tackle has to move over. And the, now we're going to pick up a guy off the street who hadn't played. And now he's going to go over here. And, and that's every week in the NFL. And the offensive linemen, there's such a discrepancy from li offensive linemen to superior defensive line play and so when you have a, a a quarterback that's young or a quarterback that's trying to figure it out and you got injuries on an offensive line it's like kryptonite to the nfl right now and i think we have a lot of teams that are going through that right now that just have injuries on the offensive line and just don't have enough depth to put together a good enough product look at the teams that are good right now and the one thing they all have in common is they have great Offense alignment. Yeah. And they have healthy offense alignment. Post Thanksgiving That's the difference football. Between, yeah. It's post Thanksgiving do it, do it, football it, trenches. Yeah. You got to stay square, obviously, but it's real. Whenever the weather starts changing, you know, you got to be able to move humans on the ground. You got to be able to, it might take a little bit longer for a route to develop because the weather is trash or whatever the defense is doing. It's like whoever has an offensive line and whoever has a defensive line is normally yeah. going to be the ones that win these games that matter in November and especially into December and January. Uh, Herbie, we're going to call you back. Our connection just got bad. Let, me, let us call you back. Let us call you back. Um, do you agree with what he's saying about bad offensive line? I think so. You know what I mean? It's been a problem yeah, I mean, for the last couple of years. It doesn't matter who you are, like what who your quarterback is, whatever's going on. If you feel like you can't consistently drop back and like have – some sort of a clean pocket, you're screwed. Like, good luck. It's at every level, too. High school football, yeah. mm -hmm. if you have a good offensive line, your yep. team's probably going to be good. Oh, yeah. College, if you have a good offensive line, your team's probably going to be good. Mm -hmm. In the NFL, same exact thing. But they're saying nowadays with the way football is, there isn't a, there isn't really a, a, di it's a different vibe at the offensive line role because it's a lot of this. It's a lot of misdirection. Yep. It's not a lot of downhill. Uh, Two-point stances, yeah. yeah. A lot of, like, growing up, two-point stance, zone, read stuff, so they're more – agile, athletic, big, tall dudes that are like track runners that all of a sudden weigh 300 pounds. Yeah, so instead of, you know, having to go square up with somebody, there's a lot of kind of moving sideways. You agree with that or no? I, I agree with that. Some of the college game coming to the NFL, too. And I think back in the day, the NFL we grew up on, it was a completely different game. It was a pro style and it was a college style game. So guys knew exactly what they were getting into coming to the league. You knew exactly what you were drafting, what type of guy. So it's, uh, I don't think overall is it mediocre no, i think it's still a good brand of football player yeah player. and it feels like i mean like those guys are smaller two point stands all that we're just talking about miles garrett being a statue at the hall of fame like they have to be smaller because these dudes on the edge are going so yeah, damn you're fast. too small yeah. oh absolutely, you know what absolutely. I, mean? that, I don't know if miles garrett's the right one to say yeah true. this guy's got to be small because he's what 260 or something like yeah that. but it runs a 4-4 yeah exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. everybody has kind of gotten bigger faster stronger i saw peter's playing he's 41 years old yeah yeah <laughs> He was up. Huge. Yeah. Huge. Huge. I don't I don't know. I don't know. Hey, shout out to him. Yeah. Still, Still doing, doing it. it. Just crushing. Still doing it out there at left hand. I believe uh oh, we're gonna call him back. I okay. apologize. I thought Classical Ohio. It seems right. like guys who are getting drafted in later rounds now are less likely to be, you know, either like starters or like reliable guys who can stay in the league for a long time. Like it seemed like ten to fifteen years ago, like it wasn't just the can't miss prospects and like left tackles who are getting drafted in the first round. Like you could find a guard 
or a, a tackle in like the fifth round who would play and be like a legitimate guy for like seven to ten years. I feel like that doesn't happen as much anymore. We'll ask AQ Shipley on uh, Wednesday why that's happening. Joining us once again, the face of college football and Thursday night football in prime, ladies and gentlemen, Kirk Hershey. Everybody, Kirk. Hooray! Everybody, here we, hey, one last thing on that because I heard you guys talking about it. I, I, I don't think it's just not having the depth to the line. I also think the quarterback play from high school to college into the NFL uh, is very different than it was back in like 10 or 15 years ago or further back. You know, I, I think now you're, you're in high school, you're running an up-tempo offense, you're looking at the sideline, you don't huddle, you're looking at, you know, a card, same thing in college. Then you're trying to go into the NFL and you're, now you're going to huddle for the first time in your life. So I think that's a different thing. I think NFL offensive coordinators are being forced to adjust to, you know what, like Andy Reid did with Pat Mahomes. Instead of him learning what we did at Green Bay and Philly and all these places, we're going to have him, we're going to learn what he does well. We're going to adjust our scheme to him. And I think right now you have offensive coordinators that are younger that are trying to figure out how to relate to this new era of quarterback who's more mobile and he's a different guy than than Phillip Rivers or Aaron Rodgers or Drew Brees or Peyton Manning or Tom Brady. It's just a different time. And I think it's it's putting these these young offensive coordinators that learned West Coast offense or the digit system, whatever it might be, yep. they're learning how to now do spread and up tempo and how to attack and RPOs. It's it's a totally different game. Okay, let's talk about a totally different team then that you got to call on the Black Friday game, the Miami Dolphins. I mean, Tua, I don't want to say he's not moving, but Tua is yeah. a pocket timing. We're going to put this into a bucket quarterback. He is fantastic, and he's been linked with a guy who loves everything about him and is trying to make the most of everything he can do on the field at McDaniel. What did you learn watching that game, and how did the Black Friday prime football experience go at 3 p.m.? 3 p. What was the 3 p.m. time? Do you know? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think we had to be off the air by a certain time, so I think the NFL decided to put it uh, in that 3 o'clock window. I think that's where it'll probably be moving forward. I think it was. I think it was a pretty big success. I, I love the Dolphins team. I, you know what's different about these guys? Um, you can probably see it when you watch Hard Knocks. I think the wiring of the team. You know, they got a good mix of some leaders, um, and that, that keeps them kind of on track. But then you also have some some young guys that that bring some energy. I'll tell you, Tua. We had him on a Zoom. I, I've never seen a guy change more from who he was in college as, as a national champion to who he is now as an NFL player. You know, he, he grew up in, 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 with a Polynesian background with his family. This is a guy that would go to, the, to uh, as a fifth grader, sixth grader, seventh grader, he used to tell me stories about his grandparents. They would go to a local park and pull their lawn chairs out, and his dad would work with he and his younger brother, and they would sit there for four or five hours every weekend, and they would work. And, you know, it, once he got to the point where he's good enough to go to college, he wanted to go to USC. And his dad said, OK, we're going to Alabama. And he didn't really have much of a say in it. He was going to go. And, and, and his culture, you, you, you kind of listen to your father and, and you respect him and everything that he says. And so he went to Alabama. And then I think Nick Saban almost became that father figure for him. So he's always kind of trying to please his dad or Nick Saban. Well, Mike McDaniel comes in and teaches him how to think and believe and become his own independent self. So I think he's much bigger than just he's grown as a football player. I think he's grown as a person. And I think you now have a very different individual. And I think that stuff with Ryan Clark questioning him, like Tua would have never come back at him when he was in that different, younger Tua. Now he kind of gets bristled. Now he kind of, and it just tells you a little bit about, the only reason I tell you all that is, when you're watching him, you're not just watching a guy that's executing Mike McDaniel's offense. You're watching a guy that's really become the alpha of this Dolphin team. And I like this team. You know, I think the, the, the Dolphins and the Ravens, Week 17, he, they got to go to Baltimore. That game could go a long way in deciding who gets home field throughout and gets that one seed. But uh, there's a lot to like about this team. I hated to see that injury to Phillips with the Achilles. Mm. They've got some depth there with, with – uh, Van Ginkle can go in there and play that spot, but that was a big hit for them. But, uh, man, they, there's, uh, there's a lot to like besides just they're fast. They got a great scheme, and, and like I said, I think they got great leaders. Compy, listen to that. How about Compy? it, baby, Herbie? You hear that? Van You're... Ginkle, Van Ginkle slide right in there. Also, yeah. uh, people might not know, Emmanuel Ogba 
has the biggest cap, biggest cap hit on the Dolphins roster this year. He's been playing about 20% of the snaps. Oh, Hell yeah. yeah. Okay, so I don't know yeah. why that was the stat you just dropped in there. He what should you... be able to slide in for Phillips. He has had double-digit sacks before in his career. Oh, okay, that's why you were saying yeah. it. It yeah. wasn't a negative yeah. thing. No, no. We that need all that. Hey, no, looky, looky. Look. His time he's now. He's a good guy. He's a good player. Dog yeah. season. Here's one little, one, little, one, little, one little added comment. Vic Fangio's system, pretty complicated. Darius can talk about that. They just look like every week, the timing of it getting better these last four or five weeks. Jalen Ramsey comes back. Oh, yeah. They just they, they look like a team. It's all about, as you guys know in the NFL, getting better and getting better. You're going to have a few setbacks. They just look like a team that has a chance. Look at their next three or four games. They're about to, they're going to be 11 and three. Even if they don't try, they're going to be eleven and three. Jeez. It's all going to, it's all going to come down to that trip to Baltimore. I can't wait to see who's on the schedule. Who yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> absolutely. Oh, so they're done. They got like Tennessee. They got the Jets again. Hey, I, I can't remember who else. They Panthers are there. Commanders, <laughs> Commanders. This they're, they're, they're walking, walking to eleven and three. Go ahead, AJ. Jeez. Kirk, what do you see when you watch Philly play? Obviously, they come from behind victories. Everything they've done last night was was a crazy fun game to watch. When you see them, like. Do you see them legit contending for the Super Bowl, even though we say, like, all right, they haven't even hit their ceiling, haven't played that great yet, and they just find a way, it seems? Yeah, I, I think they've got a great culture. That's the team. You just put them – when you're talking about the two or three or four teams, you can't not put Philly in there. Um, and, and I thought yesterday was another great example. They didn't necessarily play their best ball, but is there something about Jalen Hurts? I mean, just something about his personality – his wiring, the game's on the line. He looks like he's just a flatliner, right? Now he's intense and he plays great. He does these incredible things. But I love how he just keeps his energy it's always the same. Whether he throws a pick or he's going in overtime to try to win the game, he's got that same win. I think his team feeds off of that energy. So if they stay healthy, especially up front, they got to be one of the top two or three teams. Uh, to beat in the entire NFL, for it, sure. Definitely. And Jalen, I appreciate how calm, cool, and collected you always are. You are wise beyond your years. But if Jake Elliott buries a 59 yarder <laughs> from the logo, yeah. and that rain and that wind, you're allowed to be like, well, damn. Yeah. yeah. No, that, was pretty, that was pretty impressive. Needed it. I mean, yeah. that guy, they have it on all phases, though. They have special teams. Yep. They have a great defense. Mm -hmm. They have an incredible offense. And Sirianni is the perfect guy to lead a Philadelphia Eagles. What a kick. Aim that thing left. Dude. What 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 is it about NFL kickers? I always I always talk to you about it. I go out intentionally down on the field every week just to watch these guys. And I kid you, like they need to move the uprights in because these guys are too good. They're just too their legs are too strong. They're too accurate. I know they're gonna miss one here or there, but I just feel like you know, like when you watch baseball, you watch guys anymore that they all throw ninety five or ninety eight. Everybody does. I feel like kickers, they all now – I remember there used to be a time when, it, when they'd hit a 52-yarder. It was like, holy cow, look at this. Now it's like all of them have that leg strength. What has happened, Pat? Is the technique different? Yeah, buddy. stronger? Why is every single kicker so good? So not every consistent? single one. There's guys that – Not everyone, but a lot Tucker. of them. There's like 10 guys that are normally on a carnival or a carousel at the bottom. Teams are trying to find a guy. But just like any job that has a lot of money potentially available for it, you know, people are going to work harder. It's going to draw different people. I think much more athletic people are trying to get into kicking and punting. Maybe guys who weren't able to crack it as professional soccer players or even like wide receivers or running backs but had a soccer background. It's like, let's focus in on doing this. I think you got a different level athlete mentally – kicking these days than you did back in the day. And the exercises and workouts and techniques that you need have made everybody better. It's just like any sport. It's an evolution, yeah. any craft. It's just like uh, golf. They're hitting the ball further yeah. than they've yeah. ever hit but, before. But, but, but I was going to ask you that because, like, golf, um, baseball, quarterback play, everyone talks about the, ro the, the biomechanics and the rotational uh, pa the rotational passers now that you see, and, and they throw the ball without, you know, Aaron kind of created it, and now everybody is doing it. I'm just curious if when you watch these kickers, is that a thing for kickers too? Like they, with their hips, is that different than how guys kick, let's say, in the 90s or you know, 10 years ago? Yeah, so, Kirk, what you're looking for is leg speed. Okay, that's what you're looking You're looking for leg speed. How do you generate leg speed? Is that from big quadriceps? Is it from your hip? Is it from your form? Is it from your flexibility? Whatever it is, they're working on it every single day since high school now. There's camps all year round. There's, like, 
I don't want to say exercises and workouts, but they got kids, you know, like I see some parents, 15, 16 years old, like this boy's going to be a kicker in the NFL. What does he need to do? I'm like, I've uh, survived, I guess. <laughs> May, I, don't, I, I, I don't know how it is, but it's like when you could get paid millions of dollars to do something, that's going to change the way people kind of attack it. And to your point about kickers being better than ever, it's like it's it's the reason why the extra point moved to 33 yards. It's the reason why all these conversations of making things harder and more difficult start to take place because how great guys have gotten. But he called me last night, middle of the game, uh, one of the games. He goes, me and Chase are talking. Don't you think we need to move these uprights in? Don't you think we need to move these? Just make in? it more Come challenging. On. He no, said, I'm sick of it. He said, I'm sick of it. That's where Kirk was like, don't we think? Like the arena geez. league. Geez. Arena league was very narrow. Yeah, arena league yes. is, is like yes. training uprights. He's like, because these guys just hit it right over the, I mean, it's just, it's right. The right middle, right. Yeah. the middle post, it holds the, the entire, it goes right over the middle every time. And that's, <laughs> that's Kirk being a hater. Yeah, sure. he, clearly. He doesn't want to see these kickers have success. You hear yeah. that? Oh, yeah. Like, these nerds making too many kicks. <laughs> We need to make this a little bit harder. Let's bring that thing in. How about that kid in Michigan? Worst kick we've had yet, Herbie. We both didn't get well, you, also, you also coached me up on the punting with the wind. Yeah. You know, talk to him about that. That, that I thought was pretty fast. I, was, I don't even think about stuff like Australian rules or Australian punter comes over, and he has a different way of punting a football. Yeah. And the end over end into the wind, obviously, is not a good thing. No, yeah. The Ohio and State guy was getting beaten up by the wind in Michigan. The wind. In that first yeah. quarter. And he continued to hit the end-over-end punt, I think, because he is an Aussie guy. That's just like their style of punt. Now, they do hit the, uh, the – side spin. They do one. hit a, a yeah. spin, like a spirally punt, but it's nowhere near used as often as the end-over-end punt. And he just kept hitting this end-over-end ball right into a wind, and it would just go up and it would sit, and then Michigan had the ball at the 45 again. And it was like, hey, this is a real – this is a real thing that's happened. And then the Michigan punter comes out. He hits one Ooh, like 70. Yeah, yeah. He hits another yeah. one 60. And I'm sitting with Jake Moody. I'm like, who's this kid? He's like, American kid hits uh, hits absolute bombs. Because in the punting world, you know, there was a lot of Australians coming in. No offense. I love the Australians. I love yeah. the country of Australia. The Bobby. I love the I love the mindset, the culture, the vibes. Every Australian I've met. You know, they say, you, you ever you ever been to Australia? Need to go. Can't wait to yeah, get I've over there. there. I've heard no, it's beautiful. No. But they were getting scholarships to get guys who are like 23, 24 years old after yeah. an AFL career. And there was a lot of 18-year-old Americans that weren't getting, you know, this was all of a sudden a scholarship opportunity that was kind of taken away from. So a little animosity. I'd say, yeah. And then the guy who runs the Australian kicking thing. Uh, that Chris Fowler is like best friends with. Loves him. Loves yeah. him. He started talking some real shit when oh, the yeah. Americans were like, oh, easy to beat up on 17 year olds when you're like 24 years old mm -hmm. and like figure it out. So there was a time. I think we're all past it now for the good of sport. Oh, okay. I think we're all okay. past it nice. and everything like that. But there is certainly different techniques that I think Americans have learned a lot from Australians. We're very grateful for. But there's some things that American kids have whenever you grow up in football. That is a little bit different, you know, just a little bit yeah. different. So I think we're in a different spot. But yeah, the end over end ball into the into the wind. Into the wind, not good. Not great. Not yeah. good. I was never able to figure it out. Now I, maybe they are, but I, uh, if I'm staring into the wind, I'm trying to turn that thing over, mm -hmm. cut through it. You know, oh, I'm trying yeah. to cut through it. But I'm just a dumb American, so <laughs> we'll just keep moving forward in that whole thing. Let's talk college ball. Ty has a question for you. Yeah, Herbie, when you look at this weekend, and it'll be a moot point if they don't get the job done and win, but can you see a scenario where FSU goes undefeated and still doesn't get in because Jordan Travis is hurt and they have it? I mean, granted, they beat the hell out of North Alabama and ended up getting the job done against Florida, but... Is there a situation where they don't get in, or do you think the backlash of an undefeated Power 5 school not getting in will potentially keep them in no matter what? So you're trying to get FSU Twitter going here, huh, on a Monday? I just think it's, I think it's a fair conversation when you look at some of the other schools who are kind of in position here. Don't let them in, so Kirk. Don't let them in, Kirk. Don't let them in. They, so, uh, they can't so go. They'll ruin the whole so thing for us. So you're, ah, mad, ah. you're mad at me because it's going to be – Michigan's going to beat Iowa, so now you're you want me to go down this path to get to to rile up Florida State. Don't let him Is that what you're asking me to do? No, I'm just saying I don't necessarily. And, and it might Great it might question, not happen. Man. It might not happen. But we've seen these four seeds who kind of squeak in and then get beat by let, 65 let points. Ask, 
Let me ask the group here that follow college football. Let me ask you guys. This. Nah, we're asking you. Yeah. No, I'm going to answer. I'm going to answer. Faith. But I want to. I want to ask you. Are you? Do you guys think that this playoff was built to put the four most deserving teams into the playoff, or do you think this playoff is trying to put the four best teams into the playoff? I just, if you could just go. Round the group there. What do you guys think? All right. Uh, we'll start with Darius. Darius. It should be the best. Okay. He says four best teams. Four best. Ty. I think it's the most. I think it is the most deserving, though. Okay. So Ty gives an answer of what reality is versus what his thoughts are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. Didn't like, I didn't like that answer. You know, he got accepted <laughs> in Harvard. He's our big brain guy. <laughs> that, is, that is what he did there. Kind of con man, what do you think? Well, you just said it. Our big brain guy saying the four most deserving. So I kind of have to lean that way now if, that, if that's what oh, the thought no, is. It should no. be the that best. Be think for State. yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You're oh, welcome. well, yeah. Personally, I think you put. Florida State in one of the most respected bowls, the Myrtle Beach Bowl, <laughs> and you have them go and play maybe Coastal, maybe JMU. Maybe, maybe go have a little JMU Florida State game. What's you, this all about? Let's go have a little fun in the grass somewhere, and let's let's let some of the teams that have all their players healthy, you know, go go play the big games, you know? What do you say? You're saying because they got a backup quarterback, they shouldn't be in the college football playoff? What if they win the ACC championship with a backup quarterback? Yeah, I'm saying if Florida State gets into the college football playoff, then we have one semifinal game, and then we have one bye for a team that's playing a squad that doesn't, that unfortunately had their season get completely screwed by a leg that turned left that Booger McFarlane wasn't expecting. Neither were we. It's Kevin Nagandi. None of us were no. during that highlight show. AJ, so I don't know if Connor gave an answer or not. What do you think? I didn't. I'm with Ty. I think they they claim it's the best, but they probably put the most deserving that they think is the most deserving. Herbie, your turn now. Here we go. So I I think it should be the four best, but what what's interesting is I'm not saying Florida State's not, but I'm saying it should be the four best. Here's the quick little note. We've had this for nine years, the playoffs. The average margin of victory in the semifinals is 19 points. I think the committee has typically, as Ty mentioned and AJ alluded to, they typically try to put teams who are most deserving. I don't think it should be that. When they put this together, it was always about trying to put, sure, you need to be the most deserving, but you also need to be the four best. So this is the first time I can remember all five of the Power Five conferences potentially are going to have a team, unless there's some upsets this weekend, that have a shot to get in there. There's only four spots. So you got Oregon and Washington playing on Friday night. To me, the winner of that game should be in. I don't care Oregon has the one loss. If they beat Washington, I think they're in, in my opinion, as Pac-12 champs. You have Georgia and Alabama. If Georgia wins, they're in. If Michigan wins, they're in. There's three spots. So now you have Texas playing Oklahoma State, and you have Florida State playing Louisville. If Texas wins and Florida State wins, you're going to have a heck of a debate. And that's why... You're going to have to try to figure out how do you separate Florida State, who's undefeated. So all you want to hear about is they're undefeated against a one-loss Texas team. They won a lot of games. It's not. It's ain't a laser thing. This, <laughs> they are undefeated. They, you're just saying. No, I know that gets know. thrown in there. A little. But 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 Jordan Travis being out, I think it, it, if you ask the committee and go by what they take into consideration. I was I called the Florida State Florida game. I was more impressed with Florida State did last week than any other game maybe they played it outside of winning at Clemson and beating LSU week one. That was impressive. I know Florida's record isn't great, but that was a rivalry game in a really tough environment with a backup quarterback where the game was going sideways and they came back and won. So I actually walked out of that game last week more impressed with Florida State than I was prior, knowing that uh, Rodemaker was in there for their heart and soul, Jordan Travis. So I'm excited to watch them play against Louisville. If they win that game, I don't think it's a slam dunk they're in just because they're undefeated. I think they need to hope um, just so they don't get into a debate. They they need Texas to lose. That would help them. They need uh, it, Watch this. If Alabama beats Georgia, Ooh, yeah. what the heck happens then? Yeah, you're going to keep Alabama and Georgia out because they – No, both they, in. Both, both, both in. Yeah, so both of them in. I'm asking Darius, is, is Alabama Oof. or Al Oof. is Georgia not one of the top four teams because if they were to get, ups, get upset and lose, can we say – Georgia's not one of the best four teams because they lose to Bama? If, if you're high. If it's, if it's on me, I'm putting Bama and Georgia in there. 
Okay, so you're saying Bama wins that game. Bama wins the SEC championship. I'm putting Bama in Georgia. Say Georgia wins by three. Bama's out. If Georgia shows up to play, they they should be in the in the Final Four. If they just make it to the game to me in Atlanta, they should. Are you telling me they're not one of the best four? Yeah, I I, I don't Mm -hmm. buy it. Hey, we got one one minute before a hard out on ESPN, and you crowned somebody on Saturday. But (laughs) D Bud has a question for you. Yeah, it's pretty close. I know you crowned it, but Heisman, who's taking that Heisman home? I know you crowned it, but Bo Nix, I think, is still the betting favorite. Yeah, got Bo Nix, Penix Jr. and, he, and Bo has that Friday night game against Penix. Mm-hmm. And and uh, if one of them go off, I think that could be huge, especially Bo Nix. But Jaden Daniels, the big thing for him that hurts him is the three losses. A lot of the old school voters will say, you can't give it to a guy. He has three losses. But he's been the most dynamic player and done things we haven't seen in a long time at that position. So you gave it to him on Saturday on the field. You remember that? He said... Jane Daniels already won the Heisman. <laughs> he's gonna win one. Nice that he's get, yeah, he's, he won the Heisman. He's gonna win the Heisman. You have a Heisman I, vote? I do have a vote, but I've not submitted until I watch Bo Nix on Friday, and okay. then huh. I'll, I'll make a decision after that. All right, what about Carson Beck? Let me talk about it. Yeah. yeah. All right, we're out of here. We'll be back tomorrow with Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. You're the best. See ya. Hey, home run. Yep. Banger. Home run. We got out of there. You did just give Jaden Daniels the fucking thing, though. Like, I was sitting there. <laughs> I, was, I was, you know, because I'm the only one on that set that does not have a Heisman vote, by the way. What? Really? Yeah, yes. we need to. So, but we need to fix that. Disrespect. We do not need to fix it. You need a vote. I, I do not want a Heisman vote. I do not need a Heisman vote. But, like, I understand that you all have Heisman votes. So, whenever you guys are talking about Heisman, it actually matters, you know? And I'm maybe trying to steal a little, you know? Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm trying to steal a little. Like, so when you guys are talking about it, I'm like, well, okay, I'm listening. You know, like, I am, I'm trying to hear what you're saying. And then whenever you go, Jaden Daniels already won the Heisman this year, I'm like, whoa, shit, that means a lot. That guy's got an actual vote over yeah. there. We need bro, to talk. Bro, you don't, want, you don't want a vote? No, I don't deserve You don't want a vote? I don't deserve it. Also, it's a lot of pressure. You know what I mean? I don't need that pressure in my life. You're, you're voting. I will give you're a vote voting. right oh. now. Corey Is Taylor. it public, Kirk? Wow. Are your votes public? Boom. No, no, Mark you're not down. supposed to say who you vote for. You did. Would it be better <laughs> if they made it public? Yeah. Unless, unless Pat puts big bright lights on it. And then <laughs> you thought that was just going to sneak by when you said it? It kind of was, I guess. Nobody yeah. was really saying anything. A little anything. bit. No one said anything about it. Yeah. Except I mean, they've had winners like that before, that, though. RG3, uh, Lamar. Manziel, Johnny, right? Johnny Football, those guys weren't yeah. like undefeated going, you know. I think Reese went Jackson. into a full Lamar Jackson when he was at Louisville. Mm-hmm. He did like, oh, he was clearly yeah. the best player on the in the country, although they didn't have college football playoff dreams and I things. I think Daniels like. deserves it. His numbers are bananas, but Bo Nix. Also yeah. nuts. If they win and then they're in the college football playoff, and Ooh. has to be. That's going to be tough. They, they're going to be loud. Yeah. Those, yeah. Are, those Oregon folks are going to be very loud because he came back hey, for it. Hey. Hey, to, to, to go back to what to what Ty said, because he's right. Even if Oregon wins and they're sitting there with one loss, I think they're a slam dunk in. But if you have undefeated Florida State and one loss Oregon Come on. and one loss Texas, I think the committee will be like Georgia, Michigan, Florida State, mm. and then they'll debate between Oregon and Texas. Ugh. In Texas, I'm not we'll saying, have to they, I'm not saying yeah. they should. I'm not. I, I would not do that. But that I think that's what they will do. Shouldn't the Washington win mean a lot? Then you know, yes. wa- shouldn't the Washington win mean a bunch? Like, what would Texas? I, I, I'm, I'm putting Oregon in if they win. By the way, the Oregon game, the first time they played them, got a call. The, it was Mac, it was old red there. The first time they Dog? played them, I'm red. no. No, old red's Blake first time Shelton, they played sorry. Oregon. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Blake Shelton's old red, the dog that got him out of jail. Right. Yeah, yep. love got him in there. Love got him out. Because if you remember, he caught his wife with another, another man. man, and it cost him ninety nine. <laughs> on a prison on farm <laughs> in Georgia. Sorry, go ahead, pal. That's old red. Oh, no, I was just asking why, why Kirk couldn't get uh, Pete on stage, why he had to be on the field Saturday. Yeah, what's that all about? <laughs> yeah, Kirk. <laughs> T- tell us, Kirk. There's Kirk, nothing to worry about. Tell us. Kirk, you and me both said nothing immediately upon it happening. Kind of feel like a little bit of a – I think I was really taken back. I did not know that was happening, you know? And then I, I checked once we left from the set to go into Michigan – 
I opened my phone for the first time. Oh, yeah. And I looked down, and I'm like... What was going on there? I think everybody was just as confused as all of us were. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. all right. Yeah. People were asking. <laughs> all, right. all right. Hey, that was... Uh, I didn't really know what you guys were up to there. I just was kind of going with it. Hey, Pete, Pete showing up there, I thought was a big deal. Oh, yeah. Because he had done shows from studio yeah. yep. throughout the year. You know, he had done shows from studio. And I, it was a topic of conversation, you know, on like, there's some stuff saying being said about Pete right now. There's some people saying, yeah. there's some people saying, <laughs> some things. there's some people saying some stuff. And for Pete, who has been, he's describing himself as a vessel of information. Correct. Is that, what he, is that how you describe yourself? Yeah, pretty much. Hey, listen, I'm I'm not an entertainer. I, you know, Pat, Herbie, uh, Dej, you know, those kind of guys. They're entertainers. People don't want that from me. I'm a vessel of information. I'm, <laughs> I get up there, I give people what they want to hear, and I get out of there. He could have easily, though, not gone to Michigan at all. Like, could have done it in a studio. Everybody would have been, like, all good. So... <laughs> I do appreciate that Des is like, yeah, he's here, but where? Yeah. Go <laughs> find him. I did not expect Get that. Up here. None of us expect that. And Pete handled it, by the way, Pete, yeah. consummate professional. Of course. But what did Pete, I'm trying to figure out what he did wrong. Oh, uh because didn't Michigan accept this didn't Michigan accept their a three game yeah. penalty for some reason? Yeah. Why is did it they not accept wearing that? his big boy pants? <laughs> <laughs> why did what did what did they accept? I didn't really follow the story. What what did why did they accept uh, a three game? Harvey, you didn't follow the story, huh? Is that right? Yeah, yeah that uh, you didn't follow. No, it? I know that he accepted a three game suspension, but why did he accept something? I don't well, understand that. Well, I think what happened. Pete was right. I think. I think what Pete. Oh, I think. Oh. There's a chance. As a journalist, oh. I think he was right. But. He showed up. Everything's good. We yeah. move on to the championship weekend in Atlanta. Herbie, have a great next week. You got a big one for all of us. We can't wait to watch along. Can't wait. All See you, brother. Right. Cheers, man. Ladies and gentlemen, Kirk Herbst. Yeah, Kirk. Yeah. That, was, that was very surprising. That was a conversation for sure. It was interesting. Yeah. As he was talking, like, there's got to be some bit. I thought there was a bit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, but Des was also the face of yeah. on the Just other side. Des was on <laughs> yes. He was surprised. On the other side, Des was like, all right, Pete's going to say these stats uh, in facts, and then we're going to talk, and all right, speak for the entire school. Of Michigan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. You know, like that is – so probably a misunderstanding. You would hope that neither side would have got offended throughout the entire process. All Pete Tam was trying to do was his job. <laughs> That's right. That's all. And Pete will look back on what he did here, and I think he will say, yeah, I reported facts. Yeah. That's all I did. I done good. And sometimes you have to do that. But he stayed. He was at the game on the sideline. I was standing right next to him. Yeah. I'm like, Pete's in here. Pete is just staring this thing down. Yeah, that's Extra security? Huh? Extra security or not? I didn't see any. I didn't, he was just yeah. standing there. Pete's got his security. Guard one and guard it's two. True. Exactly. It's true. That's right. it's true. <laughs> it was awesome. It was wild, though. I did not see, uh, I did not see it all coming. But Michigan was a hell of a place. That stadium, I'm telling you. That was weird. I did not expect it to. It, it looks like UConn Stadium. Don't what a joke! Like that because at the tone that you're talking about, the stadium it doesn't sound like you love the layout. No, it was just it felt like you because UConn Stadium goes into an airfield, right? Doesn't it, didn't you guys build it into like an airfield? It's like it built into the. No, ground. it kind of goes up, but it's nowhere. I mean, I, it's, it's like a bowl, though. It, yeah, yeah, yep. it's like a UConn. I the think rent. I think UConn's actually built down into the ground as well. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like bowly. Yeah. So when I I don't know how many stadiums are built like this. I, is Rose Bowl built like that? I guess too. I think the. Uh, I've never played there. I don't know actually. I think I think I'm just trying to remember from seeing it that morning. But like it's I haven't played in a lot of stadiums that have been built. I think old. Yeah. yeah. I think it's oh like yeah. An older style of building because you can get more people in probably whenever you build out like that. So it just doesn't feel as big. They're anymore. not on top of you. Not, everyone knows like you go play in. Did you ever play in like a a basketball gym growing up where it's like a pit where the fans are above you? There's almost like oh, a yeah. walkway above you, and it feels like they're all on top of you. It doesn't feel like that. Is what you're saying? Like, yeah. Con it's just, there's a whole different view. It's a it's a whole, like the field looks bigger, smaller, like. Everything just changes with the way a stadium's built. That one's built like this, you know what I mean? But they were it's gigantic, but yeah, it's just not on top of you like other places. I wonder how far the person in the last row is, because a lot of the people I was talking to on the side, mm. I'm like, man, it doesn't feel 
is big. And then they're like, there's been pictures from people that are in the last row. And wait till you see how far they are from the from the stadium. It's like this thing's built like 150 yards out each side, kind of. So it's it's just I don't I don't have any negative feeling towards it. But I don't think it has any fear in people when they play there either, right? Like loud is going to be loud. Like, am I wrong in thinking that or no? Yeah, I mean, no, it definitely gets loud. But I think, yeah, the first time I went out, we played there my sophomore year. The first time I went out there, I was like, oh, this is not what I was expecting. It, it feels unlike other stadiums, I guess. Bingo, yeah. I, I was yeah. just, it did not, it was just an interesting feeling. It was just uh Well, see, that's different because RG3 said Wrenchler Field in East Hartford was the loudest stadium he had experienced. Big 12 guy. It's just saying. He said where yeah, it was? UConn. Our stadium. What's it called? We beat the wrench shit out order? of them. The rent. Yeah. <laughs> That's not real. The, it's real. The, Look it up. The wrench? The rent. The the what? The rent. What's the name? I played there a couple times. What's the name of the place? The rent. How'd oh, you do when you played there? Hey, 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 hey we're, not, hey, we're not talking Not about good? That. We're talking about Michigan, Ohio State. Oh, you guys were owning, not renting. We did. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if we were renting, we were. lease was due every single day. <laughs> sure. And every day we went up there, we paid. Paying mm-hmm. off. I did have like a six yard punt against him one time though, because it's it's built down. I think it is mm-hmm. built down and it has a little bit of a jet stream, but <coughs> choked up thinking about it. I know. Was it I similar know. to the cotton bowl? Because it felt like it feels like the cotton bowl is kind of built like that, right? I don't remember the cotton bowl. All I remember the cotton bowl is that the side things weren't working. And yep. it, they said it was second and five and it was third and ten. <laughs> yeah, so we, that's all I remember. We did have, when we went in, you have to go down that long tunnel that kind of goes down onto the field. So I think it I'm pretty sure it, it is kind of built. It's a little know. bit con. I yeah. think it's a little bit of a similar feel. I was walking through that tunnel one way in, one way out from that stadium. One way. I was walking through that tunnel. Both like, teams coming out right in the same tunnel, entering, exiting the same place. Like logistics, lo- not a great setup. It's why it's old school, but those people showed up. Hey, they showed that noon game. They were there before kickoff, yep. loud, ready. That's an awesome Love. picture, too. You showed the overhead shot from the flyby. That's a great picture. The flyover, yeah. That. It looked like a 727 flying over Huge. top. It had a navy on the on the wing underneath it. I'm like, what type of what type of plane? Is, any flyover is awesome in yeah. my eyes. Yeah. There's some people that don't like them. Oh yeah, yeah we've heard, we've heard about what? some people <laughs> that do not like them or whatever. I enjoy watching our technology. Like I think it's like a display of <laughs> yes. like, what do we have? I've seen a couple of UFOs fly over uh, stadiums. I'm like, all right, looks like we got a little intergalactic warfare ready here. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's been some big bombers that have. Yeah. I think a couple of harem jets flew over yeah. uh, when we were down in North Carolina from the Marines. Those fucking planes actually. Yeah. <laughs> Take up and then they fly over. So it's like it's a nice air show. This college game day experience. It's been like a nice air show, getting a chance to see what we have and what we don't have. That one just looked like a seven thirty seven flying over top, Ooh. clean, what, like the cleanest plane I've ever seen. And then the navy was like tattooed on the under of the wing, and it was like it it caused a shadow, like one of those ones with how big the plane was. I still don't understand how aviation works. Yeah, I don't know how something that fucking big can fly the way it yeah. does. But I'm thankful it does. That is that is for sure. Ohio State, it was four Apache helicopters when, for Penn State. Remember how awesome cool. that was? That uh, it was unbelievable. There's always some sort of the Colts this weekend halftime show. Oh man, was the Ura Boys? Uh, what? Yes. The you know the you know the movie Major Pain. Uh-huh. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. When, oh yeah. At the end when they're doing the yep. gun thing. <laughs> yep. They had the uh, the Marine silent gun. Si- yeah, si- it's silent gun something. But it, this dude threw a, this dude threw a rifle over his right here. <laughs> threw one like this. <laughs> Other guy caught it right here. That's sick. Did this little Jeez, so cool. And then kicked down to the bottom thing, and then they get, walk down to the next guy, and then. <laughs> Walked out the next guy. <laughs> it was fucking intense. It was so sick. There was no sound made in the stadium. Literally, like That's we're, awesome. we're all just like kind of watching. You hear the gun mm-hmm. flip and fly around. I'm like, I don't know when we're going to need this, but China don't want any of that. No, fucking no, no, they no, do. they do not. <laughs> the ball Can't eagle in there. I saw, I saw the, the uh, oh yeah, Marine standing next to Vinny. Vinny was absolutely oh. yoked. Yeah. Yeah. Yoked right now, but I saw him. So he that's why they were here. I'm assuming. What's that? What are you? Vinny? Marine, no, Marines. We're doing the 20- salute to service. So okay. salute to service. Indiana always going to be big. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whenever it comes to salute to service and uh, military and everything like that, because a lot of hey, 
We got a lot of them out here. Mm -hmm. I think that is a difference from like coastal cities to like middle of America. And I'm not saying that coastal cities don't have people that serve in the military, but like out here in the middle of America, it's like everybody has a family or friend, like that's in, that's in, that's in. So the salute to service gets heightened and amplified. And I'll tell you at halftime, there was a round of applause for active military people. There was the Oorah boys doing their thing. Yeah. There was a full, and every, I don't think people left the seat. It was just like, here we go. Hell yeah. Flip the gun, bro. Yeah. It was, <laughs> it was awesome. It was, uh, it was a really cool, really cool moment. Adam Vinatieri, though, tried to break that anvil. Oh, yeah. Damn near did. Yeah, he tried to break that anvil. He swung the hammer this weekend. Boys weren't going to lose with him swinging that anvil. No chance. I mean, I was he dying. looked amazing. He was so jacked up. And not only is he physically jacked, but he was so juiced. I was hoping the people around him were giving him the same kind of energy back. I couldn't really tell from the video. I mean, they were, well, we were. Yeah. The whole stadium Three. was giving him a lot of love whenever he was up there. He had a shirt on, the Jim Irsay band shirt on, too. Like, yeah. it was Metallica. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I got a chance to chat with Vinny and his family before he went up there to hit that thing. And I said, we swinging that thing hard. He goes, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He said he wanted a place where he could just throw the hammer. Mm -hmm. Like he wanted a boom <laughs> and throw that oh. thing. I was like, hell yeah. Throw I, the crowd. I didn't know what he was going to do. I didn't know what he was going to do. But it felt like the way he was thinking about it was certainly in the right angle. Yep. You know what I mean? And he went up there and he, yeah, let's go. So yeah. Ah. And he swings that. Yup. He swings. You should have to throw it down to you in your box. Yeah. Boom. Come on. Boom. Uh, Wait, you want one more? I'm going to try to put it. Boom. Oh. And that fucking guy works like he's a farmer, yeah. too. Yeah. I mean, he's out in the middle of the woods. You know what I mean? Yeah. Dog. Like, he swings yeah. axes and stuff yeah. every yeah. single day. Right Real, breaking railroad race. ties or something. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Vinny, way to get a win for the Colts. Good work, Vinny. Also, yeah. American Bald Eagle did stop by uh, the suite yesterday. So, during the national anthem, had an eagle fly from one part of the stadium over everybody to handlers, arm or whatever, on it. Stuck it. I mean, absolutely nailed it. Big. These fucking birds are big. Oh. Indy is the name of the eagle that flew. She is an eight-year-old uh, American bald eagle. Uh, she's from Auburn, down there at the Auburn Veterinary School, I, I believe. Mm. They had an entire team. This was her first time ever performing inside mm. with a full field flag. Okay, first time a full field flag has been on the field while she has done her thing. A lot of college games. I think she's done other NFL games that have been open roofed. But this is the first time, and it felt like the team had a little anxiety, but Indy pulled through. Yep. Uh, Indy nailed it, stuck right. the landing. We got a chance to meet her afterwards. She was she was about yay big whenever she was just crouching, chilling. Shit. And she had great personality. Mm -hmm. Great personality. A lot of moxie. Squawking. Now, <laughs> flapping. she stared you down right in your face and said, you don't believe in birds, huh? Watch me make this shit feel real, real quick with you. Look, I, I've always been very, very honest. Eagles have been real from day one. And I did look into that bird's eyes, and it was a real bird. Because that's how you can tell. Look into the eyes. You look deep into that center block part of that eyeball. You can see a little. Window to the soul. Bingo. And usually it's a window to the camera, my friend. But it wasn't yesterday. <laughs> yesterday, that was a real bird. And it was an honor to actually be in the presence of an eagle. It was very cool. Very scary. That thing, it came in. It wasn't just chilling. It was squawking. Big. It, it gave, gave a couple of these. I'd say six and a half feet, probably. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wingspan. Good estimate. You I'd talked say, about aviation. How the hell do they get that bird not to freak out with all those people in there and hit your mark and go back to the person? I know you feed them, but still. Okay, so Indy, eight years ago, whenever Indy was just a little baby bird, uh, injured wing, one of them, was found in, they nursed her back to health and she got to a point where she related with the people that were nursing her like, I don't want to say too well, but like would not have been smart to put her back in the wild, sure. I guess. Yeah. Was it imprint, oh, they say they imprint on their owners? Yeah, it was like a decision that was made, I think, not by like the the team that is currently with her. I think it was made by like other people. It was like, yeah, this would not be the right place. So I guess literally since then, Indy has been one with that group sweet like they are you know a lot of trust a lot of faith good relationship they know each other like there was a lot of that talk but the lady who catches her there the lady at the end she said there was some certainly some anxiety with the full field flag because that's a lot of distraction mm -hmm. yeah you know that's especially and the wave of the well, i forget what part of the at the end there and the no 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 oh. uh they all wave the flag at one particular point. I don't want to yeah. go, oh, say, can you? Yeah. 
when yep. you know what i mean i All haven't right. really got there <laughs> yeah so that is when what's wrong aj what's your deal i like how we went through it all i was waiting like, there's a couple different moments i thought i you could easily you could flap a few times during that. <laughs> oh yeah so no rockets red glare no rockets no bombs bursting in yeah there. makes sense in, not with her no with that no <laughs> normally lucas oil has the inside yep. <laughs> inside with a couple pops none of those but that banner wave they, you know, there's a chance Indies. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa wait a minute. You know, especially with the blue. Oh, yeah. That yep. the water. Yep. That's where If they, it goes bad, what happens? Like, there's Ooh. nothing they can do if it goes bad. Yeah, I'm not it goes sure. goes AWOL. Cancel yeah. the game. It's just all faith. It's all faith in Indy. <laughs> Jim Hersey had to look that eagle in the eye and say, you ain't going to fuck up in my stadium. <laughs> and Indy said, no, yeah. you're good. You're all good. Yep. Got a cigarette for, you know, not screwing anything up. Too. They put a big tarp down for this thing to poop on. Huge. It came into our suite and... uh before it came in, a human male came in and dropped this plastic thing on the ground. It was like, where will we right, right here? And then all of a sudden we see, oh, that's for the shit that's coming. Sure. Yeah. Big poops. Oh, yeah. Big really? poops. Are they exotic. white like other birds? Uh, yeah. We have a couple where I live. They're awesome to watch, dude. They are savages, too. Like, you got a couple, you got a couple of bald eagles cruising around? Oh, yeah. Yeah, That's I, awesome. There's a couple. Of, we see hawks around. Those are sweet, but man, never an eagle. Yeah, I got a chance to see National Geographic with a couple of these American bald eagles uh, last Christmas. So the lake frozen. Lake is frozen, except for a couple pockets of water, you know, because it couldn't freeze all the way through, I guess, with how cold it was. So in those little pockets of water, these ducks that don't migrate uh, just kind of live in because the ducks need the water to sit in, I guess. They don't just uh, – so the eagles – you know, ducks. just kind of saw the these ducks. Yeah, sitting ducks, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, right. on Christmas, a lot of families in a lot of houses around the lake, they went down there, they picked up one of those ducks, and they, they just took the duck's head and just slammed it off the ice. Yeah, that's and then they just do. ate that thing. And obviously the ducks Jeez. have bird brains, so they said, you know, <laughs> we're not going to, we're sitting here, we're in trouble. So they go over to another. Yeah. Little plot of water in the middle of the ice. Find us here, <laughs> and the eagles will get done with one of those ducks, and then <laughs> they go back up to the sky, and they found them. Yeah, yeah, yeah they would find it in another one. Did they pick any of them up and fly with any of them? Three and a half hours, bro, of just wow. watching the Jeez. circle of life yeah. take place right on the lake, you know, and they bleed, and ice is white. Sure, mm -hmm. so you see it. Yeah, watching it. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Just full. nobody ran out there to try to save them. Sam would be the one, but I think Sam even saw, like, some of these eagles may be six, seven feet tall. I don't know if anybody wants to be fucking with these things. No. I'm happy they represent our country, though. They're Amen. real deal. Yes. Good they are the real deal. That picture, I couldn't believe the picture you or Sam posted how big that thing was. Yeah, it was a big deal. Huge. We weren't allowed to touch it. I don't know. Uh, you know. Probably I assume I Indy, I get it. Indy I get probably it. doesn't want anyone poking around its feathers. You don't know what kind of weird oils you have on your hands. Yeah, I mean, I could have gave it a little brisket, though. There's a yeah. brisket right there. <laughs> right. Could just gave a brisket, maybe a salmon. You know what I mean? I see what they eat. I know what they like. Humans and fish. The Auburn Veterinary School, I think is what it's called. They're the ones that uh, kind of handle Indy. Cool crew. But I immediately obviously go, roll tad. Right? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Have to. Right, right. And I had to because we were less than 24 hours away from fourth and goal on the 31. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. So awesome. Oh, my God. Fourth and goal on the 31. 32 seconds left in the game. They score. Are you kidding me? This is rivalry Saturday for college football was bananas. Yep. Obviously, the Michigan-Ohio State game was what everybody was talking about. But Reese Davis was talking about this game being like voodoo, black magic, craziness. It was. There was absurd shit that happened throughout this entire game. In the last play that really, you know, stole the headline here, fourth and goal on the 31-yard <laughs> line. That's a banana's way to continue a season that has college football playoff dreams. And the amount of crying Auburn fans afterwards. Oh, obviously, we understand why and how. 
this would be a huge win for wow. Hugh Free, Hugh Freeze in the program, especially with the year that Alabama has had and what is still available for them. To give this one up as an L, Team of Destiny, maybe. This is Alabama team. Uh -huh. You see things like this happen. Maybe Team of Destiny. And before this play happened, there was a timeout by Auburn. Obviously, a little Kodak. They want to get a picture. It was a timeout by Alabama. There's a lot of time to kind of think about this fourth and goal from the 31. They zoomed in on this Alabama fan. Look at this guy. And at one point. Come on. Come on. Come on, babe. Come on. Come on. This guy had a little bit of hope. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever they showed him and he said, come on, I was like, that's a lot better atmosphere or attitude than I think a lot of people have in Alabama. And I'll be damned. Hey, pal, we don't know your name, but we're happy you got a chance to celebrate around all those people yep. after a fourth and goal for the 31. What a play. What a win. What a sport college football is. Oh, best. Bananas. So yeah. fun. They're saying he pushed off. It's like, it's fourth and goal from the 31. Don't let that yeah, fuck You call that. Don't <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You yeah, call that. That's tough. That. Debo, what do you think? Auburn rushing too. What do you think of that, Debo? Ah, that's bad. I mean, that's one of those With situations. Yeah, you got. I got a sense of pressure. You get the ball out, we rally and tackle. 31, like 31 yards, I trust my guys to rally and get a guy on the ground. You yeah. can't give an athlete like Milro that type of time to run around. And I mean, you don't expect a guy to make that type of throw in the back of the end zone. I think they call it the grave digger. But uh, unbelievable route, unbelievable play. And then Milro said, hey, give me the damn Heisman. Yeah, he After did. That, I'm on the sideline. He so. did say I that. Like the yeah, I like Milro, man. I, I love Milro. I appreciate that. There's a guy that got benched earlier this year mm -hmm. and now has full What start. an attitude, bro. Like, you hear the old cliche, like, you can only control your attitude and effort. Like, that dude's attitude seems to be awesome. Like, infectious positivity, I feel like, when I watch that dude play. And his laugh is hilarious. Yeah. yeah. His yeah. laugh is hysterical and I feel like it happens a lot because they've been having a lot of good times congrats to him congrats to Bama and Auburn sorry about it Ooh. yeah mm. there was a lot of these Ooh. oh yeah or damn yeah or damn I get it I love that'd be tough I love how passionate people are about college football I do not sometimes they're a little mean but sure if they weren't as passionate they wouldn't be as mean right you know what <laughs> I mean that is yeah. different yeah so you gotta take one with the other I've kind of learned that in my college football experience it's like these people are saying a lot of really mean shit about me. <laughs> My timeline and mentions have become very rude. Very, very, very rude. But then, I guess after however many different schools tell you you're the worst thing that's ever happened to college football, you kind of move along, you get past it, and you realize these people are living and dying with these teams. Yes. Oh, yeah. With these schools. And it's like, there's not a lot of things that have that. And it is awesome to be a part of. And Rivalry Saturday was fucking sweet. It was yeah. it was a lot of fun to watch. We're very grateful for it. Ohio State hated it. Mm. But as a college football fan and being, I don't want to say new to all this, but pretty much yep. getting a chance to experience at a whole different level, it, it was fucking a great weekend for college football. Yeah, it was unbelievable. And to your point about these college football fans living and dying, there is no number one overall pick. You can't you can't lose and then automatically get a good player. Like if your team sucks, they suck and they're fucked no matter what. And it what. probably hurts your team next year. Yeah. If yeah. you suck, it hurts you next year. Yeah, people don't want to even come to your school, yep. so you can't even get <laughs> other players. But uh Wisconsin. Wisconsin showed you some love. Yeah. Well, that that's been happening a, a good amount actually this Needed year. Needed that one too. I don't know if you checked my other picks. That I, was the <laughs> one. That was uh I I've been a little bit ice cold on that game day set. <laughs> that's difficult. A little bit ice so now. I'm on the Super Dog competition. I hope I get some sort of trophy. By a should. million. A massive dog. I covered. I should be at 96 and a half. I might be able to get to a hundo. Oh, yeah? That'd be. I might be able to get to 100 points, which might be a record. Uh, I'm not hurt. Well, well, you record. can take Washington because they'd be a super dog because it's plus nine and a half. Some of these spreads looking ahead are pretty bananas. Maybe take the Hawks. You going to take Iowa? Chance. <laughs> huh? Think You're about it. Think about it. No one, no one. What's is the spread? Them 21 and a half. What did Herbie say? <laughs> Quick little trip to Indy? Quick yeah, little trip Which, proximity-wise, he's right. You know, it's not, a, it's not a lot of distance traveled, but... Is that what he was talking about? I think so. I think so, because I think he knows it's going to be a fucking dog fight. <laughs> yeah. I was got nothing to lose, man. Scary Bingo. team. Bingo. Bingo. Nothing to lose. Have they had anything to lose all season? Yeah. You know, you, you learn you as got, a youngster. Hey, they you got to win eight games. Otherwise, people didn't you ever learn no tie? What? Tie and Pat, you guys probably learned when you're young, you don't ever want to fight anybody with nothing to lose. That's not the person you pick on. Yeah. Even as an adult, still. That's Iowa. Yeah. Also know that. <laughs> yeah. You don't well, yeah. yeah. Of course. Even more so now, actually. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That is certainly the case. And I understand that. But what do you mean? I was got a Big Ten championship on the line. Pump. There's a lot exactly. to lose out there. Brian Ferentz's last stand? Yep. Exactly. Deacon Hill. Just, you know. I saw a couple of deep do they, do they get in the playoff if they win? Hill? I saw him throw him. 
I saw him attempt to throw. Oh, yeah. He shot. He I lo- saw the ball flying through the sky. Yep. And I was like, is that Iowa, Couple is that times, Iowa they, football? They have kind of opened it up a little bit. I'll tell you what he loves doing. Just throwing it as hard as he fucking can every <laughs> single time, which I appreciate. I appreciate. But I don't know. I mean, he, he threw an interception on Friday against Nebraska. It was 10-10 with about minute 10 left. Put Nebraska in plus territory. All they needed to do was get maybe, I don't know, 15 yards, get a chance to kick a field goal. Brock Purdy's little brother just, boom, throws an, uh, another pick immediately, Ooh. and then Iowa kicks field goal and wins. And I tell you what, this team knows how to win football Yeah, it was games. two picks in a final 47 seconds. It was. This, that was electrifying. It, it was. was. The game itself, tough to watch with Iowa, but at the end, that thing was magnetic. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I think was, the over-under was 26 and a half, It too, was. that thing yeah. hit. I think it got down to like 25. Yeah, five, live, five. yeah live line, <laughs> way low, way low. But I tell you what, those games are – Exhilarating. They are. They are. Because you're, I mean, you know, one minute you're ripping your fucking hair out, and the next minute, you know, you're saying, I mean, you're on top of the world. My God, we won 10 games. We're going to the fucking Big Ten Championship. This is unbelievable. That's our football. That's right, baby. Did you say, were you the one that called uh, pick probably going to happen? Uh, in that was, uh, yeah, Michigan O State. McCoy. How'd you know? You just thought he was getting a little loose with it? Yeah. I, you know, honestly, I don't feel like they got a ton of faith in McCourt, honestly. And when you're in that situation where, it's got to be on him, and I, I love a kid. He's young, but uh, but it's got to be on him. I, I knew. Ben. Do you love him? Do you know anything about him? I saw him do a sweet dance. Yeah, he did, he did a sweet, the, the sweet dance. dance. Yeah. The fadeaway. Yeah. Yeah. That was cool. I thought that was super cool. Yeah, I saw a lot of people saying that's got to go first with Ryan Day. So a lot of people saying people that. do not enjoy that they particular don't, dance line. They do not like the dance line. They said in theory it's a good idea, <laughs> you know, but then what it has become almost as a forced dance almost thing. Uh-huh. I thought Kyle McCord was vibing. Yeah, yeah he was. Marvin too. Hey, you know how it is when you lose, you everything. Use everything. It's like what the get that shit out of here. What the fuck is that? If you win, hey, keep it going. That was their first loss. They've been doing it all year. People have hated it all year. Yeah, I don't. You know, whatever gets <laughs> you up to play a game is good. Sure. I like Ryan Day with the whistle. In fr- Did you know that that happens? He's in the middle of the group with the whistle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That happens every game? Yeah, I believe so. Oh, yeah. Well, they're, they're pushing him around. Yeah, oh, yeah. Show that more. Boys are getting a little rowdy out there. I thought Ohio State was winning that game. Yeah. Think about it. Marvin Harrison will leave never beating Michigan. Damn. Yeah. Never. Claret turned on Ryan. Hate to see it. <laughs> yeah. Cam and Mace, right? Yep. I think yep. Maurice is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love that show, by the way. Crazy. Because awesome. earlier in the year, he was saying, like, hey, Ryan, I'll go find and beat the shit out of Lou Holtz for you. <laughs> <laughs> Just, you know, six weeks later. You had your you had your eyes peeled for oh, Maurice yeah. Claret spotting. I, yeah, for sure. Yeah, you thought you were potentially going to get it from yeah, him. Uh-huh. We like Ryan Day. I'm happy that Ryan Day isn't just getting run out of town after that. But I'll tell you, no hardball. That had to feel good oh. for the Michigan folks. Ooh. That one had to feel good. With everything that was hardball I, feel. What do you mean? He's pumped. Obviously, he's glad they won, but it, it's all probably almost not bittersweet, but he's like, yeah, I wasn't there. I wasn't on the sidelines for it. He was there. They they all had the hardball wings yeah. on there. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, you're right. That's true. You know what yeah. I mean? It shows you, bro. Like, it's true. You, It's a tough gig, especially if you're at Ohio State or Michigan. You can win every single game. You lose this one. Like that's all anybody remembers. He actually same thing though. Has, flip side, if you're yeah. you can lose three or four games and beat Michigan, and things are things are okay actually in the offseason. Well, that's like Hugh Freeze. That this first year at Auburn, Hugh Freeze, he beats Alabama there at the end. This offseason, oh, oh, yeah, man. he could build whatever he wanted. Probably, hey, we need a new yep. locker room. You're good. You did this instead. Fourth and goal from the 31. Now everybody's like, Ooh. hey, we need to Hugh, listen here, you son of a bitch. <laughs> we need to, you know what I mean? We need to go ahead and get this win. And with the Ohio State Michigan game, yeah, it's the same. It's the same situation. The Harbaugh story is a wild one, though, because, you know, Pete is So never, is he free now? Is he free to coach now? How's, how's yeah, it work? Until the NCAA rules, which oh, they think— That'll is, be after the season, though, right? Yeah, they think the NCAA, because they got to they gotta deal with the burger yep. and mm-hmm. the Connor Stallion right. shit situation. So they're going to stack punishments together, allegedly. So then will Harbaugh, who once described being suspended for three games— as a whack to the shins, yeah, I think with a baseball bat, correct, is how he described keeping him away from the team yes. mm-hmm. for three games, and it ended up being six. And now they're probably going to be the college football playoffs. It's crazy if they're going to suspend him for half a season or for even more next year. How does that play into what Harbaugh goes and does and everything like that? Especially yeah. if there's seven to ten NFL openings, you know, you might have a. Might have pick of the litter. Yeah, but that Michigan place is a wagon right now. Yeah, it is. They are a wagon. finally rolling. 
and he's three and five now against Ohio State. Does that one count though? Isn't he? Is he two and five? No, it it I definitely know, counts. That's his team. I'm just saying. Coach. I'm just saying. You sound like a hater. I'm not a hater. I think they're they might go and make it all the way to the national championship and lose by forty to Georgia, hmm. and that's a hell of a season. Alabama Georgia this weekend is interesting. Yeah, yeah, very interesting. Very that Pac-12 exciting. championship on Friday is a nice treat. How is that, that nine and a half? I, I thought Penix like blew his knee out and I just missed it. And that's so the Penix, the ending of that Washington. Yeah, he's like couldn't watch, and then he was yeah, like jacket over after crying. Yeah, kick. emotional. Yeah, I don't get it. Did he not want people to see because of the all the Caleb stuff when they played and everyone saw Caleb? Or this would be the complete opposite, right? You just yeah, because he because it's a win. Yeah. It it p- potentially the concussed and just didn't really know. Yeah, oh. I don't know. Hope he's okay. Yeah, I hey, hope yeah. you're all right, Penix. And shout out to Grady Gross, kicker, getting a scholarship after hitting the game winner yeah. awesome. against Washington State. That was a cool story. Go ahead and run this. Yeah. You see, you know what I'm thankful for. And you know what? I hope Grady Gross is thankful for. The scholarship he's earned. Let's go! So sick. Hey, 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 hey. What a moment for him. He'll remember that forever, obviously. Don't love that they've had a walk-on kicker as their kicker all year. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. What? That was remember, always the what best moments, missed? though. The scholarship moments? Oh, yeah. When, get, when people get a scholarship, like, you know, whenever it happens, sometimes at practice, sometimes the team meeting, it's different ways. Sometimes parents are involved, they're old coaches. It's always dope, I think, when, um, you know, when kids. Because everybody knows who is and who isn't yep. on the team. Everybody knows who's on scholarship, who's paying for their own way, and who's not. And obviously, there's a different level of appreciation for the guys that are showing up to do all the hell. Not just the, the games on Saturday and enjoying that, but, like, the off-season workouts – at 5.30 a.m. or 6 a.m., oh, yeah. and you're looking at a guy, and he's paying and choosing to do this yeah. with little to no hope of ever playing, it's like, I got respect for you, Bell. <laughs> now, if I was you, this would be a little bit different, but I appreciate that you're here. So whenever you see them get kind of paid off, it, I think everybody gets emotional. I got emotional watching that one for Grady Gross, but I also had no idea that he wasn't. I just assumed, I assumed he's on scholarship, yeah. I think, AJ, didn't you? Yeah, especially with, after he made that kick, yeah, it was – it was a bit surprising, the fact that this guy was a walk-on. He's making a kick in that situation, and he hasn't got a scholarship yet. Yeah, I got a national championship hope here, but, yep, this guy paying his own way. He got ice, too, I think. Coach, it made them both. Coach, yeah, he did. He buried it and then uh, got a chance to look at it, you know, which is in the Ohio State-Michigan game. I talked about sitting next to uh, Jake Moody. There was, uh, what was it, before half maybe? A yeah, f- Ohio yeah. State. Yep. A 48-yarder or 50-yarder. Drilled it. And he, the first one hits pure, just right down the middle. And me and Jake both looked at each other. Oh, Not good. Want to miss that one. Yep. That's the one That's the one you want to miss. It, it takes like a professional mindset to knock the next one through. Because in that moment, 110,000 people, you're out, now you start thinking, okay, I just got to do what I just did. <laughs> Well, what I just, oh, no. Then you start, it's just like, oh, uh, you know, it's like a never-ending. Never. Would you rather miss it bad or just eh, a little bit wide a little bit? Like, so I, think like, miss I think like the perfect mulligan would be you hit, you miss, but you see what the wind's doing. So like yep. it, you you hit it and then it drifts a little bit to the right. You're like, okay, different kick coming up. I'm going to aim a little bit left and then we'll see what happens. So as soon as we saw him knock it through and it not count, Literally, we were both like, oh. I did too. Why is that? I feel like we screwed him. I thought the same way. I was like, oh, no. Like, how, that's a tough kick out. There's no way this is going. It's now, we thought really we thought it would be Miss Wright because he just made it so he'd be a little bit more relaxed. So it's like, all right, let's not try to – let's just kind of – let's just kind of guide this thing in. To his credit, he missed left high. Like, he, he attacked it even harder yeah. afterwards, which mentally – I respect. I like the fact that the way he responded to one going through and then having to do the kick again, he was like, hell yeah, I'm going to kick this one even fucking harder. Like, that is not normal. Normally, it's it's like I'm going to guide it. I'm just going to kind of do it. And he kind of let it drift off to the right. That one he fucking killed, yanked to his left. It was like, I like the cut of this guy's jib. Mentally, he got after it, which I can really appreciate. It was the opposite of Will Lutz with the Broncos-Bills game. Where at the end of the game he misses the kick and they have twelve men on the field. Next kick drills can't right down him. Yeah, yeah, pro guys, pro yeah. guys a little different than college. True, guys. yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. pro operations a little different than college operations too. The snap, the hold. I saw a couple guys kick laces straight back in college this weekend. It's like that is such a game changer. Like that is 
not only like seven to 10 yards, but also with where you're compacting the ball with your foot and where the lace is, it's like that thing's not going to go straight. <laughs> it's just yeah, not can't. scientifically not supposed to go where you're aiming it towards. So that's an advantage as well. Never so. talking about that in college either. Like ever. The, and it's like if a kid misses, hey, college kickers <laughs> fucking suck. Like no <laughs> one ever talks about the operation. Well, let alone like the holder. And I'm not saying any holders are bad, but like in the pros, I'm sitting there like actually catching – a hundred to two hundred a day, right? And if you're off, like your spot, like everybody, you see people take their steps. They're taking their steps, so they're at the exact same spot away from where the ball is every single time. But if the holder is off like that much on the spot, like you steps don't even fucking matter. Yeah. And nobody even talks about it. It's not even possible to see on film. Like the only people that would know is the kicker and the holder. Like that is literally the only people that would know. And a kicker's not going to come out and be like, "Yeah, my fucking." <laughs> My holder kick, sucks. College kicker coming out and being like, yeah, my holder was terrible. I don't know. He was off by like half a foot. What do you want? I don't know. You, you pushed it wide right. Well, the hold was nowhere near. Yeah. Nobody even yeah. talks about it in college uh, football. And that's just another added element of just like why it's so awesome. You're talking about like hundreds of millions of dollars online in some of these moments. And it's like, hey, this guy's paying for his own school. This guy just got here last week. Yeah. <laughs> Nuts. And it's like, figure it out. We're in front of 115,000 people. Yeah. Do it. And we don't fucking care. Make the kick. <laughs> it's amazing. College football has been awesome to be a part of. Yeah. It's it been has been year. awesome to be a part of. I'll be down in Atlanta this Friday. AJ will be here. Neutral site. Tough. So we, we don't know when people are getting in town, so we chose not to travel the program on Friday. We will be... Up in New England, though, for the Army-Navy game. Hell yeah. I cannot wait to travel that's up gonna there. That's going to be awesome. Yeah, that's gonna be I don't know how it's going to go. I don't know where the hell we're going to be. They're, I don't know if the game day people even know. where. I assume they do, but I've not asked. Yeah. We don't know if we're going to be at Gillette, if we're going to be in Boston. We don't know where the whole setup's going to be, but we'll take the whole show there, AJ, and I'm excited about it. Nice. It's got to be, if the game's at Gillette, game day set will be at Gillette, right? I don't know. I don't know, because Foxborough... Is way out there. You it's know? out there, yeah. yeah it's on its own, but have they been there before? Have they done game day there before at Foxborough? I think it's first Army Navy at Gillette. I was going to say, so. it's not usually at Gillette. It's oh. usually in like Philly, right? They've or, been bouncing yeah. around uh, like every two years or every uh, every other year, I forget. But uh, it, it only makes sense to do it at Patriot Place. It doesn't really make sense to do it right at the entrance. In Patriot Place, it has the perfect backdrop of the entire stadium. Oh, game day? Yeah, for, for game day. Per- I think they'll make – whoever's doing it is going to make – the smart decision, and then we'll just ride their coattails. Yep. Can't wait to do that. The kick is up over 100,000. It's a lot. So by Army Navy, that thing might be 150,000. Well, can you even do it? I was going to say, are you doing week? it this week? Yeah, or this week. Yeah, probably can't, right? No. Yeah, that's probably the next one. You guys are just in indoors with no crowd, right? Okay. The worst kick of the year, this kid in Michigan. For mm-hmm. sure. Did you see that? By far. Oh, yeah. I saw it. I appreciated the kid letting you shave his head if he didn't make it because he had no shot. Yeah. He had no shot. JC? Did he think he had a shot, though? Uh, so he was sandbagging. I asked him if he ever kicked anything. He said no, and his friends were all like, let him kick, you know. And then we grabbed the mic. That's like rule number one <laughs> through six of conducting an interview with somebody that isn't a TV person. Is yep. You don't let them have the microphone. Sure. <laughs> and he immediately just grabbed that thing. Yep. And it was like... I got something to say. All right, good luck. I'm excited. I don't know how the people in the truck felt. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was pretty pumped to hear what he had to say. JC had a lot of energy though. I did not know he was there until literally we walk over there and he's front row holding the clipper, staring at me. Yeah. And his friends are saying, "Let him kick." I think somebody called me a coward and everything. I'm like, <laughs> "All right, dude. Yeah, we will let this happen." So I had to radio back to the truck. I go, uh, "Hey, there's a kid saying I can shave his head right here if he missed a kick." And I just put him in. For the next one, and Matt Garrett, who was the guy who was FaceTiming um, Herbie. Herbie there, he was like, is this real? Or are we going to get uh, sued? I, think he's, I was like, that says it on a sign. I'll yeah. make him shake his hand. <laughs> yep. I'll, make him, I'll make him shake his hand. He's like, yeah, absolutely then. So shout out to JC. You see, let me get this mic. What do you yeah. say? Do you think I'll make this? Yeah, and they all booed. He goes, it doesn't matter what you think. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. That was worth it. I kind of know sold it. That's on me. I could have made JC a little bit better, but 50K or get his head shaved. I appreciated it. But he was acting as if he'd never kicked anything before. He has. He had pretty good little. Not bad. He had pretty good little form. Got the ball off the ground. I thought he was maybe going to pull it off. Cold as shit out there. Though. You don't always have turf out there, do you? Don't, I know Kirk sometimes has like a thing under his knee. You're usually, sometimes you're in the grass and the mud, aren't you? Yeah, so the, they've That's brought. That's an advantage. They brought the turf out pretty much everywhere. 
It's just some people. That's a pretty good little kick. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, it was yeah. not bad. And that's a really tough. <laughs> His good hair. Clippers were not great, obviously. Just right down the middle. Them. What's that? No, they were his Clippers, bud. I don't. I, and I think that crew he was with, it looked like a one Clippers for the full body type group. Oh, is that right? Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, so you know, it, it looked like they were having a good yep. time. Okay. <laughs> Shout out to JC, and we appreciate you, buddy. Boy, JC, thanks for doing that. And then Ohio State loses as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> awesome. Tough day for him. Tough day, dude. Tough day. All right, let's get to a break. On the other side, we get overreactions from around the internet. How were they? Pretty good today. Yeah, I would imagine we already have one team firing the head coach. Yep. So I assume fans have been calling for a lot. Yeah, and then just with the long weekend too, I think people had a little more pent up aggression. <laughs> you know, so it was it was a good day. We have a update here from our suit Foss. Three p.m. kickoff on Friday is because of the Sports Broadcasting Act of nineteen sixty one. Oh. That prevents yeah. NFL games from broadcasting on Fridays and Saturdays after 6 p.m. until the second Saturday of December to pay respect to high school football and college ball. Yep. I think what we're saying, though, is why is that not 1 o'clock? <laughs> yep. Or, you know, the 3 o'clock is because they wanted the night, and then they were like, you can't have the night because the Sports Broadcasting Act of 1961. They're like, well, what's the next best thing? Three. All right, we'll do three then. Mm-hmm. It was like we it was just weird. So dumb. Bunch of college games on at noon. I loved it because I got to watch my Hawks at noon. And then right as that ended, okay, let's switch the focus to NFL football. There was college ball on still, too. Yeah. yeah. Well, for sure. But yeah, yeah, I enjoyed the college. Yeah. They probably yeah. thought they're gonna lose a big chunk of the audience that's still shopping. That's why I think the later in the day, the better. Well, people still do that. They're Amazon, so yeah. they should know that yeah. people don't do that. I was gonna say I don't anymore. Think yeah, really I think you'd be anymore. surprised. There's a lot of people out on Fridays. You're telling me people that would watch a Black Friday Prime game. Are shopping still Black Friday morning? Uh, yeah, it's a good point. I don't know if there's much crossover between the shoppers of Black Friday and the consumption of college and NFL football. You might be right there. Yep. So, you know, we were off on uh, Thanksgiving and Black Friday, two days off. Mm-hmm. That's a lot for us. That's not normal. No. I was getting a little antsy on Thursday, and I was getting a little antsy and didn't even have another day off, but I was hanging with the wife, hanging with the baby, hanging with the family. I loved it. I told Sam, I'm going to go shop tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. I'm going to go out there. I've never got to do Black Friday before. I'm going to do this. You know, you don't have to go at 6 a.m. anymore. No, I'll go at 4 a.m. then. I want to beat the rush. Go at midnight. I go at midnight and knock people over for, like I said, 22-inch flat screen at Walmart. That's why I told her I was going to go do that. She laughed in my face. Whoa. (laughs) What's that about? She laughed in my face. Jeez. You're going to wake up at 5 a.m. to go shop on your day off? That would have been awesome. That's a good way to phrase it. (laughs) I wanted to experience something. Back in the day, those tickle me Elmos, you got to fucking be up and at them. That's right. Turbo Man, remember what Arnold would do? Oh, yeah. It's war games. What is the tickle me Elmo this year? It's a good question. I don't know. Is there something that big? Hatchimals. Very popular. Who? Hatchimals. Like okay. little, little eggs that you like put water on and then you can b- break them open. Be like friends. A little toy inside there. The Gary Vimon, as I was walking after JC misses that field goal and I shave a line down his head, we head back to set. As I was walking, guy high fives me and goes, V friends. And yes. I said, oh. yeah. <laughs> I stopped. I stopped. Yeah. And I said, Gary V Mon? Hell yeah. <laughs> high five. And then kept moving away. People yelling a lot of things, obviously. Sure. A lot of references to you sharding your pants. Yep. A lot of fuck Boston Connor. Of course. You know, AJ, <laughs> AJ shouldn't drive. Wachita made yeah. its way in. Nice. Which is yes. good news. Like a lot of that stuff. And then that guy, V friends. I was like, Whoa, slow down. Who said you? It? Who said it? <laughs> well, hell yeah, dude. That's awesome. Taking over, man. Gary Vimon. Got to catch them all. Look out. Got to catch them all. Yeah. Decks are flying. That battle in Barracuda, yeah. though, is the fucking game record. Oh, my God. Mm. When that thing shows up. <laughs> Good luck pulling one of those. What's yeah. his grade? What's he graded? What's that? What's He's he graded? Like Don't they all have grades? Right? His PSA is like a 10 if you could pull one, yeah. Yep. Who grades these people? These V-Mons. What kind of question is that? Uh, the Gary. So Gary grades every single card that ever comes out? Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm thinking he does. Is that legal? To, and you're kind of setting the value of something, right? Whoa. What no. are you saying? This is an illegal iguana? What no, I don't he's understand. Not, honey, he's, not doing, he's not doing the PSAs or whatever the hell it is. He's, gr- he's rating all of the V-Mon. He's the one that creates their numbers. Listen, whenever whenever you're trying to beat the boss, though, you better fucking come with it. Yeah. 
Because if you turn some sorry sap over, oh. that ain't doing nothing. Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> is that the genuine giraffe? Yeah. Six, six, like nine. that number. 6972, what is that about? Is that Gary? Does he put those on? That's the power. Yeah. Yes. Dude. 72 is very high. The uh, accountable ant is a tough, tough competitor if you're going up against it. Yeah, if you're trying to beat the boss and the boss pulls the accountable ant, you're fucked. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's accountability. That's yeah. yeah Wait, so that intuitive iguana. It's not as epic guy, as the intuitive iguana. You see that 120 above the 60? That 120 number is kind of like a, oh, you think this is a bad card? Boom. Actually, it's bigger than your 70. That's when you bet on, like, when you're playing blackjack. And it's like, do you want to bet on all three cards adding up to like 20? You can bet on this. That's the number above the 60 there. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's the 120. You want to double down, it's 120. Yeah. It's like a Trump card. And then it beats the 108 of the accountable ant, and, and there's no accountability anywhere because they needed to double down on the iguana. Exactly. Is is like every, or what is he, girthy giraffe? Is that is every one of those? Genuine. 69? Genuine. Genuine. Girthy. Genuine. But is, girthy. is everyone 69, or can I get another giraffe that is like 73? Uh, let's scroll down. Let's see. what. I, I think they're all 69. I think this is kind of where the uh, split of same card goes. The gift goat is 74, okay? And the gift goat is all about giving. Mm-hmm. And uh, yep. a little yep. bit more than the accountable. And then the hologram cat uh, bubble gum. Yeah, those are different types. <laughs> That's the special four. <laughs> yeah. Those are those are spectacular cards. One one. I got to get some of these, man. My kids have been asking for Christmas. I got to find them. You haven't bought it yet? Good luck. Yeah, good, good luck. luck. Good That's luck. a good call. Good fucking luck. Scour you Remember you to drink eight bottles of wine while you open these. Makes it way <laughs> much more fun. I will watch yeah. a Gary V. Mon <laughs> no, that's beat the, the boss. I've been waiting. Dad's booster pack you were thinking of. When are they? <laughs> Let's not talk boosters, please. We already had Shafter do his thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's no reason for him to do what he did there. Yeah. yeah what was that about? He not certain himself. When's he doing another opening thing? I'm, pr- thing. I'm praying tonight. I'm praying tonight. It's the holiday season, Gary. We need to see you battling people. Yeah. Cyber Monday, it would make sense. Yes. Oh, yeah. it would make sense. Is it on ABC? Tonight. Is it primetime ABC, or where will it be? Mm-hmm. Here we go. Dude, Here we go. Okay, Cyber Monday Madness. <laughs> yes. 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 Oh, five yes. Five. Here we go. Here we go. Bang, 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 bang. What will he be doing? What is this for people that have never seen it, which everyone did see the first one? Like, what is he doing? Trailblazing. It'll be Gary V versus somebody watching on one of the different platforms. Yeah, yes. and he is the boss. Just a random. You got to sign up. Oh, okay. And I think you got to buy a ticket to right. get in to play mm-hmm. to beat the boss. Yep. Gotcha. And then somebody, I think Ryan. Probably. Yeah. I think Ryan is opening. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ryan's opening for. The person and Gary's opening his cards, and you have a, I think it's like war is how they play this game. Basically, where they flip the cards, and if you win and you beat the boss, you get both packs. You get all ten cards. You also give away a freaking comic book if he loses too many times. And a jersey, auto, jersey. autograph jersey, yeah. give away. Sign Luka Doncic rookie card. He's got fifteen of them, but he had to give one away. I yes. watched for two and a half hours straight. Sign up right. It was so oh, fun. Man. Two and a half hours yep. straight. I watched. Are you kidding me? Two and a half fucking hours straight. Sam was about done with it. Clear your night, D-Butt. He is right now. Right now. I mean, the Bears are playing the Vikings. That game doesn't start until 8-15. That thing's at 5-55. They will be just hitting their midstream form as that thing's kicking off. So make sure we got two screens. Pumped. And to Gumpy's point, I do hope Gary drinks four to six bottles of wine. He will. That needs to be part of it. Every time. Gary Vimo. Mm Mm-hmm. In Vino. And him talking shit to these people. Oh, yeah. yeah. So into it. You can't have an ingenuine iguana against my accountable ant, you loser. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> the best is how pissed he gets when he loses. All right, let's get to a break. We need it. <laughs> Overreactions from around the world on the other side. Plus, what games are we not chatted about? Jags beating Houston. We chatted a little bit about Trevor yep. Lawrence. Whatever he said. Steelers get 400 yards in the first game post Matt Canada. That's hilarious. Mm-hmm. How do you think he, uh, Matt Canada, viewed that whole thing? You think he knows, or maybe he's out in the woods somewhere? No, nah, I think yeah, it'd be tough to not know. I would imagine he knows. That's, he was hoping so God oh. to every God out there. Kenny Pickett needs that four picks today. 
Oh, yeah. They need to go well, for Well, this a... first play put him over the edge. It had to when he saw this. Just right down the center. What are you doing throwing to a tight end yeah. down in the middle of the field? What are you doing? Son of a bitch wouldn't complete that pass last week. I know that. Yeah, I called it. They, they say I didn't call it. We didn't throw a single ball down the middle, but I called it. And Deontay Johnson doing what Deontay Johnson does and not seeing a fumble and then them trying to run him out of town and Minka maybe beating him up. <laughs> Jalen Warren going crazy. <laughs> Naj Harris going bananas. I mean, it was a... It was an offensive juggernaut for the Pittsburgh Steelers with Fryermuth having his best day since becoming a pro. AJ has no further thoughts. Nope. Cincinnati Bengals right. are dead. Are the dead? I love a back and forth game like Are this. the Bengals dead? Man, it's tough without Joe Burrow, isn't yep. it? Yep. You, you heard Jamar. It's sad, dude. It's not just tough, it's sad. Don't we think? Like, I think it's sad. It is. Because that team, that city, it was supposed to. It was they were. Oh yeah. It's now, now we got to deal with another setback for them. It's no fun. It's no fun at all. We we feel for you, Bengals fans. We feel for you. TJ had two more sacks. Well, and they're they're trying too. This is the second straight year they've paid offensive linemen to come in and block for them, but not working. All right, we'll be back on the other side with overreactions and wrapping up this glorious overreaction Monday. We can't thank you enough. Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. It might change your life. Take five. 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 If you're the NCAA and you're sitting in that stupid office in Indianapolis where we happen to live, it's a great city, it's a great town, and there's a dumb institution that is ruling over college football because if you don't want these people dancing... Do we like the NCAA? Do we like Pat? Do we love the Dukes? I wish when I was asked, like, why did you punt? I could say my subcommittee recommended I talk to him. Talk your shit! Talk your shit! Talk your shit! Talk your shit! Dale, moment of silence for Dale Earnhardt. Moment has passed. Thank you, Dale. This one's for three. AJ Hawk, $5,000. Oh! of my entire professional life. J.M.U. Thank you so much for the hospitality. They'll have one loss, because App State is being J.M.U. Mountaineers, baby. They're going to dog shit all over this <laughs> dumb place. App State for What's the most beer you did in one night you think of one of those shows? Well, I never forget when we went to Japan one time. Uh, Dudley, Stacy Keebler. I mean, there were so many people out there. We, I think we went through 103 or 108. Now, between just for myself, you know, I'd always make sure to have about a 12 or 18 pack there. <laughs> and 
You know, here's the thing when some people say, oh shit, man, you got too much of that beer on, you don't even know how to drink beer. It's like, dude, fuck you. You don't know what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to entertain 20,000 people in an arena. If I just go out there and sip it real properly, how fucking exciting is that? So when you're out there on an empty belly and you're shotgunning beers and all that shit's going in, the, the half that was going in was for me. The half that was going on was for them. Nice. But I'm telling you, Pat, when you when you shotgun a bunch of beers like that and you're drinking about half of each beer, you got a pretty damn good buzz when you come out. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a sacrifice I was willing to make. <laughs> I would assume you were pretty fucked up, yeah. When did and, uh, you start you know, self-cheersing? When did you start self-cheersing? Was that something you did in college? You're like, hey, hey, Steve, good for me, man. <laughs> when did that start? No, you know what? Uh, you know, I got to give credit to Sandman for starting that, but he was bashing him off his head, and, and I don't remember, and it wasn't because Sandman was doing it, so I don't want to say I copied him, but he was the first. So, and then my style was, because people always get us confused. They'll say, yeah, man, you used to bang them on your head. Oh, motherfucker, I was the guy that clacked them together. <laughs> it was just something we came up with. I don't know how the, the beers got introduced to the ring, but it became a thing, and we ran with it. Today's event is me versus a Carolina Reaper pepper. A pepper that has what? 2.2 million Scoville uh, on average. I think it's, it's pretty much the hottest pepper in the world. In comparison, a jalapeno is 6,000 scope. For every second after it is in my mouth, I don't grab this milk. Yeah. We'll give $25 to a random person in the comments section right now. $4,500 feels like a good amount to give away though. And that'd three be three minutes. <laughs> this is gonna be a long three minutes. That's redder than devil's dick. <laughs> that crunch. How are, we, how are we doing so far? It doesn't look too bad. I should have taken a drink of water beforehand, though, because I think I had a dry mouth. I had a little cotton mouth. Oh. Oh, okay. Once the hiccups start, <laughs> I, think I think you're just about done for. What's your biggest regret in life? <laughs> do, do you have two more minutes in you? Oh, I think it's just starting to hit, like, the peak. <laughs> the curve on this thing is just starting to go up. <laughs> You are handling this much better than Bill did, though. You are, yeah. Billy Tubes was puking 10 seconds in. 130. 130. It's better by a Do you feel like you're gonna puke? Oh, God, that milk looks ice cold, too. Ah, hey, one more. One more. <laughs> Yep. Now we go. Now we go. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. How you feel now? A little bit better, but not great. Don't break the table, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I just break shit. Sorry, man. <laughs> somebody oh, yeah. came sprinting behind the barrier and tried to spear him. He I fucking dare somebody. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I dare the next two. Half kicking. One. One. Saudi Arabia. One. Riyadh. One. One. Taking a jet plane. One. All the way there. One. All the way back. One. All the way back. One. WWE champion. One. Are you serious?
What are you gonna do to change and make Tua better? Have you got so, into that? This is very early in the whole process, yeah, and you're shaking no. hands, kissing babies right yeah. now, and you're a zero win head yeah. coach that everybody loves. Zero wins. Zero win. <laughs> but what what are you thinking about that for Tua? How do you make him better? Um, we're gonna start with scoring more points than the opponent. Holy wow! Shit. Holy shit! Oh no! Uh, you are changing the game. Changing the game. <laughs> yeah. Through math. Yeah. That's uh, right. No, I think um, there's I, – I, I was just so fortunate in, in my career to be around the, the process of how I look at things with, with the empowerment of the right teachers that I, I look backwards, forwards, okay? Um, what things do I see that are – Really awesome about his game on tape, even though we're at. Hey, he's it? accurate as hell. Boom! He, he, That's what I was just about to say. Oh, I didn't know. I, I was just. I, I, you were leading me. That's how you should do this, maybe. Dude, think about it in the yeah. future. But you, he's or we so should, accurate. Or we should just spend the time finishing each other's sentences. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, did, did, have we known each other for our whole lives? Oh my God. You tell me. Wow, this is weird. Yeah. Dude. Whoa, Seems what? like you guys Dude. just became. Dude. Wow, this is fucking weird, AJ. Bro. Hey, this is... Did we swap skins? <laughs> no. Wow, we learned a lot about yours, by the way. I mean, yeah. that... hey, why? Let's go. This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for. Ah! The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. Ooh. You pay. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. We want that! We want that! Sports! 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 Sport. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Overreaction Monday, November 27, 2023. Hour three of this program starts now. Football! Happened in a big way. Speaking of football, this guy played a lot of football, has won a lot of championships, hasn't had a haircut in a while. It's AJ Hawk. Yeah, AJ. Hey, guy with a new look. You look cool, bro. You look cool. Yeah, I guess. Could you guys hear me? I can't hear anything. Okay, good. You can hear me then. All right, we're good. <laughs> You, you played that off well, though. You, I, I really, I'm impressed with how you. I saw all the wheels turning in your head. <laughs> we did almost have a full. Yeah, almost got him. Oh, almost almost got him. Oh. God, it was it right there. No. Shit. I didn't expect it. We're kind of relaxed too. Yeah. Those types of moments don't just pop up all the time. They don't. We got to be ready for that type of shit. I know. Oh. There was an opportunity for us to have one right there. We'd be still, huh? Can't. What you... That'd be a four-minute thing. <laughs> yeah. We would have done a full. Yeah. Damn it. Call you back. That's AJ Hawk. Hey, baby, AJ. Oh. What is going on with the hair? Are we doing a new hairstyle? Because I got little kids all around the country coming up to me saying, I tell them to do the AJ Hawk, just and then just let it go. What are we, we're changing that now? haircut in a few days. No, I told you with the whole Thanksgiving situation, it was tough to get in there. So yeah, I got, I'm getting one in a couple of days probably. All right. All right. And speaking of um, haircuts and stuff, shout out Back Porch Barber. Shout yeah, out. Shout out. I believe new addition to the family. Congratulations. We, uh. We'll miss you this week. Mm -hmm. see. Who's cutting hair this week? Ty, you grabbing the Clippers? If I need to. Yep. If duty calls, yeah. Mitt, let Mitt do it. Nope. Uh, <laughs> we'll cut Mitt's hair. I think we'll we'll do the cutting of his hair. I can do it. Uh, there, there was a time where I was shaving the sides of my head on my own. Oh, yeah. yeah. We noticed. Yeah. We knew. Yeah, remember? Back it was you day. doing it. When it first started. That's Boston Connor. It's Ty Schmidt. That's nine-year NFL vet Darius J. Butler looking super cool every day. D -botch. How do you feel sitting in uh, one half of the hammer? Dang. Cowboy Town digs a seat over there. Oh, cool. Kind of comfy. I yeah? Do, I do the pod from, from his studio, so I guess I'm kind of used to sitting in tones. Wow. Yeah, becoming a little yeah. more red. Wally Pipton. Hey, appreciate the hospitality, Joe. That's a good little time. D-Butt said he's voting for DeSantis now. <laughs> Because he's been sitting in Tony's seats. <laughs> <laughs> is that still who? Is nah, that guy not, running? Oh, oh yeah, that's, that's right. not Tony's guy he's, anymore. Yeah, he's, no? he's on the team Kenny now, not Kenny Pickett. I don't know. See, that's the thing. I didn't even know if DeSantis was still doing it. Is he still? I don't. Nah, it's coming up. We're we're all about to learn about it. Yeah, we're all about to learn mm -hmm. about it over the next. You can't wait. Hey, can't. Fucking way. So pumped. So pumped Woo! to hear about it all. Yes. I'm sure we'll be right in the middle of it somehow. Something will happen on this show. Yep. That'll end up getting brought up 
in a fucking debate, I'm thinking, now that where we are. And I don't like it. I'm just telling you that this is how this normally goes. This is just, our show's history is we end up in the middle of some shit. That is just how yeah. it always goes. Don't want to be, don't love it, but we will say this. As the world figures it out and the smart people do that, we will remain the idiots in the sports world for you. That's right. Oh, yeah. Speaking of sports, let's talk to a bunch of sports people around the internet. <laughs> Send out a tweet, say, hey, you know what? Now's the time to go ahead and let all your fandom emotions out. A lot has happened in the football world. Use this as a therapy session. It is time for... Hashtag, I don't want to overreact. But... Got a lot of responses. I think we get up to number two or number three in the trends. Uh, we appreciate everybody, you know, kind of playing along. Yeah. It's a lot of fun for us to do this every Monday of the NFL season. Ty goes through them and picks his favorites. How were they this week? They were good today. They were good today. The last couple of weeks, I feel like people kind of, you know, getting a little getting a little lazy, kind of getting a little comfortable. People brought the heat today. Love that. Let's go ahead and get started. This is from Jesse McGee. Any relation to Ryan? Uh, I don't know, but I saw McGee and I said it might be. So let, let's let's have at it. Well, hashtag I don't want to overreact, but, but the Browns are dead, dead, over. Stick a fork in them. Greatest defense in decades. Stefanski is lucky they're not throwing bricks through his window. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> and while we're at it, Ryan Day, pack your shit and get out of town. Ohio against the world and Ohio lost. It does feel like the world beat up on Ohio this weekend. Bengals lose, Browns lose, Ohio State loses. I don't know about any of the other schools around the MAC, how they did, but it was a rough one. How do you feel about how old Jesse McGee feels, A.J. Hawk, Ohio president? Yeah, it's tough when you think about it. It was a great weekend for college football, NFL football, but it was not a great weekend for Ohio football, that's for sure. Which is a yeah, damn it's a shame. bittersweet. There's a damn yeah. shame. There were some good turkey bowls, though, I think, in those yeah. neighborhoods. Oh, yeah. Oh, lots of them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot of good. Still a lot of love for football in Ohio, obviously. The football gods just have not blessed them back. Cleveland Browns, Stefanski wants them out. How do you feel about that? I don't think – I think Stefanski's done a solid job of where they are this year, especially with the quarterback situation. Deshaun Watson played, what, three, four games, if that. So, um – be interesting to see if Flacco gets put in that lineup yes. sooner or later. DTR is currently in concussion protocol. He took a pretty big shot. Smack. Uh, took a pretty big shot. There's a lot of people calling for a lot of things after a lot of tackles happen in the NFL these days. People that have never played are certainly making yeah. judgments and indications of what type of tackles are what. Uh, but I appreciate <laughs> that DTR mindset seems to be of a guy. Now, he's a, he throws his body. Oh, yeah. That dude throws his body around. Wallace. Yes, and I love it. I appreciate it because he didn't get a lot of opportunity in the NFL. Yeah. You know, it wasn't like he was supposed to be a guy. He's currently on a team that is paying a guy $231 million guaranteed. That guy's not supposed to get on the field. He's not supposed to play. He's out there. He's making the most of it all. And his style of play is one that's electrifying, could be dangerous. But why not the Browns still? You still got the defense. Let's see what happens to Miles Garrett. Yeah. yeah big, that's big piece. That's the one. Obviously. Oh, my God. Any news? Any news on him? Schefter told us what we learned on Twitter yesterday about him being in a yep. in a slip. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right. He did tell us that. That's good. I, I, I must have missed that somehow, <laughs> some way. I don't think many people saw that, actually. Hey, can we call Shafty right now and see what the update is on Miles Garrett? 303. He's got to know something by now. I'm glad well, he got the dance around his in-law's house. Well, cool, cool. Was he at his house or his in-law? Were the in-laws uh, at his well, house? Around his in-laws, I guess. Yeah, he, they got to see a different side of him. That was cool. What is what is this thing? Oh, he hit the FU button. He's in the middle of it. AJ okay. hearing about Schefter going nuts at his house, grinded his gears. Did you see his face when he brought that yeah, up? Yeah, Michigan over Ohio oh, State. Oh, man. Yeah. Wow. He, it was everything AJ just couldn't stand. Yep. He was listening to the interview. Of course you were. Of course you were. Yeah. That's what AJ was saying. <laughs> yeah. Oh, of course you were. I Schefter. bet. Oh, you never get to act like that. Of course you were. Cool. Cool. Cool, Schefter. Whatever. Yeah, I hope they kick you out of the family. That's what AJ was yeah, No yep. cakes. Speaking of getting kicked out, we have some breaking news out of Carolina in the middle. Hashtag, I don't want to overreact, but... but. Uh, Josh McCown, Deuce Daly, both fired from the Carolina Panthers uh, coaching staff. That move was made by Chris Tabers, the new interim head coach of the Carolina Panthers, also special teams coordinator. Josh McCown, quarterbacks coach. Deuce Staley was the assistant coach. To the head coach or assistant head coach, as well as with the running backs, they are both gone. I guess this is a normal operating procedure whenever interim coaches come in. 
it makes me think that interim coaches might have a little beef with some people <laughs> yeah. and say, who's who's wearing the big boy pants now? <laughs> That's why I thought, don't need this in the building. Or maybe it is saying, hey, you guys, obviously Frank's guys, Frank's the one that brought you in, offensive side of the ball. If you'd like to go get started on your next job hunt, I assume that is how they view that. But there's more changes happening. Frank Reich also spoke to the Charlotte Observer mm. post getting fired, I believe today, and talked about how the NFL is a meritocracy. He did not obviously perform the way that uh, he wanted to or that David Tepper expected him to. So he has no hard feelings and he understands the business, nature of the business. I think Frank Reich needs to be like a bear and just kind of go hibernate away from football for a little bit. Yeah. Weird. Without any of the Colts, not good, messy, loud, probably a lot of drama, stress. Going right into this one, the way it's gone, messy, loud, drama, probably a lot of stress. Just go take a nap, yeah. Frank, and we're very <laughs> thankful for what you did for football. That's right. Thank you, Frank. So that's uh, there's more news rolling out of Carolina. We will obviously keep our ears to the grind on that particular story, A.J. Hawk. Yeah, I, I mean, coaches like to coach. So I would imagine, yeah, at least a year, maybe two years to maybe regain your love or passion for football possibly. I can't imagine, like, how much it must affect you as an NFL coach. I think about every level of a coach, it would affect you if you're losing games and you're not – you know, performing, but yeah, for the fact that how it left the Indy goes right to Carolina, and then it just has yet any positives in, in Carolina. Like, what's the bright spot? Do they you have won any bright that moments? one. Yeah, they won the that Texans. Yeah, they yeah. They, they, they yeah. CJ, that would we just made not the right be decision. Fun. Yeah, we made right decision. Mm -hmm. We beat CJ. Yeah, yeah. Bryce Young's yeah. the right guy. We did it. But yeah, there wasn't a lot of happiness from Frank Reich's face, body, or being no. seemingly since he was Carolina Panthers head coach, and I guess. The good times were when they were traveling around pro days. Yeah, yeah. pro days were a good time. Pro days were a good right. time. They look right. fun. You got that number one pick. You feel like, you know, you got your pick Red of the carpet, litter pretty yeah. much. CJ, Bryce. But, uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was tough sledding for my guy. You do get red carpet treatment if you oh, have the yeah. number one overall pick. Uh, well, you know, we wanted another pro day, actually, up here. Oh, you guys got it? Yeah, Ohio yeah. State. Come on, come get another one. Let's go. Uh, we want uh, – don't you think we deserve to have – a couple more meetings with him. We, you we want your guy to be number one. Yeah, you're, you're right. Okay. Let's kind of open up his building for this team. It's all good. Yeah, look at the good times. Look at the good times. Still filming on my phone. Filming him. Josh McCown there. Loves it. The guy was a good player. Remember the Keekly video before the first overall pick, the pump-up video? That was cool. That was cool. Let's remember this workout was good. Not good enough, though. That's right. Uh -uh. Not good enough. Neither was throwing it to come by. Look at, look at Frank. The oh, decision was it? Who pulled the trigger on the draft pick, you think? We're going to find out now for sure. Frank Reich didn't even look at the throw. He just wanted to see how. Let's go back to that one. Let's go back to that one there. Hey, look where I'm at. <laughs> Check it out. Pretty good. Every single human, every single human watches the throw. Yep. Except for Frank on that one. Look where I'm at. <laughs> every, every one of them. Even Josh. Frank, no, well, where'd it go? He just wanted to see the, he just wanted to see the mechanics. <laughs> he wanted to see. He's got Heartline in the background too. Holy court. I love everything about it. They're talking about Heartline getting a couple. These were good times. There was yeah. good times. Yeah, there was good times. Yeah, Kidding when me? they as, when they hired all their staff, everyone was like pretty good staff. Yeah, Josh fired. Great staff. Stanley fired. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tabers yeah. was the guy everybody was talking about. He's now the head coach. Yeah, had all those quarterbacks, all that years of experience. Andy Dalton's still down there. Yeah, yeah. there's good times. There were. Yeah. There was good times. There were. Remember in training camp when all the linemen were like, "This dude's so smart." That was oh, yeah, Bryce cool. was reading defense too fast. Thielen came Thielen, on the show. Yeah. Said, hey, he knew he was supposed to throw it to me almost like too quick. I wasn't even out of my break yet. Boom, and thing's on me. I'm like, wow, this guy knows yeah. he's too smart almost. So, yeah, we're going to be good. Good times. Yes. There was good times. CGI Panther. I don't know if they year, did that this year. year. Okay. The yes, golf sir. simulator in the locker room. Good Boom. times. Yeah. AJ? Steph Curry. Any? Who are they playing next week? Are we going to get the uh, fired coaches bump? I sure hope. Who do they have? I sure hope. Normally, they got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Maybe. Gettable. They just played a tough Colts team. Yeah. Gritty. They did. Baker's pissed, too, so. He's not happy. Everybody in here don't want it. <laughs> Carolina Panthers have Tampa Bay. Then they have New Orleans. Then they have Atlanta. Okay, let's go to the NFC South slate real quick. Then they got Green Bay, Jacksonville, then Tampa Bay again. 
at the end of the year. There's a chance. Eleven. What if they win out? one. Listen, it'd be good for special teams coaches if Tabor's had success. Not a lot of uh, special teams head coaches that do great. Harbaugh, obviously, with the Ravens is one of them. We're very grateful for him representing. Joe Judge, when he did his thing, I thought he, he did some things a little differently than everybody else. Yeah. Didn't have as much success, obviously. And Tabor's has a chance here to win out, you know? And what are they going to do then? They can let him walk out of that building like they did Wilkes? Yep. Yep. No? Nope. <laughs> can't. They can't do that again, Tab. No, they can't. Can't do that again. Tap doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> He is going to – if if this happens and Tabor wins out, which I pray to God it does because then the Patriots get the number one overall pick, he will – they'll tell Tabor, like, hey, great job. You know what? Here's maybe a green ball of cash, 500 cats, probably carries that around with him, and he'll kick his ass to the curb, and he'll get the next best thing that's coming out of the NFL. Yeah, I'm sure. Maybe even Cliff Kingsbury. Maybe he brings him back. I fucking huh? Luke Keekly. That's not a super attractive job, though, compared to the rest that will be open. They don't don't have a first-round pick, do they? Do we think Cliff is getting a bunch of ops? I don't know if Cliff's getting a bunch of ops. So if Cliff was to get an op up there. But to your point of what you're saying, you're taking that job with – there's a couple things in your contract uh, (laughs) about, like – so if I take this job over this job, in this job, I won't get fired 10 games into the season. (laughs) So, like, what are we – are we are we going to make some type of promise that I'll live in Carolina for a year at least or two years because there's eight other jobs maybe, nine other jobs that are going to be open? Schefter said seven to ten open. Mm. Seven to ten. That's wild. That's Most a, attractive. 2024 draft order Carolina, which ends up with the Chicago Bears. They'll do right with it. Yeah. Yeah. You'd I'll, think. Yeah. My cap space. Definitely. also saw a graphic. Come on, Marvin. That was different. Well, I mean, who knows what's real anymore. Yeah. There's nothing. It changed. I mean, we started started the show with the with the AFC East <laughs> or AFC, the AFC Crown. Conference. Did yeah, you see crown. that, AJ? I don't think so. What so happened? Friday at three p.m. This is how. Oh yeah, yeah. Th- then after the Black Friday game, there was oh the Dolphins are the number one team in the AFC. Here we Woo! go. Woo! That's at three. Then yeah. but here we go. Yeah. And then after one o'clock, well, the Texans just beat or the Jags just beat the Texans. Whoa! Wow. Sweet pie. And then holy shit, the Chiefs Whoa. just beat the Raiders. Oh, oh, they're the number yeah. one team. Whoa! This is crazy. Two teams on Sunday leading, and then the Ravens are like, not so fast. Whoa! Same thing. Uh, a lot of parody in the AFC, dude. A lot of parody in the AFC right now. Anybody can get it, including the Indianapolis Colts. Let's go to another overreaction, shall we? This is from Big Ken. Ken Deasy. Mm-hmm. Hey, did you talk to D while you were at that game this weekend, AJ? Who's that? D. Mm. I'm not sure. Okay. I don't want to overreact, but, but did Arthur Smith's brother finally FedEx his brain? Really thought you were going to get me there? They gave B- yes, they gave Bijan <laughs> the ball, and he carried them to a win. I was close. If the Atlanta Falcons <laughs> rode Bijan earlier in the season, they would be clearing the division. Falcons are back if Bijan is the leader. They're actually in the lead right now yeah. in the NFC South. You know, Artie Smith was joining our show once a week. Couldn't. For a while, because it was getting so loud, mm-hmm. they're they're number they're leading the NFC South right now. Yes, they, they are. They got ludicrous coming down from the Mercedes Benz Stadium. Yeah. Move, bitch! As he's flying through the sky, Bijan is catching touchdowns, running touchdowns. Artie Smith dapping people up after the game. Feels like the vibes in Atlanta are very high. I'm happy for him. I don't know if it was a FedEx brain or if it was just hey, all right, we're gonna play our best ball late. But that felt like when the Saints were gonna win. Felt like a a Saints. Division, the NFC South this year. Mm-hmm. But Desmond Ritter, B. John Robinson, and the boys said, nay, nay, nay. Mm-mm. We're still here to play, AJ. Did not expect oh, yeah. it. I appreciate the hell out of them. Yeah, man. Ritter made some some throws when needed. And, man, B. John is awesome. But also the clip of Jameis, whoever he was talking to on the bench, when they zoom out, is that, was that exactly when Ludacris was coming down from the top of the dome? Yeah, Jameis was doing a concert with Luda. Yeah. So nobody told Jameis that he wasn't mic'd up. But he was performing, and he was performing to Derek Carr, who's in the middle of a pretty big NFC South matchup. And I don't know if Derek Carr was enjoying the scene as much as Jameis was, but... That's Jameis shit, boy. Whoa. Whoa. What What the hell? Getting the boys going. Love the guy. Love the energy. Consistent. Love it. It feels like there's a... You're right. Consistent. That's a great backup quarterback. No, but consistent. Ready. Earpiece in. Ready for whatever's coming. Obviously... You know, not distracting the quarterback at all. But that I'm ludicrous, absolute showman. Showman. 
Just coming down. Still got it. Yeah. He's like, the guy doesn't age either. The guy looks the same for the last 30 years. He looked like he was just sitting on a swing in a park, too, this guy. Yeah. No fear at all. That's None. Right. Just out there dangling from that Mercedes-Benz Stadium. And if you watch the GoPro version from his, uh, I think his Twitter account right here, you can hear the crowd. They're with him every single way. Lutus yeah. still has his fastball. Oh, yeah. Lutus. Still, yeah. I think they were celebrating, what, 50 or 30 years? 50 years of hip-hop. 50 years of hip-hop in Atlanta, and Luda came down from the fucking sky. I love yeah, it. That yeah. would scare the hell out of me. I don't care how many harnesses I have. That would be scary. Yeah, that would. it, it would be tough to perform there. Luda said, Jeez. are we doing a show or not? <laughs> and uh, he said, move. Get out the way. Get out the way. And Jameis was like, I know this one. Yeah. Love this song. <laughs> All right, let's go to another <laughs> overreaction. Congrats to the Falcons. Go Congrats Falcons. to the Falcons. This one's from uh, Jara. Jara. Hashtag, I don't want to overreact, but, but car fucking stinks. All right. Saints, well, how was he supposed to play with that going on? Saints thought they were getting a Tesla, but instead they got a fucking Pinto. Shout out to a Pinto. Oh. It's time to fire the entire coaching staff and put Jameis back in a QB1 because I'm ready to eat fucking dubs for breakfast, lunch, and dinner again. I did not expect this from Saints fans, but we just chatted about how the Saints should and tried to be the favorites in the NFC South, and they lose to uh, Luda in the Falcons in a time where nobody's really thinking about it. A lot of Saints fans in there. This has been pretty consistent kind of all year with them saying, hey, Dennis Allen sucks, Pete Carmichael, the OC sucks, we're sick and tired of Carr's bullshit. We, we were supposed to win the division. So, uh, yeah, New Orleans Saints fans not happy at all and have kind of given up on this year. I think. AJ, you giving up on the Saints? Uh, maybe a little bit. Yeah, I don't have a ton of. Uh, I guess I don't have a ton of hope for New Orleans to turn it around. What they get rid of Sean Payton for? I like their uh, defense, though. I, I like their defense. I really do. Okay. Money, money right. had they, two picks. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Like, I mean, everybody expected Derek Carr to be clearly the best quarterback in this division. At least I did, because you know you had question marks with Ritter, obviously rookie with uh, Bryce Young. Ritter. And, <laughs> Yeah, Ritter's back in there. Like Baker, uh, they said, Baker. Mason Baker we had a lot of question marks with Baker. He started off hot, kind of cooled off. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Car, that car experience is tough to watch. Yeah, but let's get to another one. But. What? What? Yeah, huh? Yeah, but. What are you going to say? Huh? I don't know. Yeah, but Derek Carr. I just, I'm bummed for Derek Carr. He was supposed to win is, MVP. How long are they stuck yeah. with him? Like, or how long does his contract look like? I'd assume they, it's a two-year thing that yeah. they could probably get out of if they. Fun had fact to. about yeah. the Saints: they are set to be, I believe, it's negative eighty-seven million against the cap this offseason once again. That's Saints football, baby. Yeah. That's right. Uh, that's <laughs> Saints. That's Saints football, baby. All right, let's get to another overreaction. It's from John Millar at John Mills thirty-two eleven. Uh, hashtag I don't want to overreact, but, but Sean McDermott should be fired at the end of the season. Whoa, two and six in one score games this season, and eight and fifteen in one score games over the last three seasons. He can't handle the pressure in close games. Hashtag Bills Mafia. I'll tell you what, this when I was watching the game and they were showing McDermott and they were beating the Eagles, I was like, okay, this is good coaching by McDermott doing this. Then they end up losing the game, and it's like nobody ever talks about McDermott. No. Never really mm -hmm. McDermott never really gets talked about. Exactly. I think it's because of the hype and what they're supposed to do. And then Josh Allen eats a lot of the blame because he'll make a decision that makes you go like, what why why are you doing that? There's some drama normally. But if you look at what has happened this season here for this heartbreak Bills team, they could be 10 and 2. 10 and 2 if the ball bounces a different way. 459 left. They're up over the Jets for first week. Obviously, got to get that one. No Aaron Rodgers, yeah. the whole thing that happened and took place. They end up losing on a punt return, 22 16. Against the Patriots, they had to leave with 18 seconds left. Obviously, that changes with a tud. Week 10, 22 21, then a game winning field goal ends it. And then last night, 34 31, 241 left in overtime after. A miraculous – just think of the 59-yarder going in yeah. for Jake Elliott. If that doesn't go through, whole exactly. different conversation. Yeah. But instead, a miraculous <laughs> kick from Jake Elliott goes through, and then they kick a field goal, and the Eagles just do what the Eagles continue to do, which is just win whenever they have to, which I guess goes to what the Bills haven't been able to do. AJ, is that a McDermott thing? Is that a culture thing? Do you believe or do you agree with old Millar here? No, I mean, I, I'm not writing the bills off by any means because, like you said, if that 58-yarder does not go in, we're not having this conversation. We're talking about the bills are back on track. Here we go. Back. Josh Allen's back. The team, they're, they've worked out all their demons. We're good to go. So, like, I understand that part of it. So, I can't write the bills off. 
But something is weird there. At times it does feel like there's just – I don't know what it is. I'm sure they can't put their finger on it either, but man, it is, Every it's a, a unique situation, but I still think they're all right. What a fucking kick. Unreal. <laughs> How do you make this? <laughs> the double, the double too. fault starts by Kelsey too. What's that about? Why are they, why are they calling that now? Yeah, I what don't happened? know. Kelsey. Well, the one he did. Yeah. He yeah. Was, he was yeah. The one he did. The other one I was like, uh, isn't that I need to see it compared to like, I need to compare it to all his other snaps. Like, does he ever show little bits of that? The one, the other one, I think they're going to call. He even knew. Yeah. I he think flinched. he, mm-hmm. oh shit. Shouldn't have done that. The other one though, Certainly interesting. And Jake Elliott making up for the team, by the way. Hey, yeah. yeah. Kelsey, I got you've done a lot for us. Right. That's what Jake Elliott, you've done a lot for us, pal. And last night he did again in the way he does everything. But like what a miraculous kick to change the entire convo about the Buffalo Bills. Like since that, that on 13 this, seconds. Oh, did since you since ever they, think they the Bills it. would kneel with 20 seconds left a chance to win a ball game? I did see some people yeah. showcasing. With a timeout, too. Yeah, showcasing some of the throws that Josh Allen has made in the past and been like, we're Blake Bortling uh, <laughs> yeah. this entire thing because that's what Blake Bortles did with the Jags AFC Championship up there in New England yep, yep. before half. They yeah. had like a minute and they just, of time. they just kneeled it out and like, let's just get in the locker room with a lead. We're happy to be that. And we're all, oh, football gods are going to see that, not be happy about it. I think they should have let Blake Bortles the boat cook then. Definitely believe in letting Josh, go, especially with how he's played. Right. You know, he's yeah, making he, some throws. He, play, he mm-hmm. played well yesterday. Yeah, he was playing good. And that's why that kick doesn't go in. You say we're all saying they're back. It's like different attitude, different vibe. Yeah. yeah. They beat the Eagles. It's a big game. Josh is back seemingly. Stephon Diggs was getting a rock. Shakir was getting the ball. It's like they are. They found another weapon. James Cook, they had him lined up like in the offensive line at one point yeah. yesterday. Did you see that? A-gap, yeah. Yeah, he's in the A-gap, mm-hmm. kind of lined up in there. I'm like, okay, they're going to just try him. And they just snuck him out for a route. I'm like, why don't more people? Yeah. Why aren't more people lining yeah. people up behind the center if you're in shotgun doing that in time? It's kind of those critics. He started off uh, Josh Allen playing great, with his using his legs. I think he put up like 500 yards, but some critical situations. The Bradbury pick uh, on the kind of like trap coverage put the Eagles in scoring territory. And then that one, uh, me and AJ were talking about it earlier, the deep one in overtime to Gabe Davis on the, oh, the yeah. zero pressure. Zigzag. Yeah, he yeah. kind of checked. And that's, you know, you got a new offensive coordinator with second game calling the plays, I think. But he checked and kind of had the protection. Gabe goes out. He throws it in. I mean, Gabe, I think, runs the route that's called because Diggs run out. Gabe runs a deep out. And it's combo coverage. So if you run two outs or two ends, one of the DBs is going to be a bad leverage. And if he, he had time, in my opinion, to throw the ball yes. to the back corner, and it's a wide-open touchdown if he makes that throw. I don't think Gabe has the time or really should have adjusted in that situation right there. I think that was on Josh. Yeah, everybody kind of had the same reaction to that. I'll be excited to hear if they address it, what happened there right. from inside the – Yeah, but uh, – Maybe with the way this season has gone. Yeah, right. That's there would be drama if they did. And maybe they will. Well, and on the sidelines too, it, it was clear he was pissed. But and Gabe has can't come on here and talked about like the option routes, and I assume that has to do with leverage mm-hmm. uh, on the D back. And if the D backs inside, you're he's probably, doing it in college. Yeah, doing it with in college Heupel. at UCF. But even looking at those games, like a lot of the times, it's the Bills defense who's letting the Broncos march down and kick a field goal. McDerm- Twelve man. McDermott's calling the defense. Twelve men left on the field there. I mean, granted, of course, you got to score a touchdown there, but the Eagles still have to go down the field and score, and they walked down yeah, they in, did. in two minutes. It, was like, it felt like, hey, they're going to go. Yeah, then it, automatic. It, it felt, while you're watching that, it was like, I don't know if field goal was, uh, no, was yeah. enough then. Oh, mm-hmm. this game's over. Yeah. It's, it's crazy we feel that way about Jalen already with how young he is. Yeah, filthy. 27 to 2 in his last 29. Then there's the stat where they're down by 10. He's won eight straight, or eight straight games. Yeah. But I think it was Jordan Mailata said, too, on the game-ending touchdown uh, run. He was like, we can't believe they gave us that look. Like, we knew right when that was the defense they set up in. Like, oh, Jalen's going to score on this play. This game's over. Yep. Yeah, and that's on that's on the defensive play car, which is McDermott. And and the Patriots won too. Yeah, it was 19 seconds left, and they were winning by three, whatever. And the Patriots scored. Patriots walked down the field. They had to do a full field drive to win the game, and they did. Um. I just saw this is different than this. We'll move past the Buffalo Bills. And they were one 59-yard field goal away from us saying, welcome back, Bills. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And add them to the entire AFC that is just a muddy mess yeah. mm-hmm. right now. Joe Pompliano. Okay. Just put a tw- I just read this tweet that you showed up in this group text. Pompliano's don't lie about anything. They no, get to the no, bottom of it. Ever. This Sports Illustrated story is wild. The TLDR, what is that? Too long, didn't read. 
is that they, okay, thank you, Pomp, for doing that for us, bought AI-generated headshots and created fake writer profiles <laughs> so they could publish AI-generated content and make it look real. They then deleted the content when asked about it. Super sad. Sports Illustrated used to be the best, says Pompliano. Whoa. Little punditry for Pompliano. Yeah. Now Pomp's like, these motherfuckers are turning against writers. Whoa. They're taking AI-generated content, putting AI-generated heads on these people, and now we just got fake humans doing sports? That is wild. Oh. Hey, Pompliano, thanks for bringing that to our attention. I wonder who did the story and kind of broke this whole thing down. But Sports Illustrated is like, we can't hire anybody, right? We don't have the money. <laughs> But we can, listen to this, what if we get 10 more writers, Boom. think with me, who are <laughs> think. AI writers, and everything they say is going to be right, because AI is not wrong ever. Well, then people are going to say those aren't real humans. <sighs> AI faces. Yeah, who are they gonna, how are they going to find out? They won't fucking know. They'll never know what hit them. <laughs> people on the internet will find out. Know that these humans don't exist. Nobody will find out that these humans aren't real. I mean, that's 2020. Boom, we're using it. That's fantastic. That's that's future right there. They're yeah. trying to take our job. They're trying to take, take our jobs. <laughs> I wonder how quickly the turnaround was. Like, do you think they did this like two days ago? And they're like, oh shit, they oh, found fuck. out already. <laughs> Who's the one to pitch this idea? What do you mean nobody would find out? <laughs> they already did. What do you mean? <laughs> Delete. John Doe? That people didn't think that was real? What are we doing? What a fucking shit show. That's awesome. Sports Illustrated. To be clear, though, Sports Illustrated was was awesome. Oh, it yeah. was. It was awesome. Look forward to that magazine every month. They can't hire humans, okay? So they, yeah. they, we need fake ones. Yeah. yeah. Think with me. Ah, <laughs> uh, the future is fucked. Yep. So, that'll, that'll be normal. So fucked. How does that get through? It's genius. We've talked about this. I well, it's all it. about the bottom line. Yeah, you don't have to hire people. We can, yeah. But, man. No, I'm... Forget all that. We've yeah. we've talked about this ad nauseum. There are fucking idiots in positions of power in 2023, I think. Everywhere. More than, I don't know. I don't know what the... Potentially more than ever before. More than right. ever. Right. More than ever before. I, I don't know what it was like before, but now that we're getting to experience it, it's like, oh, you're a fucking idiot. Okay. Nice. Wow. It's kind of inspiring, actually. You got to that position, <laughs> and you got no brain. Yeah. So that actually <laughs> that inspires me. Good way to look at it. about that. That inspires me a pretty good amount. But then also you, the ripple. You look at the ripple effects, though, of the bad brains in places, and yeah. that's not as F fucks. silver lining. Yeah, that's good. Fucks a lot of stuff up. Who bought? Did anybody buy Sports Illustrated recently? Was that thing for sale? I wonder. Because what if it was a fake company that bought it? And what is it anymore? Just a website? Yeah. Uh, Instagram account. Put a physical magazine out? That's it. I don't believe so. It's an Instagram account. It's a good Instagram account. Mm -hmm. Well, what, what are we... Is it real, though? Yeah, good yeah, point. I Turn your back on humans. Jeez. They're the ones who did the fake Steph Curry video, too. Oh, yeah. Steph, hope you're happy. This is who you're working alongside. That's right. They made a couple fake videos. I like Steph Curry. That pissed me off. Yeah. Because yeah, he could actually do that. Yeah. Which I guess is why it's such good video because it's certainly believable. But it's like, Steph, take fucking two days out of your life and go, you could figure it out. Yeah, I mean, you made what, three? Well, I, w I made one, but I hit rattled three in a row. There you go. So it's like, Steph Curry. Steph Curry would do it. Fucking figure it out yep. how to make that. If somebody like, and it's just, he conned us and Sports Illustrated is not even having humans write anymore. Unbelievable. Bullshit. Wow. Let's have a moment of silence for sports. Sports. We caved. More people talking about sports than ever before. And Sports Illustrated said, we need less people, more content. Yeah. Give us one of them fucking AIs. Mm -hmm. And they got six of them. Gave them a bunch of different headshots too. Mm -hmm. They can be attractive, but not too attractive. They can look smart, but not standoffish. This guy's Whoa. name? Drew Ortiz. Drew Ortiz. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Drew Ortiz. Let's learn about Drew Ortiz yeah. here. <laughs> Drew likes to say that he grew up in a wild, which is partially true. That's why he has no family members that can legitimize him. He grew up in the woods. Yep. He grew up in a farmhouse <laughs> surrounded by woods. Yep, fields and a creek. I didn't even get to that wow. line. Drew has spent much of his life outdoors. Okay, we get that. And his <clears throat> AI actually wrote this. And he's excited to guide you through his never-ending list of the best products to keep you from falling into the perils of nature. Nowadays, there's rarely a weekend that goes by where Drew isn't out camping, hiking, or just back on his parents' farm that have no service and you'll never be able to hear from. 
This isn't real. How, nice. the, how the hell are you watching sports? My Drew? God. He's he put not, that he's, bio out there. Was he writing sports or was he writing about nature? He's a product review team member. Okay, yeah. he's not talking about just sports. I guess Sports Illustrated had a little bit. Uh, wow. A little bit opening up. This yeah. guy's teeth. These yeah, people are so pro. smart, though. Think about how smart these people are when they pitch this idea and say, nobody will ever be fine. I will say he's from a fucking farm, right? Well, what happens whenever they say he doesn't have any friends? He grew up in a wild. Yeah. In the woods. <laughs> they had all the answers. They had all the answers. Nobody will know. He's a fucking wolf man. <laughs> hey, where was he at on a weekend? How come this guy never goes? He's on his parents' farm. What do you mean? Uh, his parents are Amish. There's no service. They don't even fucking know he's doing this. It's crazy. Goes by. Does the lady, does the girl AI have a bio similar to that? We need to find it. I hope so. We need to find it. Shout out to Pompliano bringing this to our lives. Yeah. So this is what the Pompleyanas do. Exactly. Thank you, Pomp. They need to relax totally. on the whole hip drop tackle thing because. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, you know, a lot of you, you people sound like you've never played a sport before in your life whenever mm -hmm. you start talking about that type of stuff. But I appreciate how much you guys care about the sport that you never got to play. This is uh, Sora Tanaka. Sora has always been a fitness guru and loves to try different foods and drinks. She is fond of varying what her workouts and believes everyone should yeah, participate. Look at the camera. She is. Oh. She has a lazy eye. Fucking get off her back. Jeez. She was calling oh, okay. one of the games. She believes everyone should participate in some sort of physical or mental activity at least three this times. This is a joke, week. man. <laughs> this, we're getting. Are we, is this Boner Garage? Hold this has on. to be something. Miss <laughs> Tanaka is thrilled to bring her fitness and nutritional expertise to the product reviews team and oh. promises to bring you nothing but the best of the best. Thank you, Miss Tanaka. Thank you, Tanaka. Sora Tanaka needs to be relatable but in shape, especially yeah. if she's going to be giving us <laughs> fitness stuff. <laughs> Telling kids to work out three times a week. Oh man! So she she they took the play sixty. We need yeah, to, we yep. need to work out <laughs> yeah. sixty minutes a day, mm -hmm. and then we also need to be relatable a little bit. Boom! We got Sora Tanaka. <laughs> Probably ask Chat GPT. Is ESPN's Twitter accounts working again? Maybe we can get AI to do that. That's are those things back idea. on? They still uh, have a Twitter. Are they doing anything? Uh, I think like one or two tweets a day. It's it's top notch work. They're busy as hell. Hmm. Nice. <laughs> Saturday, college football. Yeah, was he's dead. Fucking yeah. insane. Oh, yeah. One insane. Of the, one of the biggest weekends of football. Like, not just college. Just one of the biggest weekends of football of the year. All the way through. I mean, we haven't even chatted about it. What the Niners did to the Seahawks. Yeah. I mean, we just keep talking about the Eagles and the NFC, and I apologize to Niners fans. But the way you guys did your thing with how many days ago it was, it was just yeah. like – expected and then eagles right here right before we go and do it the niners team's a real fucking deal again oh yeah that is fun that is a fun we need them on prime time mm -hmm. every single week yeah agreed christian mccaffrey is a freak and olivia colpo put out a video of him bruised up and bleeding i didn't think uh, obviously tough tough guy got cuts and stuff on him and bruises on his arm and he's a running back he takes a lot of hits and he's he's tough dude yeah yeah but there's other dudes on that team, I would assume, that have uh, – <laughs> football is not uh, – a lot of blood. It, it is not a uh, fun – you know, you're not just going to go unscathed through this entire thing. So, Christian, thank you for your service to football. Yeah. So, to his lady, thank you for broadcasting it. And to the Niners, hell yeah, dude. Yeah. That has to be a fun team to be a part of. I, uh, Jake Moody, I've mentioned this a few times. Got to hang out with him. Cool dude. Mm -hmm. Love that. I think he's a cool dude. I was only with him for like two hours, but immediately talking shit to him, immediate response. Yeah. Like, hand, super cool, quiet, too, just mm -hmm. like. Two hours, you know. Casual, calculated. He yeah. looked really cool. Had some boots on. Nice. I mean, he was really doing Lucchese's? it. Lucchese's? Yeah, I was just, no, no, no. We're talking like Nike uh, Tim's. Oh, okay. Oh, I like those boots. With some sweats and a full thing. He looked, he looked very cool, I, I, and he was cool. But I asked him about the locker room, you know? I'm like, well, that has to be, like, awesome. And he said, I'm just trying not to, you know. Yeah, trying to stick out. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to uh, yeah. do the whole thing. But it's like, hey, bud, it has to feel good to be in a locker room where everybody's a dog, it seems like. Everybody on the Niners team is a beast. And then you think about Mitch Wisnowski, their punter. He's a legend. Yeah. Kicker's good. Return game's good. Offensive line's good. Running back, good. Quarterback, good. Wide receivers, good. Bud. Defense, good. Bud. Everything's good. And like they are a wagon. 
Good for them being all the way back and us getting to watch him on Thanksgiving night. And I love Geno, obviously West Virginia guy. He looks vastly different this year than he did last year. Yeah. Uh, but this Niners team is looking like what they looked like last year again. And that's a beautiful thing for football. Yeah, and I don't know if it was uh, mentioned, but them having 16 sacks in the last three weeks, they're kind of attributing that to the Chase Young uh, acquisition. And I don't even think Chase Young uh, made it onto the stat sheet against Seattle, but they were – Focusing a lot on him as well as Nick. Buck. Everybody's getting like one-on-ones as opposed to 15 sacks in three games yeah. since acquiring Chase Young. So what that adds, you know, on the defensive line, we don't. I'm not explaining football to people, but for real, uh, instead of like three people being able to block like Bosa or Hargrave or any of these other guys, like now they kind of have. It's almost like all right, we got one-on-one -on -one matchups now. Take your poison. So man. even if Chase isn't the one getting home. Just him existing is helping other yep. guys have more opportunity. And that's what they needed. It feels like it was another good move by Lynch. He makes a lot of those. Another moves. great piece. They unfortunately lost a great piece, losing all pro uh, Hufanga for the season towards ACL um, like a week ago. But when you get pressure after the quarterback, that, that is the best coverage. And the guys on the back, Ward, Ward had a great game, great oh. outing. Uh, Lenore has been playing well. They bumped him inside now with um, Thomas going to the outside. So they're doing some great things. On Obviously, we know who Fred Warner is and those linebackers on the second level. But doing some great things on both sides of the ball. Brock Purdy, unbelievable. Ever since Trent got back in the lineup. He's what was Orlowski saying? Doesn't have arm talent? Yeah, oh, yeah. He, can't, he can't throw the ball through a windstorm into a keyhole. So it's like, you know, is, is he that good? Jamarcus know. Russell could, I guess. Is that, yeah, is that, right. is that what we're looking for? Right. Dan, can you call Dan Orlowski? <laughs> it's, it's nothing you see when you turn on Purdy's tape. Oh, I just wish he did this a little better or he threw it a little. Like, it's... It's the everybody knows about Kyle Shanahan's offense, but when you have a guy like that that can operate, make the right reads, make the right throws, be an athlete when you need to, this is the quarterback he's been waiting for. He's so fucking accurate. Yeah, like I mean, again, he just like he might Iowa State guy. That's what they do. He, yep. Well, that's what I was gonna say. As much as it pains me to say it, because he is an Iowa State guy, but he's not an Iowa State guy anymore. But he is. He is so goddamn accurate. It is ridiculous. Joining us now is a man who said it, uh, Brock Purdy had no arm talent. Mm -hmm. uh, we are live. There are people watching. Ladies and gentlemen, Dan Orlowski. Dan, Dan, oh. Dan, I don't know if you've seen it or not. Uh, Brock Purdy, another dub for the Niners. They are just kind of cruising back to the altitude that they were at last year when everything was humming about 42,000. Would you like to walk back anything you said about Brock Purdy on this particular program about a week ago, Dan Orlowski? I don't think so. All right. Thank you, Dan. We appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, Dan Good luck. Thank you, Dan. Good luck. Good on your call. show, Dan. What's that all about? I don't know. He's lying. Can you call him back? Can you call him back? Yep. That was yep. unbelievable. He did also say Mac Jones would be just as, if not better. If you dropped him in. Into the San Francisco. He, I didn't say, I said like that. Yeah, he did. Ladies and gentlemen, join us again one more time. Dale Orlowski. Dan, you want to take back the whole Mac Jones, Brock Purdy can't throw situation that you've done on this particular program a couple times? What did I say? Okay. Or what do you, what, I'm confused. Re refresh my memory. You said Mac Jones would play like that if he was dropped into Kyle Shanahan's offense. And then you said, Brock Purdy, don't really have any arm talent. Okay. Okay, Dan. Okay. Don, he puts the ball right and then he would go on to you would go on to say he, said he can't throw the ball. When did I through say that Brock Purdy doesn't have any arm talent? Right well, exactly. Well, he said he can't throw it through a windstorm into a keyhole. That's what mm -hmm. you said. Right. Right. I.e., he has no arm talent. No, no, no. He said no arm talent. No, what that what that means is that like he's he doesn't have this howitzer cannon of an arm. I'm sick of it, Dan. The guy's a fucking NFL, great NFL quarterback. Doesn't have a howitzer cannon. What's this? Yeah, that boy, Dan. I, just because you have a strong arm doesn't mean you're a good NFL quarterback, and just because you have a cannon for an arm doesn't mean you're going to be bad. Brock Purdy, do you, are you are you saying that Brock Purdy has a cannon for an arm? Yes. Yes. Guy's got a cannon. He puts that thing right here too. Yep. NFL quarterback. I can't. Can't. Well, you're wrong on that. He doesn't have he doesn't have a cannon. Arm for talent. Him. Boom. Boom. I think one threw Debo's hands. Did you see the pop on the hands? Yeah. Laser. Ha, boom. Now CJ Stroud's rolling to his left, throwing it to the other 27 yeah. from his own three or whatever. That's it's. I understand there's degrees of arm strength, but. To act yeah. like Purdy doesn't have just an absolute hose, yeah. mm -hmm. an absolute sprinkler, pal, that can put that <laughs> ball wherever is embarrassing. And then let's go to the Mac Jones statement. It feels like you've been a Brock Purdy hater for a long time. Why is that? You don't like Brock Purdy? Thank you. 
you know, like you, he's not good. He's in the middle of it right now. <laughs> why, you, why don't you um, like Brock Purdy? I, I literally said he was a top five quarterback this year. When? Who, Mac? Uh, <laughs> like six weeks ago. Okay. All right. The Dan Wagon never stopped by San Francisco. So I don't want to. Man, you're that. just trying to, you're just getting, you're just getting stumped by me today. You're just trying to catch me. I'm like, no. Nah, what? You're an AI. You're lying. Yeah. You're just letting me. Did you hear about what's happening in Sports Illustrated, Dan? You hear what's happening over there? No. Look up Drew Ortiz. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sort of Yeah. Look at these sports writers taking your job soon, Dan. Look out. <laughs> David Ortiz? Drew. His hey, son. Bobby? Outdoorsman, kid, his, his boy, a guy named Drew Ortiz. He grew up in a wild with the fucking wolves. He was a writer for Sports Illustrated for about a week and a half or so. In sort of, and he's not a real person. Yeah, AI, fake headshot and everything, fake areas. Boom, kind of, kind of looks like you, Dan. He's coming for your he job. Does when I don't shave. <laughs> What's your Bad problem? Beard going. What's what? wrong with you? What do we got on NFL <laughs> Live today? Anything sweet? What are we? What are we talking about? Obviously, Buffalo. Philly game. Um, we're doing a little bit of the Broncos offense, but not specific to just Russ. They were really good at running the ball yesterday. Um, I think Jacksonville with Doug Peterson and kind of like the like the, the the identity of their team, or I guess like how, how good of a feel he gets as a coach in games. Um, obviously Carolina. Oh, uh, you like that? Hey, you were going to coach that. Down Thank God you didn't. Oh, yeah, God. you would have been Ooh. fired. You'd been out of a job. Week twelve, you would have been going back to doing pancakes with Jeff Saturday. Kidding me? I'd be ten too. Dude, I had someone say that to me today. Someone said that to me. They said, "Thank God that hey, you man. didn't go take that job, huh?" So I feel bad for those guys, man. Sure. The fans of Carolina. <laughs> I mean, I was kind of talking about the coaches, but we could, I could, we could say the fans as well. Oh, okay, okay, okay. all right, yeah. us too. The whole party. It's not fun. Frank Reich needs. To go take a nap, though. Yeah. That's what we think. He needs to go enjoy his life a little bit. Maybe find take, some. Take a little nappy nap. Yeah. What's up, buddy? Who's What's go, up, dude? go get What's up, blackout dude? drunk. Who is that? Frank? I don't know. If yeah, give him a that. bottle. Who, who's that? Anybody sweet that we just met right there? His name is Miles. He uh, runs like the uh, Teller. social media for NFL Live and NFL Countdown. Oh, is he tweet? Is he, is he on X? Are they on? Are they tweeting? I believe he's on X and Instagram and TikTok and Facebook and from the Omar coaching tree. Oh, you know, nice! <laughs> All right, we like that. Yeah. All right, shout out to Miles doing his nope. thing. You're absolutely right. Ma, who's that? RC. 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 I saw you uh, ironing your suit, bro. Fucking killed it. You know what I mean? Just so it was <laughs> wrinkleless. Hey, can you get Dan a different like device to do this show on, bro? No. Y'all all blurry on this side and everything. Yeah, it's, you should see what it's like hey, on this side. Hey, This is. I wasn't. I wasn't expecting to be on the show. He just randomly called me. Yeah, well, we're talking about how good Brock Purdy is. We're talking about how good Brock Purdy is. Swagoo. 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 What's up, bro? Y'all send this bastard a camera. <laughs> no. You guys should send him a fucking camera. Yeah. Hey, real quick, that barbecue place in Kansas City, real deal, huh? Hey. That's <laughs> hey, 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 hey. I, first of all, I like I like to thank y'all for opening that channel of shit. <laughs> it was amazing. Thank you guys for that. Hey, you should have said had to stand on the table for it, Swaggo. Yeah. I'm happy that yes, you're. Sir. Uh, yes, sir. I'm happy hey, that hey, you enjoyed. How it. come Dick? How come Dick Good didn't get with it, that one? He didn't. He didn't. He didn't. Kofi. Yo, buddy. Hey, I, like I told him, man, you know this because me and you the head talks. Hey, man, play us fuck up. Yeah, they do. That's they just what we do. That's the way it goes. That's the way life That's the way is. Go, but I don't think you fucked up at all there. And sp speaking of fucking up, <laughs> real quick, speaking of fucking up, I guess Rich Good, Dick Good, not necessarily the one pushing the buttons. What? Really? It's mm. his department. I guess it's his department. James Ortiz? So there's maybe some... No, I don't know if it's a Drew Ortiz situation. Yeah. I guess there's some they stolen got, hey, valor. Hey, pet, 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 they got to look out for you a little bit better, though. <laughs> let them, hey, <laughs> I got set up. Don't let them set you up. <laughs> Don't let them set you up. All right. NFL Live crew, we appreciate you. Good luck at four. Hell yeah, boy. Good luck at four. I mean, I guess that's one way to go about doing things. You just lie about what you said. Yeah. I never said that. Yeah, exactly. yeah, I kind of love that move. Go back and look it up. Yep. Wow, that's fucking 10 days ago, Dan. We're never going to do that. Well, I never said it. Tell you he's the best quarterback in the NFL six weeks ago. Six weeks ago. Sorry. I've been saying this. You guys are catching up to me. Okay. <laughs> I've been on this guy's team. It's like, that is not how this thing. All right. Let's go to another overreaction. I like the Niners.
Yeah. Love. Yeah. Love. That feels like one of the ones that's going to go. This is Scary Moose up there in Canada. That's Scary Moose 69. <laughs> Hashtag, I don't want to overreact, but, but Packers are so fucking back. Jared Goof has returned <laughs> to 2019 form, Whoa. and he's going to choke the division away to J-Lo as he keeps putting up passing <laughs> stats on par with MVP frontrunner Jalen Hurts. If the Packers don't win... It's MLF's fault. Okay, so Ty, you're obviously the one picking these. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yep. So the ones that you pick and choose are certainly, you know, maybe a narrative that you were trying to. Yeah. Why is that the one that you chose from Scary Moose 69? Well, that one actually, uh, we talked about this. You know, the, the order I send, James. No, that was my fault, uh, Ty. Okay. I just did it out of being quick because I was off the uh, no, screen. Okay, that, that was kind of just like, a, hey, if we get here, throw yeah. this one in. Part of it, yes, I think if the Packers don't do great, you know, I don't know if we should be placing the blame on Jordan Love. I think we should maybe be looking elsewhere. Also, I was caught off guard by the Jared goof, and I laughed pretty hard when I saw that, so I just said, fuck it, let's put that in. I don't think I've seen Jared goof. I I mean, it's it's been there the whole time. <laughs> yeah. I know. I, that was the first time I'd seen it. I was like, that's kind of genius. Because the way that. he used to look whenever he wasn't playing good, kind of goof. Kind of a goof, yeah. Yeah, so uh, we have never, we're an embarrassment. Yeah, bummed. Shout out to Scary Moose doing that whole thing. I don't think he's Jared goof, though. Are you worried <laughs> over there, uh, Foxy, just because... Thanksgiving's Lions Day. Yeah. Jack Harley's he's coming out. Pumped. Two he's, L's. he's doing his thing. He's on a little set, costs 14, 15 bucks. Yeah. The whole world's watching this whole thing. And then Reddit user on Wednesday or whatever before Thanksgiving right. said, let's look at who the Lions have actually beat to oh. get to this. They started like no. the narrative was like, Lions aren't real. That that was kind of starting on yeah. Last week, Monday, yes. Tuesday, Wednesday. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we didn't expect – I got blindsided by it. It was just a lot of shit getting thrown out there. And then that happens against the Packers. Is that how you guys feel up there in Detroit, Evan? I hope not. <laughs> no, I don't personally. Detroit, though, people are freaking out. I actually said this to Connor. I said, when your team's good – and you lose a game, does everyone just lose their mind season over and that's how it goes? Because that's how it's been in Detroit. I'm not worried. Eight and three, NFC North leaders. And then also, like, the Packers did look great. Jordan Love looked awesome. And our offensive line has never looked that bad all season. So credit to the Packers defense. Joe yeah, Barry. Not yeah, worried balls. at all. He we, stinks, but they, no, they put, I, the, 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 the boys played well on Thursday. Really good. No, but I'm not worried. Golf will clean it up. Every good team has their ups. Has their down. San Francisco already had theirs earlier in the season, so Detroit's just doing that. We'll be fine. I, um, after seeing and meeting Aiden Hutchinson in person again, yeah, I believe they can win games. In that dude it. needs help, though. That's the biggest problem. It's just like we talked about with Chase Young, how they have all those guys so anyone can eat. Hutch literally, there's a highlight that had three different players blocking him against the Packers, and it, and it worked. So, so big. Yeah. So I wish he would have done the thing. Yeah, yeah. he should have. Just to walk you know, around. That's, that's war paint, though. I saw Whoa. Him putting war paint on a kid this weekend in Kansas City. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, don't look now. I don't know if you can do that. Yeah. I don't know if you can do what they Why were doing. Yourself, Kansas City. Uh, yeah. I'm not, it's not our job to uh, uh, show it, you know. I will say. People aren't happy. No, yeah. they're not. If you've seen it, you know what we're talking about. AJ? I have not seen it. I will have to find it after the show. There's this little white boy that was white from about here down. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This little white boy. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Is this the one where he said it was eye black? No, I don't I think. I don't know. I don't know. Different situation. Okay. Yeah, two different okay. colors as well, so I don't think they can. Uh... Oh. I will say there's some guys that put so much eye black on their face. Yeah. Where they're like almost like Sting or Jeff Hardy, but yep. it's just all, and I'm like, you're dancing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Be you know, it's pretty, oh, yeah. That thing smears just a little bit, and all of a sudden, not good. Buddy, yeah. you might be president of Canada. Yeah. Jimmy Kimmel in 92. Let's go to uh, another overreaction, <laughs> shall we? <laughs> this is Matt Higgins, 80. That baby, Matt. Hashtag, I don't want to overreact, but, but this Eagles run is unsustainable. Whoa. They've been outgained by an average of 109 yards the last four games. OC Brian Johnson morphs into Matt Canada. Defense consistently gives up third and longs. If Lane misses time, birds are fucked. One and done in the playoffs. Oh, no. He's got an Eagles fan, too. He's saying they're frauds, AJ. That's what he's saying about this Eagles team. I don't know if that's true. Look who they beat. Look who they beat. They beat the good team. Oh, yeah. So I don't know how, yeah. why you could say that. The teams they're going to play in the playoffs, at least similar strength and style, they've beat four or five of them already. I mean, it is I, – I don't – a lot of people. They're not front runners either. We've seen them. They're not front runners. They know how to. They can come from behind and win. They kind of have that moxie about them. But yeah, if they let's say they do go into the playoffs and they 
they just don't look good and they drop a game, that's when people come back and say, we told you the whole season. They, they were just squeaking out these wins and they should have been blowing teams out, and then this is what happens. A lot of people out on the Eagles. Yeah. A lot of people do not like really? the Eagles. A lot of people that's do not make, like them. Yeah, probably because it doesn't look pretty on the stat sheet all the time. You think, all oh, these close games, they're going to lose them eventually. But like you said, back-to-back season, they can jump out to 10-1 and one starts. And they just have players, man. Like defensively on the back end especially, they can definitely – a lot of room for improvement, but – Bradbury, just a player making a big play. Reddick is always in a position to make a big play. Yep. Carter, like he's not even Man. who he's going to be in, later on in this Lock season kickers. in his career. He's like the kicker, Jake Elliott can always step in there and kick a 60-yarder if they need it to. So uh, I think the Eagles will be just fine, right up there with the Niners. Anytime we talk about Sirianni, we talk about how hilarious and awesome he is. The internet does not always agree. Ain't that right, Gumpy? There's quite a reaction to the Sirianni conversation. People either love Sirianni or hate Sirianni. They, I don't find there's any common ground there. Which makes no sense to me because if you listen to this, how could you hate this guy? Here's head coach Nick Sirianni talking after the big time win in overtime against the Bills yesterday. I'm going to sleep good tonight. You know, you know what? Nobody asked. You know, thanks, Mike. Nobody ever asked me how I'm feeling. No. It was, uh, those, are, those, those are things that you'll always remember, though, right? You'll remember when we're in there late night as coaches, the conversations you have when you're when you're tired and and you just got to get the you got to get the plan done. I cherish those. Yeah. That's why we coach. Like we coach because we're still part of a team. Right. You know, we coach because I can run down the sideline after they we score on a walk off touchdown. Like, I mean, these are the. That's why this this sport means so much to me Fucking. and to my family. Um, just the special moments like that. Does the couch that I slept on this week comfortable? No. <laughs> But you know what? The memories will last of this week, and uh, shoot, um, I'm thankful for that. How can anybody hate that guy, Coach Sirianni? How does anybody hate you, bub? Well, probably because when we win games, uh, I have no problem with taking my hairy nutsack on my trousers and putting them on the fans' foreheads, coaches' foreheads, that kind of stuff. I love walking in the tunnel and yelling stuff like, hey, fuck you, don't hear you anymore. I love doing that kind of stuff. And, yeah, you know, sleep on my couch is a small price to pay for winning big football games and uh, pissing off entire uh, massive metropolitan areas. I live for that kind of shit. AJ, first of all, the more we learn, it does feel like you're maybe spot on. (laughs) Yeah. With the way, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. With the way you have portrayed him since the very beginning. Feels like we know him inside and out, even mm-hmm. though we haven't talked to him that much or heard him speak as much. People hate that guy, though. People yeah. do not like that guy. That's good, though. He's perfect for Philly because they want, like, for Philly, they, the fans, they probably think the more hate he gets from other teams, the more they love it and the more they rally behind this guy. And I think his team as well. Like, that's just, when you're winning games and you're, not scared to be vocal about it. Yeah, of course, everybody else is going to be pissed. Let's go to another overreaction. Last one for the day, and thank you to everybody that participated. This is Bubba Duke 84 at BDuke84. Hashtag, I don't want to overreact, but, but I wish the Chargers didn't have the poorest owners in the NFL. And they could afford to fire the worst head coach in the NFL, Brandon Staley and Tom Telesco, who has failed miserably for over a decade. Hashtag, fire Staley. Hashtag, fire Telesco. But. Hashtag, fire John Spanos. D, but this is one of your teams. Bubba yeah. Duke has turned on him, just yeah. like it seems like you have. What is the future look like for the Chargers? You know, I'm a fan of this team because of their quarterback, Justin Herbert. And I remain a fan as long as he's there. But uh, there's some loud chants in the stadium. Fire and Staley. Obviously, you saw those with Canada as well. It's not just Staley. You know, it's the players, it's the coaches. And a lot of people, myself included, will say, you know, it's a super talented roster that's been put together. And it's really not. It's the top heavy, the top names that we all know. But when you look at the depth of the guys across um, the different positions, the talent is there and injuries as well. I'm not off the bandwagon. I will be a Chargers fan as long as Herbert is the quarterback there. My big thing about it is like Spanos is paid. A bunch of people. They, they oh, talk yeah. about the poorest owner. He's paid a bunch of people. Now, yeah. obviously, everybody has a salary cap, and you have to spend a certain amount of money. But I think what they're saying is you won't fire Staley because they're going to have to pay Staley, and they would have to pay another coach. I don't know if that's the case, AJ. It, it doesn't feel like that's going to be the case over there. Normally, you know, you win the mob, you win Rome, and everything like that. It's loud. Too loud. It's yeah. Too loud. Yeah. I think it's good. It's- it's already too loud. It's probably going to get louder. So, yeah, that's going to be tough to keep him around. I think so, too. And I think he knows it, too. He's been acting a little different. Yeah. yeah. A little bit different fire, a little, a little bit different pr- little pizzazz. Prickly. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah a, little, a lot more yelling on the sideline, yep. the people and things. It's like, has somebody told him, like, hey, by the way, yeah, there's people talking about you not being here anymore, so maybe you 
start getting a little bit more fiery, and then they just lose. Yeah. They just lose again. <laughs> it's like, I don't know what it's going to take. I don't know what the future is. Who knows what Staley does after this whole job. But what they're going to have to redo the whole roster, too, if, especially if they get a new GM, a new salary cap. It's like just constantly going to be in a stuck of this, I guess. Well, that's why like, last night, like everyone's been shitting on their defense all year long, and then last night their defense actually shows up and gets a couple stops when yep. they need him to, and then they just can't protect Herbert. It's yep. like he's dropping back, and he's got three guys in his face on every third, you know, third – that was the other thing last night, too. Like, they had so many opportunities, and I don't know how many times either they shot themselves in the foot and put them in, like, third and 17, and then they'd pick up six or seven yards, and then they'd have to go for it on fourth and 10. It's yeah. just like, it just, the whole thing just is not good. Not good. Turnover, then that Ravens defense. <laughs> Woo. Yeah, they, they hit. hit some dogs. How'd Keith do last night? Keith, 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 Keith got played up pretty one well. Oh, yeah. Had like yeah. a little 40, 40 inch vert mm -hmm. on the PBU he had. Keith, Keith balled out. Got I up. saw he corrected somebody on the internet, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Armando, I believe mm -hmm. is the name. Armando. Keep it classy. Old right. Dolphins beat rider. Armando? Yeah, he's with Outkick now. Oh, nice. Rush quarterback, not center. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I do appreciate that because he's probably watching that going, this fucking guy, the ball. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Keith Van Noy goes, Armando, listen, I'm a big fan. You're a decent reporter. Stick to reporting, though. Not breaking down film. <laughs> it's a great pick stunt. Had you played, you would know this. Okay, that's just a classic. <laughs> yeah. That's yep. just like, yep. you know, that's, yep. the, <laughs> that's the thing. And Armando's just trying to do his job. That's too. right. He's course. just trying to showcase a little emotion. Yeah. Trying to do his thing, but. Keith said, hey, why don't you pipe down a little bit? Just like all the uh, the hip drop people, you know. There it is. That yeah. is, uh, oh, that's a fascinating conversation on the internet. Hip drop tackle? Yeah. Like it's a thing. So like it's dumb. a thing that's taught or you can take away. Mm -hmm. I don't get it. Well, and so, what's considered a hip drop tackle? Well, when you. When you hip drop yeah. and tackle. Yeah. Grab the hip. Okay. It's pretty self-explanatory, Hawk. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I saw multiple times yesterday where no one's crying, but it was technically a hip drop tackle. Yeah, well, that's the thing that nobody really thinks about because you watch so much football and people make it look easy. You know, you got people running like 20 miles an hour, 18 miles an hour, and like a lot of speed happening. That's why people being able to adjust in real time, where that's been a marvel to kind of watch people adjust so they don't hit a helmet to helmet whenever there's people going full speed without really seeing a lot. So I think athletes make things look too easy that people just assume that whatever's happening it has to be. You know, it's just it's football. The fast game. Yeah. Everyone's getting hurt anyway. It's fucking it, football. Man. It don't yeah. matter. It's football, man. So, like, wait, guys, don't go into games like, oh, I can't wait to fucking hip drop AJ Brown. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 I know that I did not personally. Okay. I said I'm going to helmet to helmet with a guy today. Sure. That's what I used to there say. There you go. Sure. D, but I don't know about your room, though. You guys thinking about hip dropping people? Absolutely. Now we think about getting them down. And what was crazy, especially in NFL, Sundays, Thursdays, Mondays, whenever you play, that's the only time you tackle. Like, those are the only live reps you have. Maybe you have a couple periods in training camp, but outside of that, those are the only times that you're actually tackling the best people in the world at evading tackles. So you don't necessarily decide how you're going to get the guy down. You just got to fucking get him down. And I'll say this, and uh, I don't want to be the person that says another thing dumb, but like how you fall while getting tackled is also not on the defender. You know, like there is like a big skill. Learning how to fall is a huge thing that you kind of innately develop as you grow up, I think. And also like Carson Wentz. You know, Bingo. he and Aaron Donald wrapped around him. Exactly. And maybe it's just, let's give myself up here. That's, and let's, yeah. let's just go down. Sure. But instead, uh-uh, that ain't Carson Wentz football. No. And he tries to regain his feet underneath Aaron <laughs> Donald's body. That's 300, 290 pounds. And tries to complete a pass. And he sprains both of his ankles on one play. Yep. So, like, there's also an offensive side to it all on how – and what you choose to do and where you're going. Yeah, that's a big part of it. And having some offensive experience, like, you got to know just when to go down. You know, sometimes you get, you're get you in a weird spot. You feel, like AJ said, you innately know how to fall. Sometimes you just feel it. All right, just go down. Don't fight it. Go limp. You got to go limp. You got to go fight limp. It on your heart. It's how you break legs in half and tear ACLs. Oh, yeah. Some things are unavoidable, but there some are avoidable. 
Yeah, this was probably avoidable. Yeah, mm. I mean, Would've look been. at he's a I never heard the term with Aaron. Dalton. Have you ever heard the term hip drop tackle until you know six months ago? I was, yeah, I think last year it started on the internet. Yep. Yeah, last year is when it started. The movement began. That was when scripted was really getting going. To yeah, NFL scripted was building, and hip drop was building, and the script kind of took over. The scripted kind of took over the conversation. Hip drop has come back this year. Yeah, need to ban this tackle here. Tony Pollard, Tony Pollard tackle. Yeah, last year against the Niners. Yep. The guy that created football, I think he started the uh, conversation. You're in Tony C. Yeah, yeah it makes sense. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah, it's about time. Can we FaceTime Tone? Can we FaceTime Tone? Just see if he wash a show today, wash program today, how he's feeling. Hope he's okay. Me too. Me too. Maybe he lost too much weight. Maybe his body's just. Could have been. Oh. Yeah, adjusting. Maybe he's too healthy. Yeah. Tom, we need you to eat wings in bed again. Right. Yeah, go do that. We need you to be housing ice cream again. What? Exactly. Need you to get a little bit of a third or fourth neck. Yep. Yeah, bring Jim. it back. He's thin right now. Oh, yeah. Very. Coming out of a sickness, too, huh? Yeah, double it up. No answer. He's probably too sick. Hope you sleep. Oh, man. Love you, Don't put his life away. Miss you, Tony. Tony, we hope you're okay, pal. We miss you. Good luck, Tony. This one's for Tony Diggs. Yep. Here we go. Oh, well. oh, oh, boy. Oh, no. Tony, you didn't deserve that. I'm not oh, shooting no. another one. Oh, okay. no. That was. I'm not shooting another one. He's sick. Oh, That's no. it. He's yeah. sick. Was he dead now? I, I don't know. <laughs> oh, no. Can you right. please? Thank you. Please. This one, another, this one will tell us. Another up okay. There. This one will tell us if Tony's back is weak or not. Okay. Okay, this one. Time for you, bro. The kiss shot. <laughs> Boom. Boom! There it is. All Welcome right. back, Tone. All right, Tone's back. Welcome let's back. See you tomorrow, Tone. All right, let's get the hell out of here. It's four hours today. Jesus Christ. We're, we're off. Oh, we got to do picks. Yeah, today. here you guys All right, on. big game tonight. Bears, Vikings. Three-point favorites at home are the Ooh. Minnesota Vikings, led by the Pastronaut, TJ Hawkinson on the graphic, obviously, DJ Moore. Justin Fields on the other side. Cannot wait to uh, see how this game goes. And uh, Madness. Odds presented by ESPN Bet. Shout out to them. I think they're doing good. They didn't crash this weekend, I don't think. No. Nope. Keep it going. Good for them. Don't know anybody over there, but the logo's sweet. Yes. Love the colors. Logo's sweet. App seems to be great. Um, D-Butt, who do you like? I'm going to pass or not. I'm the Vikings. All right. Minnesota Vikings minus three at home, says Darius Butler. AJ, who do you like? It's a tough barn to play in. Give me the Vikings minus three at home. All right. Let's see the scoreboard for this weekend. Uh, fuck. Damn. Ooh. You did good, AJ. Wow. Wow. You both did. Seeing the board. This is two weeks in a row where we've nine and six, <laughs> I think ten and five. Yeah. It's yeah. happened a lot. Yeah, I think we're I think we're start we are starting to see it well. Now you take my college picks game day, I'm not seeing the board there. But you were early in the season. Yeah, so. super dog. Who cares? Yeah, but phew, that Wisconsin tweet, I needed that. I forgot I even got one right. <laughs> That's what the mentions were looking like. Only one that got that right. It is tough to enjoy college football on the internet after having to publicly project who you think is going to pick every single time. I can imagine. It's not like the most fun experience. But, yeah. boy, you get one right, though. Oh. oh, it feels good. Yeah. Wish you could bottle that feeling. So you like the Vikings. I will go with the Bears. Uh, yeah, just go. because of the current score that we are in. Bears plus three. Justin Fields, he's going to have some runs today. Oh, yeah. He's removing. He's going to have some scripted runs. Zito, we feel good about this game, right? Oh, yeah. Big W. <laughs> but you don't want it, right? <laughs> it doesn't matter. We got the first ready. Who gives a shit? Yeah, they're, they're, the first that we got it, they're firing all their coaches. <laughs> That's true. They got no hope down there. Lock it in. <laughs> all right. I think Vikings win. Bears cover. Should be a fun night here. Well, is that still the line? Three. I'm not getting three and a half anywhere. We didn't. The three ESPN Benton uh, moved up to three nope. and a half. We saw the graphic. We saw it. Let me just check real quick. That graphic was made a long time ago. You know, yeah, this ago. seems legit. This seems legit. I want to make sure it's up to date. I want to make yeah, sure. Yeah, let's make sure. Let's make still sure. Is Gertie, is Gertie back? Yeah, still still, 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 still sitting at three. three. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. You know, it's five hours is a long time. All right. <laughs> we'll be back tomorrow with Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. Going to have a nice conversation about cadences tomorrow. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, yes. Because we all heard it on Thanksgiving. We all heard it. Dak Prescott spent his Thanksgiving alongside of us yelling, here we go, into all of our living rooms. This is what it sounded like. Yes! Here we go! Here we go! Here we go! It's, it's every play. Yeah. Unreal. Once you hear it, you hear it every single play. How did that become the cadence? Why are other people's cadences different? Like Russell Wilson, for instance, he actually said out of a movie this. Sweet. 
That's out of a fucking movie. Yeah. Don said, hut one, hut two, hut three. That is like, hey, how do they snap the ball? Well, they say hut, and then sometimes it's on wow. two. So it's like, hut one, hut two. That's a movie. And they're doing it in a game. And then you hear other, like, you got obviously red 18, green 19. Yep. Mm -hmm. I think turbo is what Matthew Stafford uses, mm -hmm. I believe, is what I read. Whitey. Whitey, Whitey, Whitey. Omaha. Said, Omaha is obviously Omaha. <laughs> And it's like, why does all this happen? Well, we have a chance to ask Aaron Rodgers tomorrow, who's like one of the, mm -hmm. one of the like, great cadencers. Oh yeah, in the history of the NFL, I'm fascinated to learn about it. And also, did Big Mike say, "Why? Well, like, here we go, pretty positive." <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know, like, Maybe. How, how do we get to that? I'm excited to find out about it. And uh, obviously, we'll cover everything that happens tonight. Any other news that unrolls? Uh, I think we got some big-time guests this week. Oh, hell yeah. Because we got play uh, college football championship weekend coming up. Hell yeah. I think we got uh, access to a couple more NFL buildings, too. I think we're building up relationships with PR people. Okay. That. We're not rebuilding, but new relationships are maybe being built. Sure. Yep. It's a good time. Let's enjoy the hell out of this. AJ, you did great work today, honestly, with that new haircut. Good work, Hawker. Hey, AJ. Thank you. In the back, great work, boys. Good work, Happy boys. Thanksgiving. Mitt, really good stuff in that, in there. Got Mitt. Hey, babe, Mitt. Hey, babe, Mitt. Keep going, Mitt. Bill, way to go, Bill, back here in the back. Hey, good baby, job, Bill. Bill. How about good D buddies? Too. Tony Diggs today. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Tony yeah. Butch. Tony Butch. <laughs> That's awesome. Talks the table. What a performance. Seriously, you. you guys really crushed it today. All right. Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice about changing your life. Goodbye.